Hello everyone, and welcome to yet another stream of Final Fantasy XIV, Heavensward, with me, Boltage Big Ever. I am once again extremely late for my own stream. Sorry about that. Uh, I set the alarm, and sometimes I just sleep through the alarm. Guess I was really tired. Still recovering from illness. Working on it. Oh well. Last time on Final Fantasy XIV... I wrapped up the main story of Heaven's Word. I completed the Warring Triad. And then we all got really sad as I went on a quest of remembrance. Speaking of quests of remembrance and getting really sad, there's an event that occurs every year called the Rising. And the Rising is going on right now. As I am playing every week, this will be my character's first opportunity to do the Rising. It started pretty much the next day, right after the last stream. So it's been around for a small amount of time now. And so, I'm going to go and do the Rising, because there's a thing to do that will have content that will not be there for very long. So in my quest to just archive everything, we might as well. So let's get some UI elements back on. Go see my retainers real quick. I have them doing the short ventures. So just bring me back random rewards right now. No, never mind. What level are you now? Uh. Mm hmm. 39. Okay, so you're still should be doing that one. I thought I had them doing the short ventures. I was wrong. I lied. I forgot. Hey, Zokova! Oh, you haven't done the Rising event this year? Keep forgetting about it. Yeah, it's, um... It sure isn't a holiday, but sure is an important date for the game. Okay, and what level did you get to? 34! Oh, you're almost ready for your next venture, aren't you? Oh, you need stuff. Oh, you need stuff. Okay. Uh, you just need more gathering rating, huh? What has some gathering rating? This. How about one of the old fishing rods? This one good enough for you? I can give you more if you need it. You don't. Good. Good. One day I'll get those exclusive minions. But that's not going to happen anytime soon. And there we go. Retainers. Now that that's dealt with, let's head on over to Ulda. It usually happens at Ulda, this rising. Uh, some of your Ray friends talked about it a bit, and, you really, and they really liked it. So looking forward to seeing them. Well... If you need to not spoil it for yourself and you need to dip out, I completely understand. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. This one takes a while. This one takes a while. If you're on an alt, you are able to skip almost all of it. But, I, uh, I'm not skipping this. This is the Itinerant Moogle. There's also a Mogtome event going on. And there's a lot of great items on the Mogtome event. For example, a Fat Cat Parasol. If I have time, I'll look, in about, look into getting some of those. Ah, this is the quest. Look at that special flair that they get just for this. And listen to this really sad rendition of answers. Because the Rising event is the celebration of this game's launch. So, of course, it has to have answers, because it was the meteor that caused it. That's the whole point of the celebration, right? Anyway, you'll learn plenty about it as I go through the quest. Siblings Rising. Kevin Jaka is looking at a worried sister. The quest is available for a limited time only. Yeah, go ahead out to not spoil, have fun. Yeah! You really do like the... You... you used to do the Moogle Tomes. Um, 
Yeah, I, I rushed for that parasol. I usually get the exclusive reward and that's it, because I tend to usually have everything else. It's it's great for free-to-play players. Oh, it's great for that. I'll talk more about Moogle Tomes later. Oh, Vincent Bond. Always a pleasure, my friend. I'm all fortuitous that you should appear now, just why I'm in need of help again. Pray hear me out. You see, my brother recently wrote saying they wished to meet me in Ulda during the Rising Celebration. However, the appointed hour has come and gone, and I've never seen hide nor hair of him. I've checked all the likely places in the city to no avail, and I'm beginning to worry. It isn't too much trouble. May I ask you to help me find him? And being the helpful sort, we are always just nod. I'm in your debt. Now, my brother is a youth of 16 by, an, by the name of Nagi. He recently became an adventurer, something he had aspired to since he was little. Being an adventurer yourself, perhaps you know of him, if not cross paths? If you did the last year's Rising, you will have a third option, because he was also the central focus of last year's Rising, where you did indeed help him become an adventurer. Uh, but... I'm not familiar with the name, alas. Bond here has never done a Rising. Aye, well, it would be too much of a uh, coincidence, I suppose. At any rate, this isn't in... If he isn't in the city, chances are he went outside on some business. To begin with, I propose we split up and make inquiries in case someone has seen him. If you can focus on this area, I shall speak with those in the quicksand. Afterwards, let us reconvene by the entrance to the tavern. Good old Rum Reborn quest accepted music. Greetings, adventurer! As part of the Rising Celebration, we are currently preparing for an exciting game of the enjoyment. It will take a little longer, however, so we ask your patience in the meantime. So that'll be something when this is done. Greetings, adventurer. How may I assist you? Oh, uh, I'm looking for Nagi. Oh, Nagi? I understand he's doing some work for a wandering minstrel. The wandering minstrel, you say? I dare say his client can point you in the right direction. If you can track the man down, that is. I'm afraid I don't know his whereabouts at present. I understand Nagi is doing some work for the Wandering Minstrel. If you can track his man down, I dare say he can point you in the right direction. We have a vendor? But we can't use it until we're done with the- Never mind, we can just use it now. Okay! Normally you can only use these afterwards. So I'm just gonna get these now, so I don't forget. There is a poster for your wall. This would go in your apartment, if you had one. Palm from the Heavens Orchestra Roll, and the Land Reborn Orchestra Roll. Unique music for this event. We'll hear them a little bit later. We'll grab the music now. Oh, I also never ate this music. How about that? Yep, and there's Dancing Girls, and then there's our quest objective, watching the Dancing Girls. Huh? Something you need? Uh, do you know Nagi? Oh, Nagi! Ah, I know the sp uh, sprightly lad. Couldn't say where he is now, but last I saw him, he mentioned he'd taken on some delivery work. He's a curious one, he is. Gets along with everyone well enough, but doesn't seem to like working in a team. Oh, with the talk of a bandit's prowling the road late, I can't help but worry. As I said, I couldn't say where Nagi is now, but I mentioned he'd taken on some delivery work. I be as what he's out doing. And there he is! Never mind. That's Bran. That's not who I thought it was. Something I could do for you, Venture? His business with Bran best area quickly. This guy has leads to Hollywood incidents and investigate the Harbor Herald. Leads to follow instance to investigate, rather. I see. With apologies, I haven't seen this Nagi. As a matter of fact, I've been rather busy working on my upcoming piece for the Rising. Why, just earlier I was interviewing this ever enigmatic wandering minstrel who's got another unusual venture in the offering. His latest, the Letter Forest, he calls it. Oh? Hey, that piques your interest. I recommend you go and see the man. He's in a gold court over the steps of Thal. It appears Nagi is carrying out some work for the Wandering Minstrel. If you talk to the man at the Gold Court, you should be able to learn more. 
You could have got that information in any order. And the oven is broken. So it is. So it is. Let me redeem an oven real quick. Oh, I see. Everything is broken. I don't have Sammy on. I will redeem an additional oven after I get Sammy back open. It appears that Sammy is not connected to Twitch. Token has expired. Okay, I need to log back in on Twitch. Uh, that means... Sorry for the delay. Sorry for the delay. Things broke. Of course they did. Because of course they would. Uh, let's see. Uh, authorize. Which is broken. Hold on. Twitch token successfully saved. Okay, done. Uh, okay, it's now connected. Now I can redeem an oven for you. Just a moment. Hey, Fonz. Of course things break when when I start. It's my own fault. It's my own fault. Let's see, where is the oven? It should be at the bottom because it's one of the more expensive ones. Voltage looked into the oven. It's pitch black inside! Oh no! What happened here? Well, I exploded my own oven. That's why it's pitch black. There you go, Jade. Thanks for checking the oven. Also, hi, Jade. And hi again, Fonz, because I'm not sure if I said hi. Let's go and finally talk to the Wandering Minstrel. We also have the Letter Forest Tender. Greetings and welcome to the Letter Forest. The, uh, displayed here are the messages of gratitude and encouragement which folks at Realm Over have anonymously written. It comes as no surprise, but no few messages are addressed to adventurers. Now, we're still in the midst of preparations, but I should be pleased to guide you when all is in readiness. Please return soon. Okay. Greetings, friend. By your dauntless bearing, I assume that you are an adventurer. How might this minstrel be of service? Uh, do you know Nagi? So Nagi's sister wishes to find him. Indeed, I have been entrusted with it a task. But, I have an, and I have an inkling as to where he might be. As you may have heard, on the occasion of this rising celebration, I am hosting an exhibit called the Letter Forest. All invited to anonymously submit letters to the forest to express their gratitude and encouragement for another, and all may peruse the letters at their leisure. Now, in order to collect missives from outside Ulda, I have dispatched a chocobo carriage. Naki is escorting said carriage. When he contacted me on Link Pearl a while ago, he said they had let emerge from the Twelveswood on the way back to Ulda. Given the hour, they should be have already arrived. I know not what is causing this delay, but might I trouble you to look into it for them? I would go myself, except I needed here a present. Okay, I can do that. I am truly grateful. In case it helps, the carriage was meant to pass through Blackbrush Station, so perhaps you could take your search to that area. I pray that nothing has befallen them. As I mentioned, the carriage was meant to pass through Blackbrush Station. That may be a sound place for you to begin your search. Slightly written good summary. Quick, succinct, to the point. You just sort of got going here. Had a rough morning, so I ended up sleeping a little more. You know what? Me too, and that's why the stream is like 40 minutes late. Ah. There you are. Were you able to learn out of Nagi? Uh, yeah, he's delivering, but he's late. Escorting carriage for the minstrel. So that's the way of it. As suggested, let's take ourselves to the Blackbrush Station and try searching in the vicinity. I could teleport there, but I think I'm going to use my mount. It's just right over here. They have a nice little rising stage. They made that a couple years ago. I'm glad they keep on using that. 
I don't think they're actively using it for anything this year, so it's just for people who want to put on their own performances. Which is nice. Well, that's a curious looking mount there. I never fix the camera, so it still snaps back forward. Because, of course, I don't log on this character when I'm not streaming. That would be disingenuous. Right? Oh, there she is. Bond! No sir, did I arrive that this man came running out of breath. Good adventure! Thank you, Twelve! It's a madness for the quiver on months. I followed our trackable carriage over the clutch. The carriage only had one guard. It was only outnumbered. Please, you must help him. There has to be Nagi. With me, Bont. Oh yeah, Lala fell in bandits. It's always so Yeah, they can they can do it. And the merchant is quivering, and he is wounded. Damn it. There's no end to them. Have you now, you stubborn little shite? Enough! Leave my little brother alone, or twelve as my witness, you'll receive such a thrashing as you've never known. From this fearsome adventurer here, that is. What? Really? Well, I am the warrior of light. Ha! That's no ordinary man! Retreat! Some people just have better sense. They even got the fancy put away we uh, weapon animation. Are you alright, Huggy? I'm sorry. I didn't come back when I said I would, sister. Rest assured, I'm not too badly hurt. That's a relief. I'll take a proper look at your wounds back in the city. It seems you are an adventurer, too. Thank you for your help. What's your name, if I may ask? I am Bont. Bont McGabber. Bont McGabber. I'll remember it. To send your foes running without even drawing your weapon, you're clearly a great adventurer. I still have a long way to go, embarrassing myself like I did. If I want sister's approval, I need to grow stronger and be able to fight on my own. My approval? Ah, oh, but first things first. Brad and I have a delivery to make to the Rising. If you'll excuse us, we'll hurry back to Ulda. Let's head back as let's head back as well. I've a mind to pay the minstrel visit in any case. And yeah, it's it's that guy. We'd be having a Chocobo carriage ride with that guy. You know, he's one of the B brothers, the merchants. You know, from the beginning of the game. And good, they just teleport me back. How very nice of them. Sister was none too gentle dressing my wounds. Perhaps she's annoyed I didn't show up as promised. Thanks to you, Nagi is safe. Still, what he said about making it his own ways by mind. Welcome back, my friends. Please am I to see that Nagi is safe as well. Rising attendants inform me that they now have all the letters. With this, we may proceed with the letter for us as planned. Thank you, Nagi. I'm so sorry I'm late. You see, explains, explains, explains. Oh, I see. Explains. Oh. Well, not for Bond. There's no telling what might have become of the letters. And Brennan. In the end, I was utterly useless. So that is how it happened. As Nogi's client, allow me to thank you as well for coming to his aid. Yeah, no problem. 
That being said, my boy, you are far from useless. Nay, your bravery defended the carriage until help arrived. There is no need to belittle yourself so. Oh, Bond didn't need to rely on anyone. No, he drove off the bandits with nary more than a stern look. I couldn't hold a candle at him. I can't, but I won't be able to deal with any problem without help. Otherwise, I can't claim to be an adventurer worth his salt. Without help? Tell me, Nagi, all this time, have you been working alone, even for dangerous tasks? That's right. A worthy adventurer doesn't rely on others. If I'm to be the kind of adventurer you approve of, I must be able to handle anything by myself. I see. If that's what you believe, then I can't consent to you being an adventurer any longer. Return to our village and start over. Well... Oh. What? But you were so happy for me when I became an adventurer. I'm wondering. I'm working so hard to succeed, to prove uh, to prove to you that I have what it takes. But, but now, you've developed a grave misconception. Until you recognize what this is, I can't, in good conscience, approve of your calling. If you can't accept this, if you wish to remain an adventurer, then you must win me over. And it begins with pondering why you first embarked on this path. All right, sister. I'll think on this. Who is this? What an unusual family this is. It appears Kip Lee was her brother to rethink what adventurers I I adventuring is to him. Had that question been posed to you, what answer would you arrive at, I wonder? Greetings and welcome to Letter Forest. Let's see, is it ready? Nope, still preparing. I see. I'm sorry you had to see that, Bond. Despite how it may have appeared, no one wants my brother to succeed more than I do. To succeed and be happy. After all, I know better than any how hard he works. Unless he changes his ways, however, he is likely to die somewhere out there. Even if he manages to stay alive, he would only know an arduous life. That's why I didn't go out of my way to be gentle when dressing his wounds. If he could just focus on what actually matters, instead he obsesses about gaining my approval and compares himself to others. <sighs> what drives us? Kippy Jacka is again looking for a wor looking a worried sister. And look, we get the Rising Phoenix whistle if we complete this, and some Nemea Papari. If truth be told, no matter what Nagi wants to do, it is my intent to support him. It's his life, after all, and no one else's. It isn't my place to interfere. But he values your opinion so. Be that as it may, if he's sabotaging his own aspiration with his obsession for my approval, I can't simply stand idly by and watch. Low though I am to impose, until my brother has found his answer, might I trouble you to keep an eye on him? Yeah, sure, why not? The rewards seem worth it. Please take this as a request from me as well. Ever has the adventurer been adventuring ever been dangerous. And it is more dangerous still for one who spurns help. Like Kippy, I do not wish for Naki to continue to on his current path. As a fellow adventurer, please help him find a better way. Alright, yeah, I can do that. Thank you. Now then, on a related matter, I must pay a visit to the Weaver's Guild, but I will see you again anon. If you'll excuse me, Nagi set off this way, so if you may find him at the Sapphire Avenue Exchange. We leave you in, in your capable hands, my friend. Be a gratitude, encouragement, or sympathy. Each of these letters bears the wishes of one soul for another. For Nagi to work so hard to see them delivered at heart, I do not believe he rejects connections with others. Nay, something drives him to believe and behave as he does. And we're going to pry that out of him because we're nosy! Let's see, it might have been faster if I went the other direction. Yeah, I would have hit an eighth right earlier than now. Can't forget this network. It's good. It's reliable. It's quick. Uh, 
Oh, it's you. Bart, what is it? Uh, just keep an eye on you, actually. Is that so? I'm sorry, this is really something I should be doing alone. Still, it's nice to have someone to talk to. Like my sister bade me, I'm pondering why I chose to become an adventurer in the first place. Gibby has looked after me since I was no more than ten after our parents passed away. She was already a reporter by then, and her work took her over to various places. From her, I heard tales about adventurers and came to admire them. Upon learning of the full extent of the impending calamity, it, she took us to a village in the mountains, where our aunt lived. It's thus for times like these that people need stories of hope, she used to say. I believe she had wanted to remain in Gridania and continue her work, but she left in order to keep me safe. I was a burden to her then. I don't want to be a burden to her again. For that, I need to show her that I don't need to depend on others. That I'm a capable adventurer who can handle anything by himself. Ponder as I might, I can't understand what's wrong with that. Well, when in doubt, I suppose I should do what adventurers do and gather information. It would be good, I think, to speak with people like my sister. People who aren't adventurers, but are familiar with them. Hmm. Who in Old Dom would fit that description? Well, it turns out that all these are the same person. How about the Face of the Adventurers Guild? How about the local purveyor of information? And how about business with extensive dealings with adventurers? The dialogue is the same no matter what. You mean the House of Splendors, the place that offers quality gear in exchange for services? No! I better not. Horror stories are rife with people who are mistaken deading themselves to the house, becoming forever indentured. Instead, how about my Miss Momodi? The face of the Avengers Guild. Yeah, that's what I meant. In her capacity as a guild representative. <laughs> She's bound to have some valuable insights. I'll seek her out at once. That person really likes a cat. Very nice. That's nice to see the Anaxian cat. I mean, Siamese cat. I could have swore they were all the same, because, like, they all sounded like the same person. But nope, it turns out that I was wrong. I could go directly and talk with her, but no, I have to go over to you in the corridor. I still remember when I first came here to side up. I was a nervous wreck then, but now this place feels like a second home. Now I come here all the time for crumpets. They make them so springy, and serve them drowning in butter and honey. Sorry, now is not a time for that. Come, let's have a chat with Miss Modi. Well now, if it isn't Bound Nagy, to what do I owe the pleasure of both your companies today? I was hoping to get your advice on a certain matter. You see, explains, explains, explains. Oh, I see. Explains. Oh. The misconceptions you've developed about being an adventurer, that's an interesting one, I have to admit. As I might to figure it out, I keep going around in circles. I thought you might be able to offer some insights. Huh. This is just gut feeling, but I reckon I understand what your sister's trying to say. Tell me, Nagi. Suppose you fell, uh, failed to get your sister's approval. Would you simply give up being an adventurer? Would it all become meaningless? Huh? Huh. From this fair counter, I've seen off many adventurer, each and every one unique, with dreams and destinations all their own. But in spite of their differences, they all share something in common, a reason they first embarked upon their journey. Paul, well, would you mind telling us why you chose to be an adventurer? Uh, well... It's been some time since I started. I actually don't remember why Bont here became an adventurer. To see the world? It seemed exciting? A friend recommended it to me? Or it's a secret? 
You know what? I think I'm gonna say it's a secret because I'd like uh I like the gesture. Because you have to do a nice little Never mind, I didn't do the shush! Oh come on! Well my other <laughs> My other character says it was a secret, rose their finger in front of their lips. Uh, I guess I guess I don't have that emotion yet, so I don't have the uh, uh darn it. If you're disinclined to share, then I won't pry. To look at you though, it's plain you got a proper reason. Keep it close to your heart now, you hear? And you, Nagi? What inspired you to become an adventurer? It's simple, really. I heard about adventures from my sister and became infatuated with the lives they led. Like them, I wanted to be able to see the world while helping those in need. Then isn't that enough? Your sister's approval will know you have a reason all your own. At the 12 I see now. At some point, my desire to prove myself to Kippy had displaced my own motive for, bring, for being an adventurer. That's a misconception Kippy wanted me to recognize. What fool I've been! Wanting someone's approval isn't wrong in and of itself, man. But it's got nothing to do with why you're an adventurer. It shouldn't force you to do things you wouldn't otherwise do, like trying to handle everything alone. Well, that's enough for me for today. I've said my piece. What you do now is up to you, Nagi. Thank you for helping me realize, Miss Mabodi. Ain't nothing of it. It's my job to watch over you all. Nothing makes me happier than to see you happy doing what you do. Later. Hi, Miss Mabodi. We'll talk again someday. Probably. Uh, let's see. You know what? Actually, I would. I do want to see what she says when you say a friend recommended it. So here's what we can do. I think this is what we can do. I can abandon the quest. So if I abandon the quest in the middle of it like this, Naki just disappears. Now I just go back a couple steps. I'll just click through the dialogue real fast. I want to see what it says. I previously said it's a secret because my initial couple characters' first reason for adventuring was to make money. That's why I started in Dole, in Ulda, rather. It, you go there in order to make some gill, right? That That's the way of it. That's the way of it. A little bit of loot repeating dialogue, but you know what? It's it's worth it. I want to see what she says. I want to see what she says. I'm doing it. Because when it's your game, you can do it the way that you want to do it. I have to do some gesticulations. Uh, how about, uh, how about the local purveyor of information? You mean Wyman's? Well, he's certainly knowledgeable. This kind of information he deals with it isn't exactly what we need. Instead, Miss Mabodi. Thank you, Jade, for making me into a Viera. I do enjoy it. Speaking of redeems, I did add a new redeem. There's not very many sound files on it, currently. But, um... I did want to redeem that did not have my voice in it. So I got a couple of voices from some of my friends and stuck them in one of the newer redeems. It's very simple, and there's no reason Stick. for it to be there. Stick! <laughs> hey, Spoop! Yeah, I wasn't able to get you for the initial launch. I'll add you eventually. Well, it's good to see you. How was the audio on that, by the way? Was it too soft? Knife cat emoji. <laughs> it's okay, you'll record what you can. Nah, no worries, no worries. No rush, no muss, no fuss. It's easy to plug in. It was good. Excellent. Click through Nagi's dialogue here. Get to the choice where Mamodi asked me the question. And then we'll see the other dialogue choice. 
And if you are an adult, you can't just skip it. You can just blast through these quests. Get everything done in like seven minutes and get yourself a fancy new thing. No time at all. A little bit of teleporting, no big deal. Everything takes place almost entirely within the city, so it's not like you have to go anywhere. However, there's a little bit extra afterwards. Okay, so let's see. A friend recommended it. Is that right? <laughs> How sweet. Keep that friend close now, you hear? And we saw the rest from there. It's a small, simple little change of dialogue, but you know what? It's enough. Thank you too, Bont, for accompanying me. I think I know what to say to keep it now. And loath I am to trouble you again, there's something else I'd like your help with. You see, of the letters we collected at Limsa Lamenta, one was from an explorer who was seeking an escort from an ex uh, for, was seeking an escort for an expedition, rather. By now, the letter should be on display in the Gold Court. I want to show it to my sister, and I'd be grateful you could help me find it. Come, let's rejoin the minstrel. Right back down to the Gold Court. Let's run, run, run! Uh, let's see. Now, where is that letter? Ah, welcome back. I hope you were able to find the answer. Yes, I'm happy to say. Miss Mamoni helped me come to a realization. And when I go to speak with my sister... Explains, explains. Oh. 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 I see, I see. By all means, feel free to borrow the letter. Does it have any distinguishing characteristics? As I recall, there was a large drawing of blue Chocobo on it. Very well. Let us search together, the more swiftly to find it. So now that we know what the correct one is, we have to look at all the incorrect ones first. A great many of these letters bear the uh, words of thanks for adventurers, a testament to the good that you and yours do out in the world. Dear kindly Mikote adventurer, thank you for being helping me find my mother. I was scared at first, but it made me feel brave. I had lots of fun at Gold Saucer, and it was even more fun because of you. I hope to see you again. Please take care. Why, it's a lost child from the Gold Saucer. The staff was so uh, tied up, so I hoped to track down the mother. And <laughs> what a fine feeling this is. <laughs> uh, let's see. Letter with a Chocobo carriage drawing. Dear Not-So-New Adventurer, As a traveling merchant, I've had my fair share of happy encounters, but sharing a carriage with you stands out above them all. For you see, I went on to sell variable crate loads of the ring I gave you, and turned enough of a profit to buy my own carriage. You share with me your adventurous luck, and I count my blessings every day. No matter where I go, I often hear tell of your exploits. It makes me inordinarily proud to have met you. Till we meet again, my friend, I pay for your continued safety and success. While the contents ring a bell, this letter wasn't written by an explorer, nor does it bear a drawing of a blue chocobo. It isn't the Miss of Naki is looking for. Well, that would apply to adventurers who started in regions that weren't me. I didn't meet my merchant-like mer uh, carriage. Or get a ring from them. I started on a boat. That's the correct one. We're going to read that one last. Letter with a shield drawing. As someone charged with the city's peace, I cannot overstate how much of a boon adventurers are to our efforts. Some folk had expressed concern that an increase in drifters would see a corresponding rise in crimes, but on the contrary, they are steadily declining. Soldiers like ourselves are somewhat limited in the scope of our duties, and we are not always available to lend our citizens what assistance they need. 
Thus would I like to take this opportunity to express my heartfelt gratitude to the adventurers who step up to fill the void. Ah. Letter with a quill drawing. Esteemed adventurer, should you chance to read this letter, I pray it finds you well. Much time has passed since you helped us rebuild in the wake of that terrible disaster, but we still remember you most fondly. Our lives continue to be hard, and every day brings new challenges. Nonetheless, we have regained a semblance of what we once had, and smiles are beginning to return to faces. The morrow will, brighten the, uh, will be brighter than today, and we dare to believe now thanks to you. And should you yourself face hardship, I pray that you believe the same. Ah, uh, It is nice to read little messages like this. Posted anonymously. But yeah, that's not the ones we need. We need this one. Dear adventurer, how fares your journey? Mine continues, I will wake up to the sound of bird song and lie down to sleep beneath the moonlight as I seek unblazed trails. Long ago, when adventurer aided me, I was made to realize how alike we are. Deep down, we are simply travelers who thrill to make new discoveries. Thus do I write this letter now in hopes of recruiting such like-minded souls to join me on an expedition. If you at all share in my desire to make un the uncharted charted, then I invite you to seek me out the drowning wench of Limsa Limsa. Eagerly do I await your coming. A recruiting adventurous bears the drawing of Blue Chocobo. It must be the Miss of Naki is looking for. And so we take it down? But it still stays on the line, I guess? Sure, why not? Uh, let's see. That's the same dialogue. No luck over here so far. How about you? Letter with a blue Chocobo drawing. Adored with a hand-drawn picture of a Chocobo, this letter invites adventurers to take part in an exploratory expedition. A blue Chocobo. Yes, this is the best. This is the one. All that's left, that is, to go talk to Kipi. You know where she is? Oh, uh, she said something about the Weaver's Guild? She went to the Weaver's Guild, saying that she had business there. Yes. Ah, perhaps she's buying clothes. At any rate, I'll look her there. Thank you. For well, this too, might I trouble you to accompany Nagi? Afterwards, I would ask that you must tell me how events unfold. I shall await you at the Ruby Road Exchange. You got up here to spend here again, but okay. And the other letters are still here, in case you wanted to read them after getting the correct one. Which is good, I like when games do that. They don't always do that, even in this one. I hate missing dialogue. You're here too, Bont. I must confess, I'm feeling rather nervous, so I appreciate your presence. Oh dear, you came to find me? My apologies for taking so long. So, Nagi, were you able to find the answer? Aye. To begin with, I want you to look at this. I already read it, so I'm not going to read it again if she reads it. Explorer is assembling an escort for an expedition. Certainly sounds exciting. And by your approval, I was determined to only rely, uh, not rely on others. But well, part of me dearly wanted to be part of the expedition, to go where I dare not set foot alone. So I decided that I will answer the invitation. Then, this means you've given up on trying to do everything alone? Yeah. I had wanted to prove to you that I'm capable, that I'm no longer a burden, and in my obsession I lost sight of why I became an adventurer in the first place. To see what lies beyond the horizon and lend a helping hand to those I meet. That's what drives me. I was able to remember this, thanks to Miss Mimodi and Bunt. And whether or not you approve, I want to continue adventuring for my own reasons. Is, is that alright with you? Didn't you just say you don't need my approval? But to be clear, I never actually intended to stop you. Eh? Do you remember what you once told me, Nagi, shortly before the Calamity struck? Uh, no. Hey, 
Have you interviewed with adventures again today? What are they like? What kind of places have they been to? <laughs> you never get sick of hearing about these adventures, do you? Never, ever! When I grow up, I want to be an adventurer, too! Well, that's as fine an aspiration as any. But do you know what kind of adventurer you wish to become? A hero, like in the tales, perhaps? Oh, no, sister, not a hero. Adventurers are free spirits, and I want to be the freest spirit of all. Oh, yes, I'll travel the world and meet lots of people, and when I visit home, you can interview me as much as you like. Aww! For that boy to spread help for want of my approval, I couldn't bear to see it. In order to bring you to your senses, I may have spoken a little sternly. As an adventurer, you'll experience no small amount of hardship, but you chose this path because you wanted to be free. So don't let yourself be shackled by expectation, be it your own or that of others. Instead, take things as they come. So long as you are true to yourself and recognize your limits, you'll surely find a way forward. And remember, not even heroes can accomplish everything alone. Relying on others doesn't make you a lesser adventurer. If anything, the freer you are, the more you need to look out for one another. And that, I believe, is the essence and beauty of adventuring. Wouldn't you agree, Bond? A hero needs friends as much as anyone, or wholeheartedly. However, if you complete other person's adventure, another person's story, you get to say, an adventurer is never alone. I like that option best. But because Bond is not far enough in the story to be able to say that, uh, I'll go with option two. Understood. Gippy, I won't forget this. Knowing you, I expect you're raring to go and answer the explorer's petition for Limsa Lamensa, or rather, in Limsa. You'll be taking an airship, yes? In which case, I shall give you these garments to you now. I had them made for you, thinking it was past time you had something better. For me? Thank you so much, sister. I must thank you too, Bont. You're kind of adventure I admire, and I'll keep on working hard to be like you. I couldn't have asked for a better person to watch over my little brother. I appreciate everything you've done for him, and look forward to meeting you again, be it for a story or something else. With that, we take our leave of you. Till next time! What a fine pair they are! You see the siblings off, safe and knowing that they will be well. Time to rejoin the wandering minstrel and relay to him the tale's happy conclusion. As we just load all the minions at once. Sprint is back up, so we will make use of it. Uh, am I going the correct direction? Yes. For one reason or another, this quest always ends in this location. The rising quest, that is. It always ends right outside the elevator, right here. Which is why during the Ryzen you will usually see on the first day a massive amassment of people. Welcome back, my friend. Gotcha by your expression, I take it all is well with Nagi and Kipi. Explains. Yeah. I see. Please don't mind to hear that. We've also set out on our journey. It is usually the simplest of reasons. As we make our way, those reasons may become lost in a haze of motives, causing us to lose sight of what truly matters. In such a time, we can but remember what prompted us to take our first step. We'll always find the strength to take the next. Naki shall be fine. I am certain of it. My thanks for keeping an eye on him. These events have inspired a new verse in me. A verse about the dreams of those who seek new worlds, and hopes of those who still see them off. Oh no! My migraines!
I'm... I'm on Sid's airship? But no one's driving! Is it just me? Is there no one else here? Greetings, warrior of light. What? Wait. It's you! This is a world that exists outside your reality. Could it be a dream? A flight of fancy conjured by your weary mind? Perhaps. Or perhaps not. Tis a pleasure to make your acquaintance. My name is Naoki Yoshida, and I have beckoned you here that I might express my gratitude. It's him! Ten years have now passed since the world was reborn from its ashes, since we set forth upon this journey. Countless things have happened during that time, and I've had the pleasure of meeting many an adventure along the way. If truth be told, it hadn't always been this easy. There are moments where I wonder why I might struggle so. Days when I am tempted to cast it all aside. But in spite of this, I always manage to carry on, and it's thanks to my wonderful comrades, and to you, our esteemed adventurers. By now, I must have regaled with tens of thousands of your tales. Usually share them with a smile. But even when it is with a frown, you tell me that you are still enjoying yourself. There's no exaggeration to say that I derive all my driving force from you all. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you. Oh, it always feels so good to be thanked by the developer! <laughs> that was an unending journey. Uh, nothing would make me happier than if we could keep walking it together. As you make your way, we promise that we will ever be at your side. Matching you step for step. Now, the time has come for the vision to end. Time for your eyes to open from this waking dream. Much time has passed since the world was reborn from its ashes. Countless souls have made this place their home. Every single one has left an indelible mark upon it. Like that! It's the Orc Tempered Phoenix! Together, we have built this world. It is our sincerest hope that we shall continue to do so for many years to come. So please, be safe and well. May you ever walk in the light of the crystal. That was actually a pretty good migraine. As far as migraines go. I dare say Nagi is aboard the airship by now. I pray that he and Kipi will find happiness upon their respective paths. I hope you do so as well, my friend. If you would let me in here, I will dedicate these verses to your future. Because of course you would know the future! By morning light the journey start, a trill of hope within our hearts, a westerly winds to river song, into the world where we belong. There's Nagi's new outfit. It sure is something. Above fields of white and azure sky, sunset storm a crimson fire, jewels of glitter on pitch black veil, a new day dawn so goes the tale. By eternal wind we carry on, boldly towards a golden morn, with memories as a guiding star, shining our steps both near and far. Where will you go? Whom you will meet? And what you will you see? There's no telling what the future holds for anyone. Yet some come what may, I bet that you never forget this. The bonds you forge, the memories you make, and the footprints you leave behind. It shall one day spur you forward. So pray continue walking your own path. 
Whether your journey leads, I shall be praying for your happiness. Yeah! Thanks, guy. Uh, and so they're going to use the last of the summer's fireworks in this celebration. Oh no, don't shoot the airship out of the sky! Oh, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. With memories shared yet all our own, as we, one we braved the front, uh, frontiers unknown. Thank you for ten years! <laughs> nice little handwritten bit there, too. So we get our rising phoenix whistle. Hot to the touch! This hand-carved whistle emits a lively shrill uh, that summons your rising phoenix. And we get some Nyamea potpourri. Made from alchemically treated petals of nine male lilies, this fragrant bundle of potpourri brings a sense of tranquility to even the most troubled souls. You have access to a letter force at the Gold Court. Speak with a tender stationed there to read the letters. Additionally, you also have unlocked the Koopo Koopo Adventure minigame. All the steps of Nald. Speak with Nanana at the Ruby Road Exchange to play. This, along with other minigames, may also be played by opening the toy chest at any in-room. So we've unlocked a minigame that doesn't award anything. Let's take a look at, uh... Let's eat the whistle. Shove the letter inside of our bag. Or shove the uh, poster there and said, Let's use the potpourri. It's just nice, you get the scattered lilies everywhere. Meant as a symbol of remembrance. You can, you can buy as much of that as you like from the vendor. But you know what, I'm about reading stuff. So let's go and read stuff. So many letters of gratitude. I should write down lots of things too. Gods know a people. I owe lots of people. Who is that? I guess those are just random old dons. Greetings and welcome to the Letter Forest. Despite here our messages of gratitude and encouragement, which folks a realm over have anonymously written. It comes as no surprise, but no few messages are addressed to adventurers. If you wish to peruse the letters, I should be pleased to guide you. Look, there, that's a lot of letters! Let's start from the top down. A letter from a message board keeper. That's a lot of letters. Many years have passed since we installed a message board on an unassuming street corner. To see it continue to be utilized by adventurers fills me and my fellow keepers with pride. Like a lodestone, the message board draws people together. It is our hope that it keeps serving you as well as a means to share information. For our humble part, we shall endeavor to maintain the board in good repair while bringing you news that may be of interest. With best wishes, a message board keeper. Hmm, I wonder who these letters could be from. We have a letter from a choreographist. As a choreographist, my job is to create movements that convey specific emotions, such as a dancer's performance or a mammoth's adorable gesture. And though I have the honor of contributing my expertise to adequate manuals, movement cannot be tangibly preserved in the matter of that artwork, such as paintings can. From the mesmerizing flutter of fabric to the inviting springiness of booze, it all passes by in an instant. In light of this, if but one of my steps or flourishes occupy a place in your memory, then nothing would make me happier. Movingly yours, a humble choreographist. <laughs> Uh Ah, uh, this is good. This is good. This makes this uh Uh I'm crying a little bit. I'm crying a little bit. A letter from an etiquette manual writer. Very similar to the previous one, but not quite. One lazy afternoon, as I stood by the Eighth Right Plaza, I found myself absorbed by the sight of adventurers whiling away their time. 
greeting friends who are passing by, practicing a newly learned dance, sitting on a bench and chatting, opening umbrellas when it began to rain, talking into a loaf of bread when peckish. The untrained eye, they were doing not out of the ordinary. I, however, saw the fruits of my life's work, and it warmed my heart. Dreaming of a day when proper social etiquette is practiced by all, be it in a barroom or otherwise, I shall continue my quest to edify. Courteously yours, an etiquette manual writer. Oh, uh, Zach, like I must make a lot of the emotes. Uh, a letter from a theater set designer. Dear adventurer, I'm a theater set designer, and one who is said to have a penchant for designing unusual props for the stage. Some of my labors of love, it thrilled me to discover, have caught your eye to become little companions that follow you around, or even modes of transportation. To see my creations for the stage delight you off it. Even in the oddest ones, delight me in turn, and further motivates me in my craft. In hopes that I can continue to delight you all, I will endeavor to create ever more interesting props. Yours and Whimsy, a theater set designer. Oh, so they must make models for bosses and minions. A letter from a festival committee member. Dear Adventure, I'm a festival committee member in charge of decorating the cities throughout uh, during uh, celebrations. Oh, so they put all these little balloons and strings of letters everywhere. Nice. While decorations are an oft unremarked part of events, some of you have noticed the little touches we apply, such as the stray bombs, a romantic snowman, and it makes our efforts all the more worthwhile. As you continue your adventures, it is our hope that the festive ambience we create throughout the years will provide you with joy and respite both. Mirthfully yours, a festive committee member. Ah, so if you... If during the event you notice that they're slightly differently placed than last year, you know that they're all placed by hand by that particular employee. A letter from an architect. Recently, my fellows and I have been taking ourselves around the realm, repairing bridges and roads, as well as restoring natural landscapes. This we do as part of an initiative to improve quality of life for adventurers. Yours is a long journey. What little we can do to ease your way, we gladly do. Constructively yours, a humble architect. Oh, so you're the guys who are removing invisible walls and making it so we can actually use the bridge. Oh, that guy's doing the hard work. It goes unseen. But if we travel the road, then they're the ones who put it there. A letter from an artisan. You who are reading this letter, I bid you imagine the countless adventurers who call this world home. I dare say it is difficult to do so, for that is the reality as it stands. Yet we mustn't take it for granted, for what we have now is a culmination of a much hard work by many, uh, full many souls. <coughs> Sorry, problems in the middle of that. Souls including your good self. Adventurers breathe life into this world, each one of you giving rise to grand tales, and I hope that never f and you never forget this. Thank you for taking the time to cast your eyes over these words. Whoever your adventurers may lead, may you find happiness. With utmost respect, a nameless artisan. Mm hmm. I'm glad that they're happy that so many are playing. A letter from a linguist. I first set foot in this land ten years ago. Since then, I have had the occasion to meet numerous fine adventurers like yourself. Many languages exist, and they sometimes act as a wall to divide us. This world, however, is a place where we might transcend that wall and come together in unity. Each and every day, you and yours find various ways to forge bonds. In so doing, you gain access to a new world as seen through different eyes, and that is what makes life endlessly fascinating. As you carry on adventuring, I pray that you will be blessed with many such enriching encounters. Yours, in understanding and unity, a humble linguist. I'm glad that the auto-translation dictionary exists so I can communicate with people in spite of language. A letter from a citizen. <coughs> Dear adventurer, 
During the calamity, and for a long time afterwards, there was nary a smile to be seen upon faces. Now, however, I often see you and yours walking happily through the city, and it never fails to warm my heart. In my mind, you are the symbols of a new era. No one can say what the future holds, but when I see your smiles, I am reassured that somehow all will be well. Sincerely yours, a humble citizen. Ah. A letter from a theater director! I used to be an adventurer, but in the course of my travels I developed the urge to recreate for others the sense of marvel that I was experiencing. One thing led to another and I eventually became a theater director. My role is to produce spectacular theater, and nothing is more gratifying than to receive praise from the audience. For a long time to come, I hope to continue creating memorable adventures to share with everyone. Yours in imagination and wonderment, a humble theater director. Oh, so a former player made an employee. Oh, that's great! A letter from an advertising scribe. Is Calamity code for period between original release and uh, Realm Reborn? Um, the Calamity is the event that was the end of the original release. The meteor falling. Bahamut. The initial cutscene that I showed in the very first episode of this. I could go watch the trailer again right now. It's in the game. But yeah, the unleashing of Bahamut and that thing that happened, that was a calamity. And then there was a five-year uh, time gap between that and the beginning of this game. Which, in reality, took, like, eight months, six months. Not that long, actually. As an advertising scribe, I create notices for events and products that you see posted at message boards. Such information isn't exactly essential for adventuring, but I consider it a job well done if people are aware of their options, and I'll keep striving to deliver information that may be of interest to adventurers. Thank you always for your kindness and compassion. Communicatively yours, a humble advertising scribe. Ah yes, they're the one who make all the little advertisements I see about the bog station at, on the login screen, trying to get me to buy the, the latest and greatest mounts and optional content. I don't need any of it, so I often don't buy any of it. But people like to gift those. I'm glad that they enjoy making their little advertisements. A little for a letter from a guide. In all things, it's nice to be able to make changes to better suit your taste. But by the same token, the more choices one has, the more difficult it is to decide what to do. We began posting guides on a message board as a way to answer questions from the adventurers. Before we knew it, we had surpassed 200 items! We couldn't have kept at it for so long without your invaluable feedback. It makes us truly happy when we hear that we could help solve your problems, even in some small way. Encouraged by your praise and driven by your requests, we keep working hard to serve you. Should you have any comments or suggestions, please do not hesitate to reach out. We always appreciate hearing from you. Informatively yours, a humble guide. Oh, so, like, oh, oh, they must work on the forum, too. Little guides on how to use features and such. Oh, that's nice. A letter from a gatekeeper. Someone at Square Enix is a gatekeeper? All who set forth must invariably pass through the entrance. And while most will not spare us place a second thought, we gatekeepers think of not else day in and day out. Our solemn duty is to ensure that all adventurers can enter unhindered. And this means keeping signs in good repair and pesky fiends at bay. We're especially attentive when we throw open all entrances at once, following large-scale maintenance works. Inspired by the eager expressions you wear as you set forth anew, we will continue performing our task to the best of our ability. Vigilantly yours, a humble gatekeeper. Oh, so they're the people who maintain the servers. Uh, so when they go down for maintenance, they shut the gates. And when they open the servers all back up, they open the gates. Ah, uh, that's that's a cute way of putting it. Ah, uh, that's nice. That's nice. A letter from a playwright. A stirring story needs a formidable antagonist, one who stands in a protagonist's way and causes them sadness and suffering. While the heroes finally overcome that foe, they will know joy that as sweet as their struggles were bitter. Those who shared the joy will go on to become friends true, their bond transcending age, station, and nations. And I can't read it again, so hold on. This is just staying on now. 
In order to create such depressing lows and soaring highs, I will strive to conceive of a more compelling antagonist. Dramatically yours, a humble playwright. Oh no, they enjoy writing the villains. But you know what? Good villains make for a good story. A letter from a theater composer. As someone who composes music for a stage, nothing pleases me more than to hear you are moved by my work. I am also humbled to receive your words of appreciation for the concerts we hold and the orchestra roles we release. You are my motivation, spurring me to continue composing music that brings the story to life, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Yours of the melody, a humble theater composer. Ah, that one gets me too. Ah, Jade is moved. Jade is moved by the words. A letter from a theater sound designer. This is the last one. From sword slashing to armor clinking, from water running to leaves rustling, I have the pleasure of recreating for the stage the various sounds that can be heard out in the world. It is a challenge and thrill to produce these sounds, and we draw inspiration from the knowledge that they are heard and appreciated by many. However, the sounds of a play isn't limited to that which we ourselves create. No, they also encompass those made by the audience and the players. It is a collaboration between us, a joint performance, and it is my hope that we can continue filling the world with sound together. Acoustically yours, a humble theater sound designer. That's so nice! I'm glad that they were able to get these, like... I don't know how many this is, like 16, 19? I'm glad they were able to get these 19 employees to write these little things. They didn't have to do that. They didn't have to do this. But they did it anyway, and I enjoy it. And if you didn't want to read any of this, you didn't have to. Because now you can just listen to me read it. There are two other things that this event has. One of them will give me a chance to rest my voice, so I think I'm going to do that one next. It's ten years, it seems an appropriate time. You know what, you're right. You're right. Greetings, adventurer. Are you here to test your skills and excitement of Kupo Kupo Adventure? Uh, what is Kupo Kupo Adventure? Kupo Kupo Adventure is a glamour-generating game in which you control a Moogle armed with a magic re uh, rebounding ball and do battle with hordes of fiends. The game was apparently developed by a fun-loving engineer. I don't know the individual personally, I'm afraid, but it's my pleasure to attend to those who wish to play. If you have a spare moment, then by all means, give it a try. Tell me about yourself. Uh, about myself? Well, there isn't much to tell, but I'm an ordinary citizen of Uldah. I previously assisted the Wandering Minstrel of Rising and was asked to do so again. Suffice to say, I'm suitably compensated for my services. You bet I am, Kupo! Excellent. Let me get you started at once. Please enjoy yourself. A hydrate? Yes, thank you. So we have a program called Koopa Koopa Adventure. With some nice little, like, bitty music. Chip-tuned. Tiny little, like, sprite pixel fragments everywhere. Stage one. Player turn. Okay, so we have lanes that we can move up and down. We have a little aiming reticle that I control with the mouse. It shows me where the first bounce will go, but I need more than one bounce. We have spells like Fire, Starstorm, Cure, Ward, and Re-Raise, which cost a lot of mana. We'll get mana back from hitting things. Uh, I want to get this crystal because that will power up my attack. So let's bounce off this wall. There we go. Player turn. Okay, let's get a nice bounce here. Oh, I missed him. That's okay, though. More enemies are showing up. I would like to bounce this one right about here. Ah, that was bad. That was real bad, actually. How about we try this, then? Oh, I want that. I want that. Hold on.
The bombs will explode and get things around them. Oh, that was great! Uh, I would like to get a really good rebound on this one. How about we just, like... How about we just fire like this? Well, that kind of worked. It got me the crystal, if nothing else, which powers up my attack. Try something like that? Nope, I missed everything. I missed everything! You sense a powerful presence. Oh no, that's not good. Try something like, uh, like this? That's not good. A fearsome fiend has appeared! Uh, I think I want to use some abilities. Let's try Star Storm here. Yeah, that looks good. Ah, Ultras and Typhoon. Oh, that was bad. I got rid of Typhoon, but, uh... I left Ultros. Try something like this. Good bounces there. Not enough, though. Oh, no! Ultros hit me for a little bit of damage! How can I possibly deal with this? Only one more fiend left. Just shoot straight at him. Easy enough. Okay, that's the first wave. Stage one cleared. Stage two, slightly different enemies. Let's see, we have... Oh no! This enemy moves! A cactar! We have a crocodile, and uh, I'm not really sure what those are, but they don't have a lot of health. Alright, I want to get when it's in that third lane. Like so! And the cactars will shoot at me. Okay, alright, alright, alright. 8-bit version of Torn from the Heavens. Yes! Oh no, if I don't... Okay, I finished it off. I was in the same lane as the cactars. So... Yes! Okay, it missed. I'm alive. Oh no, that's... Oh no, we can't have that. How about something like, uh, this? But I need that thing to be in that lane. Bop. Yeah! Good bounces. Lots of enemies. Okay. Uh, how about I be all the way up here. I will fire this, but I want uh, those cactars to be in a slightly different position. Like that. Okay, the cactars are dealt with. That's what I was worried about. Okay, none of these are moving. That's okay. I kind of want to get, like, trapped in there. But I'm not sure about my angle. Something like this might do it. Well, that wasn't exactly what I wanted. It, oh, it put poison under me! Oh no! My score! It will never recover. How about something like this? Oh no! It's a- oh no! Oh no! Oh no! I left myself wide open! Ah! Maybe I should heal. Is it enough? Not a great bounce. Left myself open to attack again. Ah! What happens if I do a Star Storm here? Uh, that's solid, but I should wait until we get a little bit closer. It would be nice if they were clustered around that bomb. But we can't always have nice things.
Nope, oh, left myself open again. You sense a powerful presence. Come on, I can do this. I'm thinking about too hard is what the problem is. Or maybe I'm not thinking about hard enough. A fearsome fiend has appeared. Oh no. Is that a, a mega Oshu? Alright, let me get that uh, cactar way up in that lane there. Like that. That kind of worked. I'm happy with that. Those are some results, that's to be sure. Uh, can I just throw down a meteor? Do we have a meteor? I can levitate over things. Alright, that's fine. But this would take care of the Oshu for sure. I want that thing to be up there first. That did something. Oh no! Poison. Toxins are causing damage at the start of each turn. I could have sooner that off. But I'll just do it again, right? Do it anyway. Uh, let's see. It recovers 50 health. It has a cooldown. It does recover it. That's fine. Will Starstorm get... Yeah, it'll get all the way back there. Let's do Starstorm. Okay. Cover this like so. Bomb exploded that. That's good. Da, da, da. Boss is dealt with. One little minion left. Now let's just fire away. Da, 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 da. There we go. Stage two. One stage left. All right. Now we have Mandragoras. And Toddberries! Oh no! I want to fire like this. So what do Mandragoras do? I don't remember what their iconic thing is. Not when it's at the top. Let's wait for it to be like the... there. Well, whatever they are, they're dealt with. Oh, what the... You! You are a problem! That is a problem. Okay, I want the character to be back on the bottom. I want the character to be back on the bottom, so I have to wait a little bit. Like so! Alright, that went pretty good, that went pretty good! You thought of Walnut Bowling. Yeah, this is kind of reminding me of some uh, Plants vs. Zombies days. I want to fire it like this when that guy is there. Yeah! Okay, I have to take out this ton very quickly. Okay, Mandragore has put down poison. Okay, there's a Bane Might there. Okay, so if I bounce it off this guy's head like so, until it goes down, that should be fine. But I want to wait until the Cactar is near the bottom. Like there. Good bounces. That poison is still on the floor. I want to get that crystal. Is this angle a little bit too tight? I think it is. I want it to be fired like that. Uh, let's go with... Let's wait until the character is in that lane right there. Like so! Ah! Didn't quite work. Should have let the character be up one more. Okay, another one of those. Really want this angle to be tight. I gotta deal with that bottom Tonberry. Hold on, let's deal with that. I do have Meteor. It costs a lot of stuff. This will deal with a lot of problems right now. I could just clean the board. You know what? Let's drop a Meteor. New turn. Okay. That's one way to do it.
Be in the top lane. Oh, you can't be in the top lane because you're... Okay. If I stay here, then you're gonna fire poison under me. That's fine. That's fine. I can take a little bit of damage. Oh, it didn't. Oh, I see. Okay, all right. So be it then. Oh, no. That's not what I wanted. That's what I did, so it's what I get. Oh, that's a lot of them. Something like, uh... That's pretty good, that's pretty good. Oh no, poison! Oh no, doom! Oh no! Certain death when the counter reaches zero. Effect can only be dispelled by defeating the enemy that inflicted it. Oh no! I could just drop this here. That would certainly defeat the enemy that inflicted it. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, let's try and get a decent angle here. Oh, just bounce right back out, right? I really don't like those those little Medusa ladies. You sense a powerful presence. And my ma is getting a little bit low, too. I've been leaning on these abilities. It should bounce up and around and get the other... Yeah, that might be fine. Let's try this. Ooh! Ooh! Ooh, that was a lot better than I thought it would be. Nice! I can't let that Tom Berry get too much... Ah! The Tom Berry stabbed me! But wait, that's Odin! Oh no! Okay, so... Odin will do a lot of damage! Maybe I should, maybe I should cure now, just to be sure. Alright, uh... I gotta take out this Tonberry, it's way too close. Poison, Thousand Needles, stabbed! Ah. Is it because it countered me? Is that what is going on there? That's probably what's going on there. Wait for you to be in lane three. Like so. Ah! Oh! Oh, my poor health! A better cure. Just to be sure. If I can get a good bounce around behind Odin, I can do a lot of damage. But I also need to take out the Tonberry. So let's try something like uh, this. That's some solid damage. Oh no! Am I dead? I'm dead! Your adventure ends here, Koopo. Ah! I lost. I should have cast for rays on myself. I should have cast for rays on myself. But you know what? That's the way it goes. Should I go again? I would have to go all the way. Maybe. Can I retry for just from stage 3? Never mind. Okay, stage 3 it is. We're doing it again. Would you believe I'd be in on my first time with my original character on my original run through the game? No? Oh well, don't worry about it. I did it. I know I did it. But now I'm going to do it again. I'm glad I got to keep all my crystals from the previous levels. Can I get a bounce behind the... If I... No, I can't. I can't get behind the Mandragora easily. So that just slows right on out. Something like uh, this. Not working at all like I hope. Ow! Okay, so Tonberry's counter. Got it. Okay, so if you hit a Tonberry, that's what you should do. I probably should have learned that from last time. Let's just wipe out the board with a meteor. I like that. Top up with a heal. I like dropping meteor early because then it'll be available later, yeah? That's my theory, anyway.
What the? No, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to go behind. Oh, well. Like that. That would have been great last turn. All right, uh, let's see. How about Star Storm? Don't get that square. Okay, let's wait till the... Uh... That works pretty good. That. Okay. Good. Solid. Something like uh, it not being in my row. Didn't get the crystal. That's fine. I'll get the crystal this turn. Okay, maybe I'll get it next turn. Somehow in all that, I still didn't get the crystal. Ow! Something like, uh... Still didn't get the crystal. I'll get one of these turns, I swear. Minigame? Oh, from the event. Yeah, Mills. It's pretty good. I enjoy it. Also, hi. Welcome to the stream. I, uh, it's just not a good time to get the crystal at all. Star Storm will only get that much. I could get the crystal with a Star Storm. I could do that. I think I'll do that. I'll wait till the, the cactars up here. Fire that off. Hey! Hey, thank you for gifting that sub! I'm sure Mills will really appreciate it. Mills really likes using my events. Never mind, that was the other way around. Mills just gave Spoop a sub. Revenge! I hope that you're enjoying the discount that you get for September. Or no, September. This is September. So, subscriptions should be a little bit cheaper for you guys, yeah? Or at least I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So yeah, go ahead. I hope that you enjoy my emotes. I don't have many. But what I have, I feel like are good. Now then. What am I doing here? Okay, I'm going to hit the... I'm going to hit the Cactor when it comes out to the bomb. It only has one health, so I want to get it with one little bean. Like that. Yes! Yes! Ow! Blast! You said it's a powerful presence. Uh, let's top up with a cure. How long does re-raise happen? How long does this last? I don't have enough MP for it anyway. It's fine. Quick game? No, not yet. Something like this should work. Okay. Okay, now we have Odin. We're just Odin. Alright, so this should be fine. This should be better. That's a fair amount of damage to Odin. I want to get the shots behind him. I want to get something like, uh, like this. This might work. Alright, that got Odin out of the way. Now I just have to deal with these two. You know what? Meteor's back up. Die! Okay. Success! We have one game over. Sorry about that. Look, it's nice pixel art! Or pixelized art, I should say. Now, if you beat the game without all these extra stuff, you get tons of bonus points. But I've never been one who cares about score. But if you want to go for a high score, once you unlock it, this minigame through this event, this will be inside of your toy chest! Inside the in-room! Forever! And they usually don't put minigames like this in the Mog Station Koopo store. So this might be a unique thing for you to be able to get from an event that you might never be able to get in-game ever again. Not that you can really show this to other people while you're in the game. It would be nice if there was a way, Yoshi P. 
But no, not right now. That was our Koopo Koopo adventure. Oh, that felt good. Uh, let's see. There should be more. There should be more. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. This should be... This is part of the event, too. They don't really point it out. They don't really point it out. Remembering the past. Maybe this is just going to be in game forever now. Maybe it was only added during the event. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, this is the part of the event. They added this quest for this event. This quest did not exist before this event, but this quest is going to be sticking around forever. This quest is going to be sticking around forever. Hide the chat again? Okay, we will do. That said, currently the chat is on the event log. You would not see other players' dialogue. But yes. I know there is a, uh, there is a bit of a chat delay. So this quest is going to be around forever, but because it was added this rising, and I think it's related to the rising, I'm going to do this quest now. Remembering the past. Nadonji appears to be deep in thought. The, de the demon set up to all. The demon presence. As if you've ever ready to leap into action. There's no mistake. You're an adventurer. An dependable one at that. Tell me, are you familiar with the name Louis R. Le Veilleur? Uh, I've heard of him. What? You don't know the legendary Archon when they saved Arc Eosia from the Calamity? Well, I suppose there's something to be said for our fresh perspectives. Forgive me my suddenness. I'm Nanonji Nanonji, a budding writer. I seek a pen biography of the great man. In particular, I wish to cover his movements leading to Calamity, and to that end I've requested the interview with the Im Immortal Flames. He served the Orzi Alliance as a tactician, you see, so there ought to be some order to be had with dealing with him. And while I've requested my thankful, uh, been thankfully been requested, there's just one problem. I don't have much experience conducting interviews, and I'm worried whether I'll be able to do a proper job. As I mentioned, you're doubtless used to dealing with people. You don't say. Thus, I would like you to ask me to, to accompany me to a capacity of an assistant. It will be tremendously reassuring to simply to have you watching on. And if you are amenable, afterwards I'd like you to interview you as well for your own impressions. For your troubles, I'll be certain to credit you as a collaborator. So please, will you help me with my like, uh, biography? That memories of the calamity might be preserved for future generations? Sure, why not? That was, I've never heard of him? I see. I completely misread. I'm in your debt. To begin with, please come with me to Camp Tybone in Eastern Thadalyn. There's a place I'd like to visit ahead of the interview. Is that so? Hold on, let me reread that again. I've never heard of him? Oh. I completely misread that. Of course I am! Of course you are, of course you are. And then we just mash on through it at mock speed and get right back where we were. There we know. There we know. There we go. There we are in now in the know. Yeah, there's probably not going to be a lot of combat this stream. Maybe not until the very end of it. There you are. To explain why we're here. Oh, but I haven't even so much as asked your name. How am I supposed to pray you if you don't even know me that much? Uh, I'm Bond. Perhaps you know of me. Bond McGammer. The Bond McGammer champion of Eosia? It's no wonder I failed to you are dependable. Well, with such as you helping me, everything will surely go well. Okay, back to business. The interview I've arranged is with an officer of the Immortal Flames. As there's still time, however, I thought we could pay a visit to a nearby graveyard first, so I can explain my motivation for the biography. Fine. I come from a small village near Cotton No Flats. It was barren down in a calamity, and those who died there all laid to rest. My parents among them. Oh. 
I'm sorry. It's hardly an uncommon tale. After a dread primal emerged from Dalamud, he unleashed fire and devastation across the length of the breadth of Eorzea. But as much as the calamity has scarred this realm, it is quickly becoming just another event in the history books. Beyond occasionally giving thanks to the Archons, the Eorzea was saved, people spared little thought. But when you've lost so many loved ones, it's hard to feel that anything was saved. That's why I wish to know more about Louis Hoa. By learning his part in the Orzia salvation, I hope that will attain closure. That's my motivation for writing this biography. Yeah, sure, sure. Well then, in preparation for the interview, let's review what is known about the subject. Really? It's difficult to define exactly when the Seventh Emperor Calamity was set into motion. Many historians, however, point to the Empire's media project, which sought to bring Dalamud down upon Eorzea. Hey look! Recruitment poster art! On the left, we have... Uh, I believe this is... Yeah, this is Ulda! Let's see... On Fire Reborn! And in the middle, we have Gridania with... Nafikas, Nafikas! And on the right, we have Limsus Pirates! Till Sea Swallows All! It was the year 1562, a 6th Astral Era. Seeking to combat the Imperial threat, Louis Wall founded the Circle of Knowing, an order whose objective was the preservation of Eorzea. Though as members, the Archons of Charlie and the Circle worked to unite the nations of Eorzea to common cause. The result was the formation of the Grand Companies, the three city-states, the Immortal Flames, the Order of the Twin Adder, and the Maelstrom. None of these would exist now, were it not for their efforts. And then, in the year 1572, when the situation was coming to a head, Oswald himself made the journey to Eorzea in secret and engaged with each of the nations. What took place during that time is what I seek to learn in the interview. The man we're due to meet is in contact with the Free Brigade, a unit formed of adventurers, and has apparently had Oswald's assistance for mission. The meeting place is Highbridge, to the northeast. It's more or less in time now, so let's make our way there. Sure thing! You know what, I can just delete the chat. That way I don't need to worry about covering it so much. I mainly had it open because I overclicked and missed a bit of dialogue. I'm glad that the log is there for that, if nothing else. <coughs> Interviewee should be a log at any moment now. Yep, that sure is. A member of the Flames. Oh, the ones who seek an interview? I must say, I wasn't expecting to see the champion of yours here. I'm Nananji Nananji, a writer who made the request, and Bond has kindly accompanied me for the interview. I can't thank you enough for taking that time out of your busy schedule to humor me. Come now, no need for that, thanks. Like everyone, I had Louis Wall in the highest esteem. If you wish to know about him, Ollie and Aubrey is always glad to oblige. Hi there. That's a nice Imperial, or no, not Imperial. Flame salute. Without further ado, then, let's begin. My understanding is you had dealings with Louis Wah. Could you please tell me your details? As you know, our grand companies were formed thanks to the Circle of Knowing. But it wasn't until Dalmud began turning red that Louis Wah first appeared. It began with the word of an early elders. It began with the word that an elderly Elizan man had come to Gradania and held the key to vanquishing primals. Upon learning this, I sent an adventurer with the Free Brigade to make contact with him. I later learned that the Maelstrom of the Order of the Twin Adder had done this very same. At that time, our companies weren't yet collaborating. Each one only thought to stay ahead of the others. The truth be told, at first we didn't think much of Louis Wall, or that he was a leader of the scholars who studied particular prophecies. When the adventurer reported back, our opinion of the man completely changed.
With a spellcraft, Lewis Wan opened the way into Ifrit's domain. In the hand of dauntless explorers, the Lord of Inferno was brought low. Alas, many defeats preceded that victory. It was born that countless charred corpses laid strewn in a bowl of embers. Yeah, old Aroma Born was hard. Classic Final Fantasy XIV was really hard. And if it sure was a hurdle. No, oh, the mission yet yielded a shocking revelation. Following the battle, Legatus Nail Van Darnus of the, of the Seventh Imperial Legion appeared and told the adventurers that the Hour of Reckoning was at hand. That element would soon fall and cleanse the land. That was when we realized that the Empire was behind the Red Moon Snow Abnormality. So thanks to Louis Wa, you came to be aware of the Meteor Project. Still, it doesn't seem like you had much to act upon. That's right. As you say, afterwards we scrambled to learn all that we could about the project. For a blessing, we had a cooperation with the Garland Defector, Sid Garland, who you know well. He revealed the details of the project. That utilized a transmission tower to pluck Dalamud from the heavens, and her purpose of purging us savages from the realm. Yeah. One day he'll tell me about that. Maybe. I'll continue telling you what I know, but from this point on, there's something better. There's someone better suited than I am. If you are interested, I'll be glad to introduce you to the individual. What say you? Oh, now, I'd be keen to speak with this person indeed. Very well. I'll send word to Yadda's nest. You take yourself to Apkali Falls. I'll arrange a meeting for you there. To go to such a to help us, I can't say how grateful I am. Do not mention it. As I said, I hold Louis Wan in the highest esteem. He was the one who brought our three nations together, and nothing would please me more than for him to be remembered. Well, it's past time I return to Ulda. I pray that a coming interview bears you fruit. Man, Uldans have to patrol a very big area. Thanalan seems a little bit larger than the other three nations. Utena certainly has great respect for Louis Wa. I think, sir, we have another promising interview. Come, let's head to Gridania, where the Archon had sojourned. Sure. Let's sojourn on. Like a lot of the quests for a Rumble Born, it just kind of has you travel everywhere. Now, we know about Louis Wa's end, because we dealt with the, uh, the Binding Coils of Bahamut. But it's, a key, it's good to hear recollections of people tell how he lived. Because after all, that's what the Rising is supposed to be. It's like a, it's a bit of a Memorial Day. But it's remembering how the world changed once. As opposed to remembering everybody was lost. For people living in this world, yeah, it, it absolutely is a form of Memorial Day. They're remembering the, the last era. But for our players, it's like, oh yeah, the anniversary event. It's a little bittersweet. So this is the Upcolor Falls. It's the conspicuous lack of the creature aside. It's quite a beautiful place. Now then, the person we meet should be along shortly. Is the same person, but in a different uniform? I was told that he was who wished to learn about Louis Wa. 
the one who should be that one should be a champion of yours yeah oh man I only turned sire of folk uh, order the twin adder There guy. That's a nice adder salute you got there. No, 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 at your service. You're sp thank you for sparing the time to speak with us. Ain't nothing of it. I must say, though, Lieutenant Aubrey chose the perfect spot for the subject matter. Hmm? Lewis Swan spent much time in rumination here in the days before a calamity. For Gardanians, being somewhat reserved by nature, at first the citizens kept their distance. Oh, well, the fireflies are out because it's night. But in time, people warmed to him. He patiently lent an ear to their troubles, healing hurts and offering counsel, and gradually earned their trust. To ignore the plight of those who might conceivably save us is not wisdom. It is indolence. Louis Wass spoke these words and lived up to them. He was the epitome of a Charlian sage, and I recall myself being moved. Now, shortly before we had become aware of the Meteor Project, the hamlet of Quarry Mill was attacked by a primal Garuda. Both soldiers and civilians were along the casualties. Oh right, hamlets! That sure was an event. That was where some people had to gather and craft, while people who fought defended them while they were Ah, uh, uh, that sure was a system for an MMO. I say as if I played it. No, I only read about it. It sounds awful. Yona, the Twin Adder, moved to vanquish the Primal. We are not alone. Through Louis Wah's mediations, we had the support of not only our sister grand companies, but capable adventurers the realm over besides. Using the artifact known as the Vortex Feather, the Archon opened the way for a band of adventurers to sally forth into Garuda's turbulent domain, where they felt the fearsome being. Sure, it's nice to just have a guy to make portals. Don't need a special fancy airship to do that. Upon a defeat, however, the primal dispersed Aether did not return to the land. Instead, it was absorbed into the Red Moon Dalamut. And when the Empire constructed a new base in Mordona, the Elder Seedseer saw a need for decisive action and put forth a proposal. The formal reformation of the Orzi Alliance, which had so long lain dormant. The initial response from the other nations was lukewarm at best. They felt that the burden to be born of each party was excessive, and they were loath to do odd that would place them at a disadvantage against their rivals. But the revelation that a lunar transmitter had been erected in the Imperial base prompted a change of heart. The tower controlled Dalamut's ascent. If it could be destroyed, then the meteor project would be forestalled. After having constantly been on the back foot, our nations were motivated to join hands, and it might strike a decisive blow against the enemy. Thus was the order of the Alliance reformed, and a circle of knowing had hoped. Oh yes, back when Raban had his other arm. At the same juncture, Louis Wall was asked to join the Alliance as a tactician, and in that capacity he provides sage counsel to our, house, our heads of state. So although he was the first treated with wariness, Louis Wah earned their trust through his actions and paved the way of enduring cooperation between our nations. Indeed. Were it not for him, we would all be Paris divided. We owe Louis Wah a great debt. Now then, I expect you might be interested in hearing about the operation to destroy the lunar transmitter. But for that tale, I would recommend you seek out another, a decorated soldier who actually took part in the operation. Although a hardened warrior, she is friend quite friendly, and should be glad to regale you with her experiences. Shall I send you a word on your behalf? We'd be duly grateful. Very well. You take yourselves to Maelstrom Command and Lips of Lamenta. I shall see that she knows to expect you. With that, I shall take my leave. I pray that the biography is a success. Later, guy. Everyone has been more helpful than I dared to hope. It seems Lewis Wah had quite an influence on others. Yeah. Air of you gave us some valuable insight into his character, and I'm eager to see what we learn in the next. Come, let's head to Limsa Lamenta.
Oh no, we have to go to Limsa. Okay, also it's raining. And those very, very generous people who helped me several streams ago gave me an umbrella. Let's use the umbrella. Let's put away our weapon while we have an umbrella. Isn't this nice? Yep, it sure is raining. What other poses do we have with the umbrella? Nope, that doesn't protect me at all. Either does that, really. Sort of. Rain gets on me a little bit. You know what? I protect the hair this way. This is fine. And we also have the wonderful Umbrella Dance! We can dance in the rain and kick and splash about! I'm glad that they decided that this was an essential emote for all umbrellas. I love it. And you know what I think I will set up as such? On the fashion accessories page, we can have, uh... Enable Auto Umbrella. There we go. Now anytime it's raining, my character will just pull out the umbrella. Unless I put it away, like that. Alright, let's go back to Linda Laminda. I am with the Maelstrom, technically. I practically never go here, but... That might change! Just very quickly go to the aft castle and leave the plaza behind. Just like Sokova said some time ago. Now then. And there it is, Maelstrom Command. Shall we then? I'm glad they don't make me walk over there, where there could potentially be more people and cause some lag. Sergeant McGammer, as a sight for sore eyes. Adieu must be Nananji, Rosh Hishkirikri, at your service. I understand that you wish to know about the operation to destroy the lunar transmitter. Indeed. I have a biography of an Archon Lewis Wall, you see. Which I am interviewing people who are dealing with him. I truly appreciate your time. You're very welcome. I'd be well to do, glad to welcome your assistance, even if it wasn't a request from Lieutenant Folk. I will give you my Maelstrom salute. Because I am with a Maelstrom. Now then, to continue where he left off. Or shortly after the Erosian Alliance had formed. The scouts returned to tell word of this Eventh Legion had activated a lunar transmitter in their fortress in Mordona. Now known as Castrum Sentry, the fortress was originally called Castrum Novum before the 14th Legion restored it and renamed it. It was the order to break through their defenses to destroy the transmitter that the three natures joined hands. Now we were determined to succeed. The strategy that Lewis Watt proposed was elegant in simplicity. While our main forces drew the Guardian's attention with an all-out siege, the elite band of adventurers who'd infiltrated the Castrum and make for our objective. We had entrusted the adventurers with the ridding of the primals. Now we entrusted them with the very fate of Eosir. I still remember the operation as if it was yesterday. Though we met with a fierce resistance, we fought more fiercely still. No matter the cost, we had to ensure that the adventurers had a chance to strike at the transmitter. And when the messengers arrived, bearing word that they had succeeded, ah, it makes my heart sore to recall the moment of triumph. That day we learned, by standing together, the people of Eorzea could oppose even the might of the Empire. It is no exaggeration to say that victory paved the way for Eorzea's future. Without it, it would not have been the Operation Ar it, but it would not have been an Operation Archon. Alas, it wasn't all glad tidings. 
but though we destroyed the transmitter, Nail Van Darnus appeared and claimed that he no longer needed the device to bring down Dalamut, that he himself had the power to do so. So long as Van Darnus lived, the threat of destruction remained, and so branding himself an enemy to all life on Eorzea, the nations of the Alliance undertook a desperate manhunt. At length they located the Kun Karthus and sent their greatest warriors to hunt him down. Leading that formidable band was the adventurer whom they called the Vardier Knight, and though no records remain of that fierce encounter, one thing is certain, at the battle's conclusion Nail Van Darnus was brought low. As you know, however, our woes would not end at the White Raven, for Louis Wa and his disciples determined that Alamud would continue to fall. In their last ditch effort to bid to prevent Realm's annihilation, the Circle of Knowing issued a request from the Eorzean Alliance to secure the Cardinal Flats, where the little red moon was expected to crash. It was no simple task, for the entirety of the Seventh Legion had amassed in Cardinal. What was necessary in order to perform the ritual to stop Dalimut, a ritual which invoked the powers of the Twelve. So it was that the Battle of Cartano was joined, and I dare say you know exactly how that tale continues. To everyone's shock, the Elder Prime of Wahabit emerged from Dalimut and proceeded to unleash its fury upon the realm. Aye. And though we all bore witness to Louis while initiating the ritual, none remembered what came to pass afterwards. Neither what happened to Bahamut, nor why the realm was reborn. The haze I afflicted memories of the calamity. But people remember events prior to that moment, yes? If so, do you know if anyone was near a Louis Wall during the battle? Something one who may have spoke with him. If someone was near him, I'm afraid I do not know. He was atop the rise of the ritual when I was a good distance away from the front lines. My apologies. No, no, please don't apologize. You shared a wealth of information. I couldn't ask more of you. Well, if you're satisfied, then so am I. With that, I shall return to my duties. I look forward to reading the biography when it is finished. Later, Commander. You guard that door. Oh, I have a grasp of events leading up to a calamity, and yet... Oh, forgive me. I was deep in thought. In no small part due to your help, I've managed to learn a great deal. But there's still more that I wish to know. Might I trouble you to accompany me a little longer? If you're willing, please let me know. Sure. If we complete this, we'll get... The End of an Era Framers Kit! Nanaji desires more information for Lewis Wall's biography. She has lures. Yes, pretty much. You continue to accompany me then? Wonderful. Come, let us head to the Drowning Wench to discuss our next move. And I don't have to move there, it just moves me. Our research proceeds apace so far. We've even learned things not found in literature. But tell me. Based on what you've heard from our interviews, v interviewees, what's your opinion of Louis Wah? Well, he's an exceptional leader, he had a difficult task, or others deserve more credit? Uh... <laughs> others deserve more credit. You should write about the warrior of light. No, that's, that's just preening. He had a difficult task. Indeed. From an Imperial invasion to rampaging primals to Nail Van Darnus' scheme, if had he, uh, he had to contend with the toughest of problems. What struck me was how grateful the interviewees were to Louis Waugh for bringing their nations together in cooperation. It was nothing short of necessary for our survival. Yeah, knowing this, I can't help but wonder. What his capacity as a tactician? It seems they had done more than enough in devising a plan of facilitating his execution. He went far beyond that, risking life and limb on the front lines to lend not a, a, to a land not his own. Perhaps he needed to be there for the ritual. Perhaps he felt a sense of duty. 
Even so, as noble as his desire it is to help others, what good is if you end up sacrificing yourself? What was it that compelled Louis Fois to go to Cartonneau? And what went through his mind as the battle unfolded? In order to do his biography justice, I feel I need to know these things. Alright, sure. If Louis Fois had people near him at the time, perhaps he shared words with them in those final moments. Words that could prove some insight. Where to begin searching for such individuals, assuming they exist? Uh, that's a great question. Oh, hi, Batteron. Sorry, friends, but I couldn't help but overhear your conversation. Just so happened that I know a bloke would serve to long Louis Wall's guard at the Cartano. Well? Truly? You know someone who was with him? Aye. As far as I'm aware, you was keeping the fact secret. Just for good measure, though. Why don't you go speak with him? Those was biography, eh? In that case, I reckon the bloke would be willing to cooperate. Orn Goldcomb's his name. He was a lieutenant of Maelstrom. I took Lamity turned to adventure and so as to be of greater help to the common book. A Maelstrom officer turned adventure. He was most keen to speak with him. Where might he be found? When Orn dropped off the other day, he said he had business with more be dry ducks. If you're lucky, he might be still to be there. Understood. Where are you at? We can't let this chance pass us by, Bond. Let's take ourselves to the dry docks at once. Thanks, Batteron. I'll be sure to buy a drink eventually. Now, where are you dropping me off? Okay, so teleport to me over to Batteron. That's something. Anyway, let's teleport over to Moravi. If only there was someone who knew. Hey, maybe I know somebody who does. Wow, how convenient! That the person should be hearing us just outside our... our... Ah. Sometimes it's a little bit too convenient. Most more keepers would have to sell that information. Right, we're gonna do Orn B. In hindsight, we should have asked what he looks like. His name would suggest he's a Midlander, but... Hmm. Oh, nothing to worry about to make inquiries. Let's wait up and let's ask my meet again here. So immediately, I'm going to go and see what that guy's up to. He found himself a tall, rogueted woman. I thought I'd gotten better at making inquiries, but it's not so easy if they aren't already inclined to speak. How do you do it day in and out? Uh, I have a magic map. On, as it happens, I spoke with him just earlier. He said that he wanted to buy flowers, so I directed him to a vendor. Not sure what he is now, though. Ever since Glavity, Owen's been helping people across the realm rebuild. It's a fine thing and all, but with his skills, I reckon he could do far better than menial labor. Probably. But he's doing what he wants to do, and that's good for him. Looking for Orn Goldcorn, you see? I don't know anyone by that name, I'm afraid. I did walk by an unfamiliar character just now, though, by a mark of a spitter. He had a flower in his head, so he caught my eye. Well, I don't know an Orn Goldcorn. I did see an unfamiliar flower just now, over by a mark of a spitter. He had a flower in his head, so he caught my eye. So we gotta see the flower merchant. Because both of them direct us to a flower merchant. I'm sorry, but you only just started helping out here. I'm still learning our customers' names. I couldn't say the person you're after, but a man did come by earlier who appeared to be an adventurer. He bought a male lily that we're currently trailing. You have an inkling as to where Orn might be. Time to rejoin the Nunji. Wait, can I buy something at you? I couldn't say if this is the person you're after, but a man did come by earlier who appeared to be an adventurer. He brought in a male lily that we're currently trailing.
Odd turn of phrase, trailing. Wouldn't that be just selling? Bending? Peddling? Maybe trailing is a better word for it. Hey, you are about. Were you able to learn anything? Yep. Guy, bought a flower, going to the spinner's mark. So a man who be Owen bought an email early and went to the mark of the spinner. If we hurry there, we might be able to find him. Let's go. Thank you, Rogan and Lady. Goodbye, unnamed Rogan and Lady. It was only just been seen. It should still be nearby. People with some cats here. Good for them. A coral kitten, which is available for almost everybody, and a fat cat. I never did go do this quest to get those minions, did I? They're still there. Wow, it's anchored with mutton chops. Beg your pardon, sir, but are you Lieutenant Orton Gilcom? I haven't been Lieutenant for years, but I, that's me. What can I do for you? I realize this is sudden, but... Explains, explains, explains. Sure, I'm glad I don't have to read all that for the fifth time. So you're wondering about Lewis Watt's biography? You're writing it, rather. You want to hear my account of someone who's on near on hand at Cardino. Do you know me? Do I know you? There must be a reason that you're here, too. The warrior I like who lasts the victory in Operation Archon. Very well. I'll tell you my tale. Wait, I was there? Now then, where to begin? I should know the battle was fought over the land where Dalamud was expected to fall. In the beginning, neither side was able to gain the upper hand. When the Imperials deployed their magitech armor, our ranks were thrown into disarray. Those charts of protecting Louis Swa, like me, could only watch as the carnage from afar. And though our forces managed to hold out thanks to the adventuring contingent, we sustained grievous casualties. But the real tragedy was what followed. As Dalam had hurtled towards us, we began shredding fragments of itself before finally bursting open to unleash the primal Bahamut. It all below, all as all below looked on in shock, the battle completely forgotten. Bahama took wing and spewed fire all over the land. Men in measure took armor alike were set ablaze and sat flying like so many insects. I only realized that he stopped breathing when a commanding voice broke with France. You've done enough, Lewis Watt told us. Now fly! Fly and save yourselves! Fly, you fools! But like my fellow guards, I wanted to remain. I couldn't charge into battle beside my comrades. At the very least, I might do my duty here to protect Lewis Watts to the last. But upon seeing us standing there, not making a move, Lewis Watts smiled and spoke thus. If you would give your lives to protect something, then protect my hopes. Every soul who lives to determine their own fate is a source of hope, bright and brilliant. So live. I bid you. It be among those who bear the light for others to follow. Those words awakened us to a greater purpose. If there was hope in the living, I would do live as Louis Watt bid. No matter where I would, I would survive. And so together, with my fellows, I began making my retreat. Alas, we hadn't gotten far when the explosion erupted and set us sprawling. I struggled to my feet just in time to see the enormous, menacing silhouette of Bahamut looming over Louis Wah. 
Very next instant, he was involved in light. And that was the last I remember of him. This was final moment. Amidst the light, he looked to be smiling. What he was thinking about when, that moment, I couldn't say, but one thing's for certain. We all of us are alive thanks to him. Oh. Following the calamity, I was reported that Louis Wai defeated Muhammad and said about the land's miraculous regeneration. Do you believe this to be the truth? Aye. Every soul who lives to determine their own fate is a source of hope. What I've learned is reaffirmed my belief, but I believe that Louis Wall was not an all-powerful savior one reads about in their tales, but merely an ordinary man. But that man never forsook his yet. No, he stood for his realm to be a l to the last. To the countless other brave souls, and saved it from becoming a scorched waste. Against unimaginable adversity he fought, and at the cost of his life, paved the way for a brighter future for us all. At least I could do is return to tell a story. Spread the message that where there is life, there is hope. Yeah, that's a good message. As to your account, I believe I've found an angle for the biography. I'm truly grateful. This isn't his grave, but I can work as one because he doesn't have one. Would you care to offer a prayer as well? The prayer that the light of hope which Lewis Wall preserved shall ever burn bright. Yeah, why not? A little prayer shouldn't hurt. Although I specifically remember he told us not to. I can't let them know that. The Calamity left deep scars across the realm. There's no place that did not want for help to rebuild. After being saved by our twin other allies, I decided to become an adventurer, prepared to honor Louis Swan's legacy and lend aid to those in need. During my travels, I often hear of your tales. I'm glad I could share my own with you. Allow me to thank you again for recounting your experience to us. Hey, it is I owe you thanks for giving me a chance to share Louis Swan's words. All these years, I have avoided speaking of the moment of the passing of our res outer respect. Will it not do for that tale to take my tale to the grave? Her biography is our hope that his spirit will live on in all of us. Now then, if you'll excuse me, I shall resume my pilgrimage to the marks. Wherever your travels take you, I shall be praying for your safety. Oh, you're going to all of them. You know, that's a good way to do it. The Mary Lilies, the symbol of safe passage. If Lewis all stood there in Cardinal, I wonder if he likewise prayed for someone's safety. At any rate, these interviews have yielded today everything I hope for and more. God, let's return to Ulda. I have your reward for going Ulda at the Hall of Flames. And since I'm out and about in the world, I'm still going to be using Midgard Stormer as my mount. Let's use the mount. Rising Phoenix. Created as a token of gratitude for the Warrior of Light, this majestic familiar assumes the likeness of the Phoenix, the immortal bird of legend. Upon death, the creature is said to rise again from his own ashes, on account of which it is revered as a symbol of rebirth. The fires of Ifrit, nay, the Phoenix, have taken all residents in my heart, where they will continue to burn forevermore. Jude. And you also get the action, a flame reborn, summon celebratory flames in honor of the realm that rose from the ashes. So, unlike most mounts, unlike most mounts, uh, let me put this on my bar. And unlock it. Summon forth your rising phoenix, a symbol of rebirth and gratitude both. 
Unlike most mounts, for the Rising Phoenix, you're not mounted. You transform into this thing. You are the Phoenix. Which does not mean that it has a passenger seat. It is not a two-person mount. It doesn't say that it is, and it therefore it doesn't. And this is my first mount on this account that has an action. So it replaces your bar with a thing that does a nice little boosh of flames. It's good. You can do it as often as you want with a very, very small cooldown. It's real good. Yes, we are the primal now. Now we are like Yasail. <coughs> a little bit. But we can control that well, we could just choose not to fight as this. And that's fine. That's fine. I'm still gonna use Midgard Sorver because I'm a Dragoon. But it's a neat mount, and I'm glad I got it. Anyway, let's go back to Uldah. Let's pick up that reward. A bit of a coughing fit there, sorry. Wait for our quest giver to load. Old Oz is a bit popular right now. Right, right, yes, thank you. <sighs> Voltage looked into the oven. It's chicken seasoned with salt and pepper. Ah, Sometimes chicken. the simple things are enough, yes? You know what, that... I feel like I do want chicken tonight. I'm probably not gonna get some simple chicken. I'm probably gonna get something like stick. fried and quick. Oh, stick! Yeah! That was, a, that was Beanie saying stick. It's a good stick. There are no sticks on screen, but I could probably find one if I look hard enough. Wait. You're right! My stick! There we go. Thank you for reminding me about the stick. Another hydrate, sure, why not? <sighs> Again, the reason I don't have a cooldown on that currently is because, um... It breaks and always goes out of stock for people, and then they can only redeem it once per stream. Which is weird. I wish I knew how to fix that. Posture and stretch. Yes, I did change this posture check. People said I should probably have... <sighs> people said I should probably have a different redeem for posture and stretch. But I usually stretch when people tell me to do a posture check, but that wasn't really clear, so I decided to just change the redeem. <sighs> okay. And with that, I should not be a statue, and I should now be sitting up straight. Thank you for that brief little pause of gameplay. There you are. I ended up troubling us longer than I had intended, but it was truly really a fruitful series of interviews. How fortunate that we could hear from those who lived this fateful time. While still many questions, the biography is beginning to shape shape in my mind. I also feel as though I've attained a measure of closure. Louis Wall fought simply as one of us, and he made the ultimate sacrifice that hope that might endure. Thus I've come to realize the appreciation and thanks everyone heartfelt testimonies. Now then, last but not least, I'd like to ask you for your thoughts on something. According to Orn, Louis Wass smiled at his final moments. It was involved in light. What do you imagine he held in his mind? Let's see, I could be cold and logical and say it's pointless to speculate on such things, or I could have hope and say the image of mankind thriving in the future. I'm thinking of his grandchildren? Yeah, let's go with the first. I see, I see. I appreciate your thoughts. As I pen the diography, I'll be certain to remember your words. Well, sad though it is, it's time for us to part ways. I'll set our work to a draft, and I won't rest until the biography goes to print. Thank you for all your help, my friend. I couldn't have come this far without you. And we get the end of an era framers kit. Tools for enhancing a portrait, used to unlock embellishments, fit for an inheritor of Louis Wall's legacy. Includes the portrait elements, background and frame, and the plate elements, base plate, Backing, portrait frame, plate frame, and accent. The man, the myth, the leg. I mean, the legend. 
Oh, right. I have to actually, like, eat the item before I'm allowed to use it. There's that. Okay. Now, uh, I can edit my portrait, which I've not edited in a hot minute. We can look at some of these options. Hold on. I like Starry Sky, but we also now have the end of an era. So if you want that, like, special background stuff that Lewis Paul had, like an explosion, that's kind of neat. I could have that if I really wanted to. Uh, let's see, for the frame, we could have the end of an era, which is more light fading stuff. So you can look like <laughs> you can look like a primal flare is about to go off slightly to the right of you. And do we get an end of an era accent? I believe it said it had one. Uh, no, it does not appear that there is one. I will not be changing this. But how about the adventure plate? I don't think I've ever touched this thing. I touched the portrait because that shows up. Oh, yeah, that's ugly. All right, let's add this plate. Uh, let's not use a preset. Okay, so it said that we unlocked an accent. We got the... Oh, we have a bunch of wind-ups I have available here. That's neat. You can show up your favorite minion that you have inside that. That's good. Uh, but no, we're here to see the... We're here to see the... What did I just get? I don't see it here. I don't see it here. That's unusual. I could have swore that there was, um... Oh, well, I'll just put, uh, I'll put some gill on there. Plate frame. Do I have... End of an era. There we go. Let's just use end of an era everything, because it's new. Phoenix feathers. Yeah! Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, bottom border. Yeah, we don't. We don't really need that. A scroll. Uh, honestly, it just feels like this is this is just clutter. Yeah, I, I don't feel like I need a bottom border that goes over the Phoenix minions. We don't need that. Uh, top border. I feel like that would be the same. Far Eastern. Eh. Eh. No, let's get rid of that. That'd probably look better if I had other things on it. Uh, backing. Do we have End of an Era? Oh, that's just nice. You know what? Let's just use End of an Era whenever possible. Uh, Kingdom check. Eh. Vellum? I don't think there's an End of an Era option. Yeah, let's just go with the Vellum. Why not? And there's the End of an Era. There we go. That just looks nice. Looks like I'm throwing money off of my plate. Oh. And we could just have it be over there. Sure, why not? Let's have it on the right. Yeah. And now when other people inspect me, they're able to see this as uh, my adventure plate. It doesn't say my hours, but that's fine. That's fine. I don't need to have my hours there. I could put a stupid joke in there. You know, I'm going to put a stupid joke in there. Uh, let's see. Edit profile. My play hours are going to be... A bad joke. Hold on, that's not right. I did the joke wrong. There we go. Now the joke is correct. Yeah! Bad joke. Anyway. <laughs> I'm glad that we're all in this together. The last thing that I will do for the Rising Eyes will instead direct my attention to the Moogle Tombstone Vendor. This season, you can get the Special Framers Kit for only 10. For 100, you can get a unique Fat Cat Parasol. These items are not often put onto the Mog Station. These are special cosmetic items for people who are playing specifically during the downtime and the, 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 like, dusk of a patch. Like, they're taking a while to get the new patch up, so they're giving you this, you this stuff to be able to give you something to do and look forward to. Some cards. I could get 
a nice hairstyle for 100. The Warrior Light card is also 100. So a Samurai Barding. This is an item that usually only drops in Eureka, which is somewhat difficult to contact. This item sells on the market board for like a million gil currently. It might go down because people might be farming to him specifically to sell it. Lots of good ballroom etiquette for good emotes. They cost uh, like 80 and 50 tomes each. Good emotes there. The Fag Weaver from doing a later trial. Lots of the Big Show, which comes from the Firmament, which is something that we should be doing soon. The Tyrannosaurus thing, this comes from Eureka, and this is not sellable on the market board. So this is a good way to get this without RNG for people who have been trying to get this thing for years and still haven't seen a Tyrannosaurus mount. Disembodied head resonator? Oh, right, this is from uh, Palace of the Dead. So if people never do Palace of the Dead but want that mount, there we go. We, there's another way to get it. For a limited time only. Some orchestra now rolls, which are pretty nice. More hair. We could get a shoe build minion. A block. Uh, whatever, I'm not going to worry about that. All the Kamuis, which are all the Stormblood mounts are available on the Merchant now, so you can get all of them if you ever missed one and don't feel like doing an old extreme. All the dance... Like, half of the Dancing Mad movements. I think there's six movements in Dancing Mad in this game, but you can get the first three here now. A special Terrasol. The Toad set! You know what? I can wear this as a Viera. This sure is an outfit that you're able to get in-game. We might have seen a couple of people like this. You can even use the visor to open and close his mouth. It's a fun little mascot outfit. Little costume thing. <laughs> uh, this is available from a super boss fate that's in uh, Shadowbringers. Not a lot of people do that anymore, so a lot of people can't seem to get this outfit. But now you can get it on this vendor. If you feel like doing some content and grinding a little bit. And there's also all sorts of community-made furniture and stuff like that. But there's also, of course, the Fat Cat Minion. Normally only available through Retainer Ventures. Now available for only seven funny tombstones. But here's the thing about the funny tombstones. They're only available from certain duties right now. And the duties change, like, every time that the event comes up. But there is one staple that's always on the duty. Hold on. There's one staple. And that staple is doing... The main scenario roulette. You'll, you see that duties have the special funny symbol right next to it right now. I'll get eight funny symbols if I do cast them. I'll get 14 funny symbols if I do Praetorium. You know, the one with lots of unskippable cutscenes. And if on trial I get the Porta Documenta, do, uh, the Ultima weapon, I get six. <coughs> All these duties take a fair amount of time. You can get a random one of these duties by doing the roulette, the main scenario roulette. So in addition to getting all these other rewards, you will also be getting those special funny tombstones. Normally, the Arm Veil is also available on that, but that is not so this time because they've had enough of Blue Mage shenanigans. <sighs> I do not think Bont will be doing enough of these duties to be able to get any of those rewards. This event will be going on for a while, but I do not think that Bont will be able to do them. Most of, their, most of the duties that have these are raids. And I don't have any luck. That said, I could unlock them this week. I think I'm going to do Hildebrand this week, though. I'll save the raids for next week. I think Moogle Tombstone... I think Mo nah, Moogle Tombstone events are fine. I think that they are fine. It gives an alternative way to get somewhat hard-to-get content for people who don't want to do the somewhat hard-to-get content or who are very unlucky. If you don't care about doing this and you still want to do it the hard way, that's fine. Just don't do the event. Just throw away your funky tombstones if you want. You don't have to get it this way. Now then, let's head over to Jewel Curse here. I 
And let's see if we can find that quest that we've moused over so many times. Now, I'm going to put the stick away. I'm going to put the stick away briefly. I feel the like cutscenes look a little bit better when I don't have the spear on my back. She looks a little bit out of place. A gentleman falls rather than flies. As you catch Sayanashu, you cannot help but wonder if you're about to have a bad time. Oh, well, I'll be, well, I'll be Bond Megama, in the flesh. A pleasure to see you again. Wait, is this what they call serendipity? It is, isn't it? That settles it. You've got to help me find the inspector. Cool. I was hoping you to uh, silently agree. So I've been trying to calculate the trajectory the inspector took while he was catapulted into the sky again. I triple checked my figures, and I've concluded that he must have landed somewhere here in Ishgard. Unfortunately, the investigation hasn't been proceeding as smoothly as I had hoped. But now that you're here, we'll surely make some progress. Come, let's speak to the merchants and see if anyone hasn't had any dealings with the gentleman they hailed a Highlander. <laughs> Uh, that is a pretty good wink. That is a pretty good wink emote. I am going to change the stream title one second. Uh, let's see. Let's just change it from Rising and then Hildebrand to... How about just Hildebrand? Done? Done. Okay, stream title should be upgraded. Updated. Upgraded. Whatever. Same thing. Sir? I say, I say, sir? Ah, oh, you must be checking your ledgers to see if he was a customer. That's very kind of you, sir. I don't even think he's paying attention to you, Nashu. I've sold my fair share of goods to Highlander Adventures, I. Why well, not describe such clients as particularly gentlemanly, I'm afraid. Uh, how about you, then? Oh dear, dear sir, I... Oh, you're looking for someone? A gentleman in Highlander? Oh. I know not this man of whom you speak, but mayhap Mr. Silice does. She is well acquainted with a rather a lot of merchants and noblemen. Alice? No, Elise. I see. A gentleman in Highlander, you say? My apologies, but I cannot say that I have had dealings with the man as you describe. Uh, let's see, that should be the master of the markets, right? Yeah. Mother asked us to fetch mutton and popotos. Right, she did say we, could, we couldn't buy anything. I'll take two servers of everything in Golden Sheen. Ah, sir, a warm's, a warm's, a warm welcome to you, sir. How may I be of service? Uh, I'm looking for a gentleman. Oh, a gentleman the Highlander, you say? No, that I think on it I have heard tell of a foreigner who may have the man you speak. Oh, oh, begging, begging your pardon, miss. But you said you don't know of Inspector Hildebrand. An acquaintance of yours, I presume. I do not know his name, only that he is here by invitation of Lord Edmund, or so it is rumored. Surely as a ward of household terms, it would be trifling matter to go and ask after him in the manor? Yeah, no problem. Cool! I knew it was serendipity! The full temps manor! Okay. I'm glad that she always has tea ready. I must say, since throwing away the gates of judgment, we have had no shortage of interesting visitors. Yeah, that's that's one way of putting Nashu. Go see Harsh Front's dad. In we go.
Uh, is Nashu here? Uh... No. I'm reading the quest text wrong. I could have swore he was inside. Speak with a knight. That's a Durandar knight. Oh, uh, here we go. Four times knight. Oh, my best of my about. You have call assistance? Uh, I'm looking for a guy dressed fancily. Aye, right, as you say. And this time, Lord Edmund is entertaining a foreign guest. Huzzah! We found the inspector! Oh, that was fast. If I am not mistaken, the meeting should be ending shortly. If you'd like, you may retire to the gazebo as I wait for our guest to depart. A gazebo? Are those dangerous? Then again, you seem to be his responsible sort, not like the little wild gazebo run amok. Very well, we humbly accept your offer. Uh, what? And if it wakes up, I'll have you there to protect me. Uh, sure. Sure. It's it's a sodden gazebo. Yeah. It's it's a gazebo, all right. With what powerful magics did they tame this dread fiend? I'm... I'm not sure what you mean, Nashu. I feel like there's a translation error joke in there somewhere. I'm glad she's able to fall asleep so soundly and quickly. That's okay, you can rest. Guess evil. Yeah, probably. That must be Inspector Hildebrand! I cannot well imagine how arduous your journey must have been. Truth be told, I've found a brisk course of air to be rather invigorating. It stimulates the body and mind both. A welcome benefit that one must discuss with matters of commerce. I dare say we would not have accomplished so much otherwise. Now you are, Inspector. I've been looking all over for you. I say, who do you see before me? Not one, but two of my beloved son's faithful companions. Lord Garbert? But, but I thought... Uh, we're looking for your son. He's supposed to have fallen here. Really? It is God. That's the first I heard of it. Ah! Uh, a photo of loss, Hertig! What? I thought I thought we were done with this. That's you! A hulking brute with a bad gleam in his eye. You bravely hear as he has played for all to see. Surrender yourself to the Inquisition at once. I beg your pardon? This man is an old on merchant. He had the behest of Grouse four times. Such baseless accusations will not be tolerated. Oh, a guest in House Wilhelms! Then, they couldn't possibly! There were those two wars that uh, were acquitted of all charges of a trial combat, and he demands the right to, that I would personally have to. Oh dear. Oh, oh, oh dear. Punt this man! <laughs> a thousand apologies, good sir. I spoke our turn. I'm Seer, and as you may have guessed, I'm an Inquisitor who has been charged with investigating reports of a rather suspicious, possibly heretical individual. Oh-ho! A heretical, do you say? One bears a passing resemblance to me. I, a man rather muscular, wearing dark garments and acquainting himself in a somewhat gentlemanly fashion, as some might say. This heretic sounds like a spinning image of Inspector Hildebrand. Could he be a fan? Say again? You're acquainted with such a man? Uh, yeah. It, it, it's a long story. I see. I bet you were looking for his Lord Garbett's son. Hmm. It would seem that our investigations may be connected. So I put you in a proposal. The first report of the sighting of the heretic I am tracking came from Falcon's nest. 
Now we should journey here together. It is, after all, possible that we are seeking a self-same individual. So, and if he is innocent, it would be the best that you were presented when I apprehended him. We might resolve this matter without incident. I say we go with him, Bond. This looks to be our best lead yet. Sure thing. Well, I shall accompany you at all. It has been far too long since I laid eyes on my beloved son. Oh, if there is a chance that we might be reunited, I should be glad to seize it. That is settled. We shall leave for the Falcon's Dust at once. Aye! Adventure! Good seeing you again, Edmund. Uh, none of them remain here. Oh, that was a person with a fat cat parasol! From the event. Uh, let's see. Yep, that's normal dialogue. He's back to sp uh, talking normally. Let's teleport on over. Audio might get a little bit crunchy for a second. I just got rid of some messages on Discord. I should probably just close Discord while I'm streaming. Uh, let's see. Where am I going? Said to be here, yeah? Oh, there. Hey, Redwild. Massive Gamma, are these your traveling companions? Uh, kind of. We're looking for a gentleman. Mysterious muscular vagabond. Ah, yes. The patrol side him lurking near the dust vigil. Thinking he might be a lost traveler, they called out to him. Or rather, their approach he fled. Quite frankly, I'm surprised you bothered to come all this way. That's why I barely wanted to mention in my report. Aha! An unmistakable scent of heresy. What? Ah, terribly sorry. Old habit I picked up from my mentor. I know, I know. I'm not risking judgment as before. Still, much as I hope you find missing inspector, I must confess some small desire that we instead under the lingering pockets of heresy. Of late, there have been virtually no confirmed instances of heretical misdeeds. It's gotten so bad that some are speculating our funding may be reduced, or worse, the Inquisition's operations might come under review. That's why, Alone as my witness, I will find and bring a heretic to justice, and prove that our order still has value in these uncertain times. Uh, you don't say. Yes, yes. I understand your reasons. Whether or not this vagabond was a heretic remains to be seen. Still, if you're set on your course, you might do well to begin your search near a dust vigil. An excellent suggestion! Sir Redwald, should we succeed our endeavor, rest assured that you shall be the first to uh, see Sir Aaron the glory. Uh -huh. The hunt continues. Onward to the dust vigil. I am told that the region is especially cold, so I'll forget to dress appropriately for the weather. I'm gonna have to change Seer's voice. I might have to do something a little bit softer. Because that voice is very, very close to my Hildebrand voice. And I wasn't thinking when I first initially assigned that to him. So I'm probably going to have to change it up. Let's see, how far do we have to go? All the way over there. Oh, Phoenix is flying too. Good for them. This would be a good time for me to go into my settings and try and fix up my camera. Uh, is there... Would it, be system, would it be character settings or? It would probably be character settings, yeah. I want to make it so that the camera does not go forward when I am moving. Uh, 
I'll get to 30 FPS, that's fine. That sounds... Would it be a graphics thing? Would it be other? Nope, okay, don't know where it is. There they all are. <sighs> I trust you are managing. Good. It would be well to shame if I had to turn back now. <laughs> Look, it's frozen. Wait, does that mean that the fish are frozen too? Uh, probably. This line is a beauty all of its own, don't you think? A pity my dear wife isn't here to enjoy it. Well, he's wearing even less now. Gee, where you take me? It's freezing. This is, nah, this is a waste of time. No living thing can survive in this godforsaken wasteland. Uh, guy, it, you're, it's fine. Over there, look! Something's coming to the vigil. Inspector! Inspector, is that you? Well, those are some fancy shoes. Oh, it's one of them! As I live and breathe, all the places to be reunited with Master Zombie Brand's compatriots. How far are you all on this fine evening? Hawk! A heretic raised from the dead by brothers and holy magics! Ha ha ha! It's not a heretic, it's one of the gentle dead men! And what brings you so far from Old Harkot, sir? Well, as you know, ours is a rather lonely existence. We heard rumors of an abandoned fortress held by zombies. We're delighted. Our show is under service emissary and set out immediately. Alas, it seems my efforts were for naught. Uh, what do you mean? We're looking for Hildy. Have you seen him? Ah, truly. Every last one dead. As I say, irrevocably dead. Ah. Uh, it was necessary. And so be it. Still, after coming all this way, it's more than a little disappointing, you understand. Oh right, I did wipe out the dust vigil and all of its zombie inhabitants. That's right. Then, my calculations are wrong. The inspector didn't land in Quartus. Oh. No, no, do not for it so. As our well order seek, then you are in luck. As the founder of the gentle dead men, our fates and our aether are inextricably entwined. In fact, I can feel it calling to me now. Truly, good sir. You can guide us to Inspector Hildebrand. As surely as my rotting nose can lead me to fresh brains. Follow me, my friends. Sure is handy having a zombie ally. You holding up there? One must remain vigilant for heresy when it manifests in myriad ways. It is a vile and sinister sickness which would easily be burned out ere the infection takes hold. Surely zombification would qualify, yes? Guy? We're losing them. Confound it! They've left us behind! Ah. <sighs> Rightfully so, honestly. Buddy, what you need is, like, a different line of work. Times are changing. Don't call it a comeback. Sears' look of utter confusion is one you know all too well. Why do they think they are commandeering this investigation and employing a zombie and a bloodhound? Epic as belief. I must regain control of the situation. With me, Bont! Uh, no, well, I'll be with the others. If you catch up, then so be it. Like, I've known these people for at least one expansion. I just met you, guy. You're the type of Ish guardian that's uh, actively been putting down everything I've been trying to do that's good.
it's with the frozen waste. Nearby that familiar homestead. Oh, Godbird's not wearing any less yet. Shippery basking in a magnificent scenery fills me with inspiration. Inspector! Inspector! Sickness is want to fester and spread, yes? It's surely safe to consort with this man. Hold a moment, my friends. I must needs concentrate. Master Zombrand is indeed nearby. There's also something else. May have a powerful magic confounding my senses. I can guide you no further. Must needs split up and search the area. Now see here. These wastes are infested with wild beasts. Who would have us split up? Bard can handle himself true. You clearly no reason to fear death. Well, Mistress Nashu. Ah, oh, I'll take your meaning. My good zombie. Bard, praise you to the lady's protection. In quits of this year, would you care to take the lead? Come on, you two. The inspector's out there somewhere. Well, let's go looking. All the way to the east. I could gather up the last little bits of discovery experience by going around the top end of the map. I doubt I'll be over here again. You can head to the Sea of Clouds by flying over this little, um... Wall? They have a frozen little battleship inside the water. Discovered a couple locations there. There sure is a house over here. Is it used for anything, I wonder? Maybe some side quests I never did. Oh! What is this? A pair of familiar lakes surrounded by some yetis! Ah, those sculpted legs, clad in gentlemanly trousers. I know them. And we all know them. Look, Bond. It's got to be the inspector. Yeah, I, I just went over and took a look. They're harmless enough. And he's surrounded by giant fluffy man-shaped gazebos. That's not what they're called. Hey, my lady, there are no mere gazebos. Not their regal bearing. They are gentlemen gazebos. There are some yet fastidious foes that would surely fear the rotting limbs from rotting limb. Tear me, rather. Only Bond can save Master Zomberbrand now. Alright. I'll go fight these gentlemen gazebos. I'm pretty sure that's not what they're called. I beg of you, my friend. You must save Master Zomber Brand before it's too late. Ah, I see it now. They're rather more dignified and gentlemanly than your average gazebo. I... They're not. Are they? Are they? Gentleman Yeti. Okay, they're... Alright, I... Wow. I could click on the legs. It wants me to, but I want to get the word dialogue. Huzzah! My heart sir, stirred with new life to see you charged into battle for the sake of our beloved overlord. Cool! You should have gave them gazebos what for? <laughs> now let's look at the legs. The men, the myth, the leg. This looks like he's frozen stiff. He's become a statue, even. Inspector! Inspector! Can you hear me? We've been looking all over for you. Oh, but this just won't do. We gotta get you out of there before you catch cold. He's probably... I... 
Those sure are noises you two are making. Oh, oh, up and Adam, everyone is waiting for you. Guys, one turn of events, they're just tired. Uh, forgive me if I pull any harder, my arms are like to tear. Oh, there you are. We heard shouting. Have you perchance found something? Fury, you take me. Is that a, my heretic? Confound it. I wanted him alive. Inspector Hildebrand is certainly not a heretic. And he's probably not dead either. He's just hes just hibernating. Like last time. Hildy was ever a late riser. Fear not. My wife and I had a ways of waking him. We all move away. Seer, you probably should go away too. Oh no, he's now he's completely nude. Except for the small clothes. Hildebrand, Mildred, Gardebrand, Mildred, Rise and Instant! Oh, he's out of the ground. But I fear what comes next. Yeah, he knows what's coming. He knows what's coming. Oh, Bill, you got your wish. The man got punted. Like Jade said. But first, the guy goes heavensward. And then he's back into the ground. We all love them, Spoop. And now he's even deeper on the ground. Ah. Was the Mandeville Meteor Strike or the Mandeville Meteor Drive? Ah. Perhaps Julian was right. Trying to name everything only leads to needless confusion. One more time, then. How'd you go? What? He's got a friend! A very familiar looking friend. Splendid suplexed, little godbet. Where, where am I? The snowy wasteland of Corthus? And who are these people I've seen before me? Ah, but of course! Worlds would venture into inhospitable climes and wake me from my slumber sweet, but my beloved fans! Why do I feel as though I stepped into a portal into an alternative reality? I'm bound by the laws of logic. You don't know the half of it, guy. What's that, a mammoth? Where did it come from? Oh, that? When my father drove me into the earth, I found it buried beneath the snow. A little lolophone girl! How adorable! Not you, please! Note the firm, muscular legs, not unlike my own. Tis clearly a lolophone boy! Now that you mention it, I suppose his features are rather masculine. You two cannot possibly be serious. I am very sore of seriousness, good sir, especially in matters of deduction. This is undoubtedly a young boy who, much like myself, fell into a deep slumber upon being buried beneath the snow. Now then, let us gently wake him and ascertain his identity. What? No! Gently! Godbert! Yeah, I ought to do it. What? What is this place? Who? Who am I? Why 
Wow. Hildebrand loves him. All that from inspecting some legs. It's not an all creation that cannot be repaired with a little tender love and care. Us as Amber run is alive and full of beans. It's a miracle. Surely there is a perfectly logical explanation for all this. I remember. Remember. Nothing. Inspector Hildebrand's back, and he's brought a friend! Son! <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. You're not wrong, Jade. It would seem that after Father's ungent ungentle ministration served to restore the young boy to life, they also robbed him of his memory! How did I get here? Who am I? Why can I not remember? Do not worry, young man. Everything will be alright. Take it from me. I have lost my memory more times than I can even remember. And, and can you help me to remember? Welcome to me now, for I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, do hereby swear to solve the mystery that an amnesiac humbly holy. Wonderful! Wonderful! I get started on a batch of Nashu's delights! Ah, uh, effective as your explosions were in the past, I suspect that young Gigi lacks the hearty constitution required to survive such an approach. Gigi? Is that my name? When you woke, you were muttering, Gigi Gigi Gigi! I suspect that phrase may hold some significance to you, so until such time as we learn your real name, I say why not adopt it as a playful moniker? But, but that's just the sound all mammoths make. Huh. When all of the, what kind of imbecile deals with the names of mammoth and Gigi anyway? Gigi, I like this name. Thank you, kind sir. How will this new name help me to remember who I am? Patience, Gigi. This is the only beginning. Next, we will return to the city and see if we cannot find any who know you who you are. Come along! Now that I know our overlord is safe and sound, I too must take a leave of you and return to my brothers. I dare say rigor mortis will set in if I remain here any longer. Bound for Sunderland, allow me to accompany you. Julia will give me no end of trouble if I keep her waiting much longer. Though perhaps she will forgive me once I tell her of Hilda's return. Later, you two. This is a rather lot to digest. Though you have the look of one accustomed to such happenings. In any case, regardless of Mistress Nashu's uh, protestations, the inspector will not be granted access to the capital until we can confirm that he is not a heretic. You have my word that you will be treated fairly. Alright, if you say so. Now who is this? Mysterious, darkened individual. Who is actually not there. Just double checking. Nope, no one here. No one at all. Well, that concludes that patch. Aren't you glad we're with the man again? The man, the lady, the boy, and the other one. Last expansion, we had a reporter who turned out to be a villain. This expansion, we have... An Inquisitor. Will he also turn out to be the villain? Let's find out together. As Jay does right now. Boy. Fury, <sighs> take me. That man. Ah, Bont. 
I suppose you have heard the news then. Inspector Hildebrand was cleared of all auspicious suspicion, and judged by no more than an eccentric curiosity. If you're looking for him, good luck. I want to thank him for his cooperation, but as soon as the Temple of Knights released him, he and his assistant ran off to God's nowhere when that man met in tow. As for my investigation, in spite of all its twists and turns, I managed to salvage a satisfactory result. As far as the Inquisition is concerned, the suspicious vagabond was not more than a zombie which wandered away from the vigil. Sickness which has since been purged. So it seems that is right in the world once more. For now, I have no doubt that the Inspector will, no will turn up like a bad gill. When he does, trouble is sure to follow. But there's no such thing as a bad gill! Maybe one that's cut in half? Anyway, let's watch our let's watch our anime intro. Nah, shoot Makaraka! Seer, I don't know his last name. God Bert Mandeville! GG! Emma de Fortance! The Gentle Dead Man! And the Mystery! See you, Inspector! Yes! Oh, these are good quests. These are good quests. I got a lot of style. Even if the animation was just like movable cutout sticker people. Which they later went on to make more of in the adventure plates, as I demonstrated a little bit earlier. It all comes full circle. Kilo Lorgus, yes! <laughs> Seer's last name is apparently Blime? So his name is Seer Blime? Huh. The GG situation. Seer must once more enter into a world he does not quite understand. I pray the sea finds you well, Bond. Or at least better than it finds me. <sighs> it seems I have no choice but to seek out the inspector and convince him to surrender up his mammoth to me. Because in unearth order the most auspicious circumstances, after all, who could say what secrets or heresy it might hold? Therefore, the Inquisition would hold a thorough inspection and, if needs be, destroy it. No! Given his affinity for contra uh, the contraption, I fear the inspector may not be amenable to my request. Nevertheless, he must be made to see that in the interest of public safety. Would you be willing to help me persuade him? Not really, but I'll go and look at him anyway. Very be praised. At least you have seen reason. Let us pray he will as well. I am given to understand that while the inspector and his assistant have been wandering all over the city with the mammoth in tow, they often frequent the gazebo near Four Temps Manor. With any luck, he'll be there now. I know it's Fortal. I know it's Fortal. But I look at it in the English and me just says four temps. Every time. It is hard to get rid of the English break and when trying to read a French name. Oh, look, there they are, enjoying the gazebo. Wait, who's this? What are you doing here, you stinky man? Stalker, no stalking! Isn't she adorable? I thought you guys said that it was a... To the very pinnacle of the heavens. Verily shall we scour all creation, from the deepest pit to the seven hells, the very pinnacle of the heavens, for the answers we seek. Every day shall be filled with grand adventures, the stuff of fairy tales and legends. As a, a grand adventure in the deepest pit of the seven hells. Or so, such as the creed of Hildebrand, Agent of Inquiry, Inspector Extraordinaire. Wow! Wow, you picked that up quick! Well posed, DG. Well posed. I dare say you have the potential to be an extraordinary extra vector someday. Right, that's enough of that. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Supreme Sacred Tribunal of Holy Inquisition Doctor E, I hereby command you to surrender the mammoth on suspicion of radical origin unto my custody. 
Why, hello there, Bot! Inquisitors here, ever the jester! Accusing poor Gigi of being a clockwork heretic, when it is plain to see that he's merely a precocious young lad! Oh, there you go again, confusing the poor girl. There's those big, beautiful, boxy eyes, uh, the soul of femininity. Now, shoot, please. Were you not wizards a magnificent display of Mandervillian masculinity mere moments ago? That's because you haven't taught her any better. She needs a proper role model to show her what's what. Really now? Like that? They're just gonna have a flex off? Oh, well, Gigi likes it either way. Uh, what is all this? Master McCammer? Inspector Seer? What is all this commotion? I can hear you from the courtyard. Oh, Edmund! I see! Oh, Lord Edmund. My sincerest apologies for the disturbance. I have come to seize this mammoth on behalf of the Inquisition, a fact which I clearly explained to the Inspector before you arrived. At which point they set to bickering about the contraption's gender. What say you, my lord? Do you think Gigi is a boy or a girl? This clearly struck me a lot, no? Jerry, take me. Not you too! Has the whole world gone mad? Fine, fine. We would suspect supposing that this Gigi is a real boy. You can't deny that the circumstances of his discovery are a miraculous resurrection. A resuscitation, rather. Or most unusual. He cannot be suffered to roam the city with impunity until the Inquisition has determined he is not a threat. I beg your pardon? Miraculous resuscitation? Oh uh, yeah, Godbert hit it with a hammer and fixed him. Also, he has no memory. I see. Until such time as Gigi recovers his memory, mayhap it would be best if you adopted him aboard of House Manderville. I would even stand as a witness here now, if you wish. Uh, adopt? That would make me Gigi's father? Doubtless the Inquisition would think better than taking any action which might threaten the cordial relationship between our two houses. Yes, yes, of course! I'll do it! I, Hildebrand, Age of Inquiry, Inspector Extraordinaire, do hereby grant this child the patronage of House Manderville! Baba Hildy! Baba Hildy! Inspector finally became a father! <laughs> it, it's so beautiful! Uh, um, oh, you need me no longer. Uh, fear the Inquisition. You're free to show Gigi more fair of our fair city. I strongly encourage you to do so. Help by the grace of the Fury, something will jog his memory. Thank you, Lord Edmund. I shall not forget this kindness. Come, my faithful assistant, my beloved son. We must away. Oh, Halone, I would not presume to question your grand design, but, ah, uh, confound it all! Well, mayhap I cannot detain the mammoth, but I'm still within my rights to observe the blasted thing. Old Godbert will be pleased to hear that his son is as hale and healthy as ever. Not that I would ever presume to meddle on the another father's behalf. And certainly not without consent. Oh yeah, of course not. Thanks for being a true dad, Edmund. Ah. Edmund always comes in to help us out. At the worst times. At the best times. Look at him, still being great. Just always forever great. Wait a minute, I still need to... That way? Okay. Up we go. Uh, oh, down and out. I see. Oh, look at all them Herberts. I've never seen such a well-armed building before. Yeah, it is a pretty well armed building. It has lots of points, straight heavensward. 
Judging by the size of their estate, they have wealth to rival House Mandeville. Ugh. Well, it must have stood around waiting for that member to do something uh, passably heretical. Forever. Remember, heretics don't exist here. Uh... Come now, Gigi. Surely gazing upon the wondrous work of his guardian architecture stirs something within your soul. The grand manner of House Durin... Uh, House... House Durin... Milim Timsarte. I do not fill the boy, the mammoth's head, with such nonsense. Yes, yeah, the Supreme Sacred Tribunal of Hellenic Inquisitors and Doctrine. I should know, I work there. Furthermore, I am quite certain that there is no House Durin Middle in Simtart. It is rather a ludicrous uh, portmanteau of the four high houses, including the esteemed house which but recently stood as witness to your adoption. Well, Gigi, do you remember anything? No, nothing. I say, rather than parading him before the grandiose, why not give him a taste of something more pro uh, prosaic? Let's make our way to the holy stables. They eh? might bask in the singular sights, sounds, and smells of Ishgard's famous chocobos. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's where they're going, Seer. If you want to be a Seer, you have to follow them, right? That's why your name is Seer, because you see. Right? It's just that simple? We'll see. Uh, let's see. I'm not getting a lot of experience for this. I think I'm getting none, actually, but I'm going to drink milk anyway. <sighs> Something tells me that I should be looking for the... The Stalker? Something tells me that I've missed the Stalker a few times now. But now that I'm aware of his existence again... Eh. Patience, patience. A watch heretic never sins. Such noble creatures, Chocobos! How many halcyon days did I pass in the saddle racing across the windset blades? So if I wanted to hair that color, I'd have to eat plums, valfruits, and pineapples? But how many? No one knows, Dashu! There's online calculators for dyeing your chocobo. One day I might actually do that. Is there a colored one in there? I don't see one. Uh... Splendid specimens of horsebird flesh, would you not agree? In the hands of a skilled jockey, any one of them could take first place at the saucer. These chocobos are the pride of the Ishgardian cavalry, and the temple knights who dared to exploit them for a personal gain would answer the fury herself. How about now, Gigi? Do you remember anything about Ishgard? Be sure to give Sniff a chocobos. It might help you. It didn't. It has a nose? You know, just because you found him in Korth of Snowbanks doesn't mean he hails from Ishgard. Which is why we ought to try taking him to the markets and exposing him to all manner of goods from across the Orzia. Excellent suggestion, Inquisitor! Wait, am I now complicit with this farce? Fury, really forgive me. Come on, just go with it, guy. But I want one! I want one! Buy me a chocobo! Please, father! Father, there's strange things looking staring at us! <laughs>
Am I that strange looking? Well, you are a very unique mammoth. The Jewel Crozier it is then. Wow, I just looked at the time. I hadn't realized I'd been going that long. I guess there was a lot more rising than I thought there was. I should be able to get bit done with Hildebrand in a time that I've allotted myself, though. I might need to refill my water, though. Receive your orders, detain your heretic, meet your quota. Fury, take me. It used to be so simple. Frightening on occasion, I grant you. Well, with my mentor's little episodes, but simpler nonetheless. Oh. What if I picked one with my eyes closed and gave it a name day gift to myself? I wonder what I'd get me. Wow, that's kind of... You know what, Nasha? You do you. These goods would fetch a high price, little da. Why bother? It's no use. Now, now, Gigi, you must not give up into despair so easily. Did I not promise you days filled with grand adventures and the eventual discovery of your mislaid memories? Spirits, Gigi, spirits! No, no, Hildebrand! No! This isn't Zelda! You're not supposed to break the pots! My word! A vase flung to the ground with reckless abandon! Could this be the opening salvo of an indiscriminate campaign of vandalism? One waged by your wild gesticulations, perhaps. At least look before you strike a pose. The gods only know how much that vase cost. One hundred and twenty-three million five hundred and four thousand gil, at last assessment. It was over seven hundred years old and graced the homes of a dozen archbishops, eight counts, two lord commanders, and one duke. Ah, one hundred million gil! <gasps> I don't have that money! Oh, Elodie, why have you forsaken me? What is that magic? What the? Well, would you look at that? Wow! Gigi is powerful! To be fair, if it was that expensive, they shouldn't have just had it sitting out. Yeah, if it's that valuable, like, someone could just, like, run by and swoop it up and steal it away. Like, that should be, like, in a box, at the very least. It's... it's a miracle. They had to find an intervention of the Fury herself. Did I do that? Gigi, my boy, that was marvelous! You're born artisan, just like father! Papa Hildy's papa? Your grandpapa, Yardbutt, the man who woke you with a few gentle taps to an organ. You wouldn't believe what else he can do with that hammer of his. Why, some folks say he wields the very powers of life and death. Once he had the missus come back from a tour in the Western Highlands, I'm sure they'd love to see that trick of yours. Do you not demean the mammoth's power with a mere parlor trick. It just witnessed a miracle. I demand that you all acknowledge it. Yes. Mammoth? Sir, I, I say, sir, 
one hundred million gil for the mammoth. Nay, one hundred million million gil in the Duke's price at verse. My word, is that what passes for trade at Ishgard? Gigi is my flesh and blood. I would not sell him at any price. Please, Papa Hildy, no more. I know you mean well, but you cannot deny the truth of the longer. I am a mammoth. Gigi, whatever has gotten into you? You are my son. You are a Manderville man. Listen to your papa, Gigi. You're a Manderville girl, through and through. Stop it, both of you. You're not my papa or my mama. Not the mama, not the mama. Oh, children, do say the most hurtful things. Ah, uh, the unmistakable scent of... Well, perhaps not heresy, exactly. Regardless, that mammoth's power could not be allowed to fall into the wrong hands. Well, it's only to be expected. Gigi is a rebellious age. Strange as it may sound, I too tested my parents' patience on more than one occasion. If they could weather the storm, then so could I. I say we find out what's got him thinking he's a mammoth. But he is a mammoth. How can you not... Oh, never mind. Just so we're clear, you do agree that it's a mammoth, right? You don't honestly believe that, you know... I'm sure he didn't mean what he said about Papa Hildy, which means... <gasps> he thinks I'm his mama! <laughs> you only just got that, Nashu? Anyway, for this person, we can buy dyes. We can't buy pots. But I guess you could call them pots of dye? Yes, a labor-saving green dye used for coloring anything from dye, uh, cloth to metal. We could also buy some orchestral rolls. Not for millions and millions of gil, thankfully. But what I should use this person for... It's not buying dyes. What I should use this person for is repairing my gear, because I haven't done that in a while. I have one million gil on this character. It's not a lot, but it's mine. Granted, half of that was gifted to me. So at this point, I would have 500,000. I would not even have a million. The measure of a mammoth. Eldebrand knows in his heart that love transcends dimensions and time and space. Definitions of man and machine. The course of fatherhood never did run smooth, but I, Hildebrand, guardian of Gigi, doting parent extraordinaire, shall find a way to overcome this trial and be reconciled with my beloved son. That's a spirit. Solving a simple case of childhood rebellion should be easy for a man who unmasked thieves, defeated duelists, and led armies of the undead. Yes, yes, that's all of it. Wait, what was that about the undead? Actually, don't tell me. For now, that's all that matters is finding that mammoth. We should begin by speaking with the sentries who's stationed at the city gates in the airship landing. If Fury help us, he has left Ishgard, who will need to know about sooner rather than later. I will visit the Ark of the Worthy, while the inspector and the assistant head to the airship landing. You can question the guard at the gate near the manufactory, after which we will regroup by there to share our foundings. Dismissed. Who made you leader? But alright. He has a good plan. I guess someone has to give instructions. As an Inquisitor, they probably would have chased some people around the city more than once. So let's see, they said uh, the manufactory, yeah? So we go. Pardon me as my hand is occupied for a moment. I had to take another drink. Oh, uh, have you seen a small child mammoth? No fellow with a wild broomed hat? Oh, he's come through here. Uh, uh, bought passage on a supply ship bound for Falcon's Dust. One of them, uh, what's his name? Lawfalls, right? Funny little buggers. They be way to be anywhere but here. Fortunately, my companions are coming to me. Oh, Gigi left the city. 
It's not by the main gates. And the sentries at the airship landing have seen no one matching his description. Uh, he just passed through here, guys. Oh, it's dust. Fury, take me. Must we return to that freezing pit of despair? Whatsoever, G.G. Joes, I shall follow him and find him and embrace him as my son once more. However, I surmise our final destination lies far beyond the walls of this outpost. Indeed, there is but one reason he would return to those frozen wastes. To frolic in the snow and cast his worries to the winds! Really? Really? He seemed in no mood to frolic when last we saw him. That's a recall. He uses arcane powers to mend a vase, only to become a morose and belligerent, but it become clear to him that he was in fact a mammoth. One might even say he remembered what he was, remembered his purpose, and so he returned to Western Corthus, the famous blue eating ground for heresy, where he first found him. Home to heretic masters to share with them the intelligence he had gathered in the city. At long last, the undeniable, unquestionable, and unmistakable scent of heresy. Boy! What are we standing around for? We have a heretic to catch! Inspector, I'm starting to think the Inquisitor Seer might not think very highly of our little girl. It is possible, but I would not presume to know his feelings ere he voiced them explicitly. Until such time as he does, we should endeavor to sur uh, surreptitiously bring them around to his opinion that Gigi is a boy pure of heart and good intent. Suddenly, in all things, Doshu, that is the Mandeville way! Really now? Subtlety. From any of you. Staring right at the gold saucer. Any of you. Goodness sake. This family. I love them. Okay, so where are we going? Just over there. God. Oh, even the footprints are adorable. They almost look like they were made from all those clockwork minions. That they were. I would know those tiny footprints anywhere! Gigi came this way! Aha! I knew it! The moment immediately left the output and looks to have headed north along the river. By the fury, I cannot wait to finally catch him in the company of the heretics! I don't much like your tone, Inquisitor. If our baby girl run afoul of any heretics, she'd look them square in the eye and tell them she doesn't want any. Hey, Inspector! I think I just had one of those moments, you know, of insight. Maybe Gigi came out here to find Lord God, but I did tell her Grandpa Bob might have uh, liked to see that trick of his. Brilliant deduction, Nashu. He might be eager to meet his grandparents. The self-same ones that renounced when he declared you were not his father. Ha 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 ha! What a fine young gentleman, eager to explore his heritage. Let us make haste, my friends, for a reunion of three generations of Mandeville's beckons. I really can't be bothered. And we can't be bothered with you, guy. Some people are just insufferable. This guy's getting to that point. I'd say he's at like an 8 out of 10 at this point. The tracks continue to the north. a chance upon a scene? I am! Wow, look at this! Julian throwing snowballs non-stop at Godbert. Godbert throwing them back at her. But she is throwing with deadly intent. Pow, right in the kisser. Pow, right in the kisser. Come now, you'll have to do better than that.
Look at all the, the dead deer nearby them as they're just having a snowball fight. And GG almost made it to them. The mammoth lies motionless in the snow, fragments of ice stuck to its cap, suggesting the impact of something small and round traveling at high speed. Oh no! Does grandparents accidentally kill it? Uh, my head, who? Oh, it's you. You followed me. Oh, Gigi, if you wanted to have a snowball fight with your grandparents, you should have said so earlier. Papa Hildy was very worried, though he is glad to see that you are unharmed. But seeing you were struck by a snowball, much like these Steinbox, those dead Steinbox. Are you sure he isn't damaged? As if a mere blow to the head could fell our Gigi, we Mandevils are made of sterner stuff. I myself have been driven headfirst into the earth on no fewer than two dozen occasions, several times of mom's above, and my mind is no less brilliant for the experience. <laughs> I expect the earth was no less brilliant for the experience. See, uh, that. Why are you. Are you nodding? Oh, he's behind me, isn't he? What good fortune to cross paths with you lost so far from civilization. Forgive me for not taking notice earlier. I was engrossed in my duel with Julian. But how rude of me. Would you care to join us? Grandpapa got burnt! Grandpapa got burnt! Mama Nashu says you wield the power of life and death. I beg of you, Grandpapa got burnt! Grant me life! Make me a real boy. Uh, I don't even think Godbert can do that. Well, let's see him try. Are you sure about this, son? You may stick a little. I will endure whatever I must to become a real boy. Alright, now you're learning. You're stepping back. And now for existentialism. So let us begin. Oh, wow. He did it! This body, it's everything I ever wanted. It's perfect. Thank you, Grandpapa Godbert. Thank you. Oh, but I've not even begun to begin. Your God, guide my hammer. What the? Look at him! A large lad! Baba Hildy, I'm... I'm a Manderville man! Gigi, my son! Come to your father! Let me have a look at you! And in slow motion, they will run at each other! Baba Hildy! Gigi! She's crying. In real time, as they're still in slow motion. He's ready for a hug! He's ready for something else! <laughs> 
That sure is the Manderville way, though, isn't it? Because of course it is! That's a good face. Close lined! This is still in real time. Oh, we mastered the dance and everything! Oh, he's perfect. Now that brings back some memories. Papa Hildy! Oh dear, what could have done such a thing? Oh no. Oh, he undid himself. By the fury, it's just like the vase all over again, miraculously restored to its original form. Aw, oh, we could not have had GG the Rogadin. Ah, uh, this game hates Rogadin! GG, my boy! Upon further consideration, I believe that body may suit you best. It is! How oh, shall I put this? More manageable. And much more adorable. But how can I ever be accepted as your son if I remain a mammoth? Is that what's been troubling you all this time? But why didn't you say so? A Manderville is more than mere flesh and bone. He is vigor, compassion, honor, a gentleman for all seasons. Be you man or machine, it makes no difference. If they call you a mammoth, you look at them in the eye and say, Nay, I am a Manderville mammoth. It's perfect! Mother, father, forgive me for not consulting with you earlier, but circumstances forced my hand. I am formally adopting Gigi as my son, and ward of House Mandeville. Dear gods, I knew he was fond of the mammoth, but did you hear that, woman? Our son's gone and got himself a son. Grandpapa, Godbert, Grandpapa, Godbert. Oh, it makes sense now. Grandpapa Godbert and Grandmama Julian. She's been wait I've been waiting years to hear those words. Grandpapa Godbert, Grandmama Julian. Few things in life are grander than become my grandparents, as they say. Oh, ha, ha. Oh, ha, ha, oh, ha, ha, ha. Oh! Oh, that aura! That sound of malicious intent! And what's so bloody grand about it? Off they go! Never forget that she is a world-renowned and powerful culinarian in her own right. It's Manderville and Manderville, after all. I'll not be made a grandmother to a bloody buggering mammoth. This past time I beat some sense into my beloved boy. Fury, take me. I've heard the hills of the dark nights before, but no, no, it couldn't be. No, I think it was something far worse. Heretical, like. Not as much. Like as not. But rules be damned. I'm not risking my life to find out. Yeah. 
the dark art, the dark art of cooking. Well, Mandeville did say they would go on adventures to the deepest pit of seven hells. I didn't see Nashu around, so she must have chased after them. They're mad, utterly mad. A whole damn lot of them. How their house could rise to such prominence, I will never understand. Well, at least the mammoth seems to have overcome its existential crisis. Uh, before today, I didn't know a mammoth could even have an existential crisis. Yeah, funny that. Wait, what am I saying? It's a mammoth! Why should I care what it claims to think of it feel? A uh, guy that's not the attitude to have. Mammoths have hearts with feelings. Jerry, take me. Their idiocy is infectious. I must allow myself to fall prey to fu prey. Follow procedure. Report to your superior. One step at a time. One step at a time. Uh... Meanwhile, up on a cliff. Who saw everything? Three people who looked like they could have been knights, maybe. But for now, we just go back to Foundation. Well, that was a pretty good chapter. Uh, the things that Hildebrand is capable of getting himself into. The animation budget in Heavens were slightly larger than it was in The Realm Reborn. But they're not ready to throw, like, throw open the coffer for it yet. This is what, the second patch? Yeah, this is the second patch that's closing now. There's yet more to the story. Still seeing GG VV GG Final Fantasy Nine's VV. Alright then. My superiors have been informed of the mammoth's adoption by House Mandeville, as witnessed by House Wartums. Uh proceeded to take me to my task of gross mishandling of the situation. They remain convinced that the Mammoth is a product of radical machinations. They have commanded me to redouble my efforts to remove this incontrovertible incontrovertible fact. That's the word. That may prove problematic, however, as Gigi seems to have forsaken this quest to recover his memories, and thrown himself wholly into his new life as a Mandeville Mammoth, casting about for any hint of a case alongside his doting father. In any case, I do not share my superior's conviction. I think it's safe to say that there is something exceedingly unusual about that mammoth. You saw with your own eyes how effortlessly it restored that vase and itself to its former form. Reconstructive magics are not particularly rare, but his are unlike any I've ever seen before. Yes, it's a very powerful boy! There's our cast again! Now with a couple of extras! See you, Inspector. What was the name of that merchant? Was it a gill? I didn't quite catch that. Oh, the names fly by so fast, and it's an Eorzean script, which takes my brain some time to translate. A gazebo to call her own. Seer may well be the only man who has yet to drink from the Well of Madness. They stand here before me as proof of Helene smiles upon me this day. I have need of your assistance, Mont, and before you think to run away screaming in terror, I pray you hear me out. It concerns the esteemed and now missing and presumed dead Knights of the Heavens Ward. None have returned to the capital since all the unpleasantness began, yet recently we have heard rumors of these honored sirs walking through the streets. What? This heresy must fall, I say, and I mean to get to the bottom of it. But we will need all the help that we can get, which means, Puri Tank, maybe we could benefit from a certain individual's serendipity. Besides, if we seek them out, it is likely to show up in the worst possible times anyway. At least that's the way of it in our terms. We can't help but keep an eye on the mammoth. Mammoth! Yes, right. Oh, you must be wondering why I asked you to come. Well, you and the inspector seem to enjoy a natural rapport, so... So you want me on hand because 
you don't get along with them. Chris Halone, for a moment I was afraid to make you beg. They make me beg, rather. This may well be your last chance to prove the worth of superiors, and if I can't, the Four Tufts Manor. Okay, up we go to the last vigil. I would not be surprised if we were back at the gazebo. We are! We are! But wait, where's the stalker? I haven't seen him. I have not seen him. I'm sure he's been around. I'm checking the bushes and everything. I just I just don't see him. You would be with an eye shot of uh, Nashu, yeah? Wait, is he on the roof? Oh no, I thought it was worth checking. But why, Papa Hildy? Little Gigi's been a very naughty girl. Because, Gigi, such behavior is unbecoming of a gentleman. But why, Papa Hildy? Why is it unbecoming a gentleman? Ah, Inquisitor's here. Bond, good day to you both. Are you come to ad as adoring fans or on business? Business as always. Always business. You may rest assured. And I, Hildebrand, Ancient Inquiry, Inspector Extraordinaire, am at your service. Is it a robbery? Murder? Tax evasion? Avoision? Wait, before we get into that, what's going on here? Much as it pains me to admit it, my beloved Gigi, the apple of my eye, the fruit of my loins, attempted to deface this lovely gazebo. Naturally, as his father, it wants me to see him return to the straight and narrow. That's not true. I was drawing a family crest for our home. Oh, he got down on the level! Now, Gigi, I know you are fond of this gazebo, as are we all, but it belongs to Lord Edmund. You wouldn't want to steal from Uncle Edmund, would you? I... I guess not. Then where is our gazebo, Papa Hildy? And does it have a warm stove with a steaming kettle, too? Oh, Gigi, don't you see? We have no need of kettles or gazebos. The gentlemen inspectors, the world is our oyster. We can go whither we please. Where the red fern grows or wild rose blooms. And yet you've been sleeping in Lord Edmund's gazebo for how long? I don't care about wild roses. I want to live in a gazebo with Papa Hildy and Mama Nashu. Gazebos are quite expensive. And dangerous if not domesticated. Dangerous indeed, my boy. And besides, we are gentlemen inspectors free to travel the length and breadth of Eosia in search of a case. Does that not sound more thrilling than whittling away the hours beneath a gazebo? I guess. If it's a case you want, you need not go far. We are currently investigating reports of individuals masquerading as the Knights of the Heaven's Ward. Their, co their contemptible artisans are rumored to be tricked as several hapless maidens into attempting private parties for a small fee, with the promise of enjoying the company of these grand sirs. Those who were foolish enough to attend found their experience to be so traumatizing that they have refused those gossip in detail. Needless to say, your assistance in this matter would be greatly appreciated, and for it you still shall receive due compensation. Say no more, Inquisitor, say no more. I, Hildebrand, issue inquiry, Inspector of Sordner, and well versed in the ways of the fair sex. Since when? Mummy! Uh, Mother Dearest! I was under the impression that you had departed for old R. And leave my beloved boy to keep on playing a being an inspector as well as a father to a bloody mammoth? Bugger that! You're coming home right this instant! 
How could he say such things? It is my life's calling to be an inspector. And Gigi is my son. He is a Mandeville man. Grant. Grand, as you see, you, you have come to a most inopportune time. The young woman of Ishgard are in need of a champion to defend them from fiends most foul. Come, Nashu, come, Gigi. We shall demonstrate to my mother our peerless investigative skills and bring these criminals to justice. Away! Balls, balls, you stubborn. Probably gets it from a sorry ass of a father. I trust you lot will help me keep him out of trouble. Right then, come along. What? Well, that couldn't have gone better. And worse. Let's not keep them waiting. Right! You won't make her mad. She's already mad enough. Uh, let's see. The last vigil is down to the south. A world-weary maiden? Please do not think me so foolish as to fall for the charade. From what I heard from the others, say knights bore not even the slightest resemblance to the heaven's world. As if we had not already memorized every detail of Master Adifitsis. Oh, wherever could he be? I shall have some choice words for him when he returns, especially if he cannot properly account for his prolonged absence. I am truly outside of grace! My love is all gone to waste on those, those, oh, I dare not say it. Mayhap those awful rumors are true. Mayhap I must needs accept that I now walk in Halodis halls. He was too beautiful for this world, a good and true knight, a defender of the faith. Oh, so Zephyrin, I swear I shall never love another. Wow. They really were the teen idol group of Ishgard. And what in the seven hells is so damn appeal about getting paid a pittance to do the watcher's job for him? Huh. Yeah, I mean, I guess when you make as much money as Julianne, you probably would think every other profession is bad. Who needs a gazebo? I do. Hmm. There must be at least one fair maiden who can tell us something of value. I can say one thing with absolute confidence. You're all quite mad. If the knights aren't supposed to, you know... Why are they so popular with the highborn ladies? That's a great question, Nashu. I demand satisfaction. Swift and terrible vengeance. How dare they prey upon the ladies' emotions and line their pockets with their gill. If such Shabbat was here, he'd purge a lot of them with the festering sickness they are. Ah, oh, yes. A pity he too remains missing. So very much a pity. What I'd like to know is who's going to deal with these criminals and heretics. We can't bloody well be ashamed to purge them ourselves now, can't we? Yeah, they're all quite mad. Uh, anything new, Julian? No. Papa Hildy, Papa Hildy, that grandmama over there is staring at us. Now, Gigi, a gentleman must be more careful with his words. First of all, you have only one grandmother. Second, if this is tremendously important, never ever call her that. At least, not yet. Promise? Yes, father. I promise not to call Grandmama Julian, Grandmama Julian. Greetings, milady. Oh, ain't you a charmer? In the hour I might have to rip your bloody head off if you said the G word one more time. Like that, Papa Hildy? Oh, my faithful assistants! Have you gleaned any new information? Uh, nope, not a, not a spit. Other than the fact that these women scorn seem to detest the fake knights with every fiber of their being. 
Those two women were telling me all about what they do if they cornered, sir. This is the best you can do, then. A bloody oath of girlish fantasies. And you call yourselves a Mandeville man? I assure you, Mother, we are only just getting started. The tapestry of lies and deception beyond which truth hides has often unraveled at the tug of a single loose thread. I say, young lady, I would beg for a moment of your time. Somehow I doubt that young lady was targeted by charlatans we seek. Ah, oh, it's true. I too was taken by the false promises of those awful, awful men. Long have I yearned for a chance to meet Sir Falcon, and who just said I finally could? I didn't hesitate for even a moment. When they escorted me to the manor that did the blindfold, and I took on the hideous face of those so-called Grand Sirs, I screamed and fled. They were gone when I returned to the watch. The neighbors said they had overheard them speaking about seeking shelter in a place called Indleshire. I know this not much, but I've heard this information helps you in your search. My lady, I swear to you, here and now, I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, shall not rest until these dastardly fiends are punished for their foul crimes. Huzzah! There he cheers for Papa Hildy. Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! And there you have it! Our quarry can be found at Idleshire! Come, my loyal assistants! Justice waits for no gentleman! That's all well and good, but I've never heard of Idleshire. Have you? Uh, actually, it's just to the west, in Dravania. You mean. We're to travel to Giovanni and Hinterlands. Right now, just like that? Yeah, there's an Aether and everything. Really, I should be leading the way, but if Hildebrandt wants to run off in a random direction... I guess I'll beat them there. Or maybe they'll beat me. They are that fast. You've seen the run, they're very fast. Good stretch. Good stretch during that little... Ugh. Why is Idleshire taking a while to load? I guess I haven't done a lot, so there's a bit of phasing. Uh, let's see. What is this quest? Ah! You know what? I might as well get that done on the way out. Uh, let's see, where am I actually going, though? Just outside. You know what, I'll get that now. From the boisterous bruiser, we have a striking opportunity. Your reputation precedes you, and the wide-eyed look of the stranger is favoring you with as any indication. Oh, I know you. A one of them half-mad adventurers what roams about picking fights with gods and every bugger else. Well bet, well bet. Love your work. Ah, oh, but just one of them packs like right crazy killers, am I right? Those, for all I know, maybe they're the only ones who do a work while you share the credit. Now, now, killer, don't take it personally or nothing, but I see you before. It's all blood and shite and explosions, and it'd be hard to tell if you're pulling your weight. That's why I've been trained up the stone, sky, and sea. Don't let the daft name fool you. It's a proper training ground, where fighting folk like you and me can go and refine your killing prowess. If you've never been, go and look up the goofy fellow about past the back bridge. I'll tell you the rest. You won't regret it. Or maybe you will. Walking Atlas. Yet I'll try. Never fear. I did this parts like the back of my hand, and nothing will greet me better for you than I personally give you a guided tour. So what do you say, Fred? What the best thousand gil you ever spent? I did mention it cost a thousand gil, yes? Believe me, it's worth a hundred times over. No. I have a map. I'm good. Okay, now that we're here, I'm gonna look for the stalker one more time. 
I know he exists. I know I'm wasting time. But if he's here, I would like to find him. No, I did not see him. Okay. I feel like I gave a pretty good look, too. Ah, oh, bloody waste of time. So, that was a harrowing journey during which I felt certain I would die horribly, at least be forced to part ways with my precious bits. This place feels somehow familiar, but I can't possibly have come here before, right? Ooh, can I keep one? Up. Uh, uh, never mind. Oh, can I keep one? I promise I'll walk him and feed him and put him fresh herbs and mask every day. Are you talking about goblins? No, Nashu! No, they are people! Truly, this magnificent settlement is a testament to the hard-working camaraderie of our uplander and gobby citizens! Yes, well, I'm just glad we're uh, no longer being pursued by fire-breathing dragons, musk-wielding crabs, and bomb-throwing goblins. You know, the other ones. But there was no match for Lady Julian with that pan of hers, am I right? I want to see her make the bad gobbies fly again. God's sake, Sildy. Except in Bond, this lord be dead if in dish if it weren't for me. Nonsense! I would never let any harm come to my loyal assistant or my beloved son. Um, if I may interject. Now then, let us put up and question the good people of Idleshire. My keen inspector sense tells me that one of them has a knowledge of these false knights we seek. Yeah, Seer probably would have died. Well, let's go and see everybody, then. Yes, yes, who says, fellows of grandsons? Sneaky up London hips shall smingle not with copy flock. But it's their own, Lonjok says. No question, only jingly shy. How about you? Oh, you must be talking about the Grand Sirs. They drifted into Idleshire some time ago, as I recall. Papers is a great library. Oh, I couldn't tell you why. How'd they get in? It's locked! No one solicits the submissions. If you wish to receive work at collectible suppliers, you have to see Lindred at Reverend's Toll. I thought I did. Oh, I'm not a crafter yet, so I didn't. Could it... could it be? Exceedingly experienced treasure hunter. Oh, I know where you got, sis. They keep themselves in that building of their house or around pot. You best watch out, though. A dangerous bunch. Liable will kill you if you're looking for them cock yet. It's entirely possible they've gone completely and utterly mad, but... Are you perchance the long-lost twin sister of the Ishgardian noblewoman? Oh! I, uh... I'll find you! A three-headed gubu! Oh, it is the same person. Why do I feel like I've not seen the last of that old woman? Uh, let's see. Where else do I have to go? Over that away. I didn't even catch that it was the same old woman because I didn't zoom in on her face enough. That's what I get for having it zoomed out all the time. Oh, there's so much here! A sorry a low city of vagabonds, cutthroats, and charlatans I've never seen. Don't you fall in with them here? Uh, but I am an adventurer. Don't you fall in with them here? Okay. Hooray for everything. Where's Nashu? I had to find Nashu before I go uh, continue. I would think that she would be around. Oh, well, I don't see her anywhere. Oh, there she is. I see her. Just on the other side of the merchant stalls. Oh, even more name day gifts for me. Ah, Nashu, stop spending all your money! You know what? It's your money. You spend it how you want.
Oh, if only we had the testimony of a concerned citizen which could conceivably direct us to a villain's precise location. Oh, hey, I found the, the villain's precise location. The Grand Sirs are holed up in the building to the south of the markets. Good show, Bunt. There, that's the one. Come, let us inform the others. For it seemed that no one is home. There is not we can do but wait, then. Papa Hildy, Papa Hildy, I just want to say that, that I really like this place. I think that you and me and Mama and Ashu could have lots of exciting adventures if we stay here. Hmm, you may be right, Gigi. This community seems to have fostered an uh, enlightened, free society, welcoming off honest uh, souls, welcoming, uh, willing to do work and contribute to a greater whole. Oh, did anyone happen to see a gazebo on the way in? As we leave the sauce, we're the right Heliodore Maximilian Nanifero. Could that be? I say. Could that be slow fix uh, coin toss? You know this gobby, Inspector? I most certainly do. Why, Master Slowfix was my very first employer. Yes. We're traveling through. Ah, shoot. Hold on. We're traveling through Thunderland long ago. Gobby Flock was waylaid by Uplander Brave Bandits. With no jingly shine to pay brass plates, we had no way to back to take goods. Until a then busy deal with gentlemen Uplander, that is. With fastness, he finds up land patents and brings much bangy boom, and returns to Goodly Gobby's missing goods and great justice. Henceforth, Slowfix gains no appreciation for Uplanders, but for a chance encounter with gentlemen Uplander, he never conceives egalitarian utopia pitch. Tush! One day may claim he'll be a founding father of Littleshire, with metaphorical tongue flaps, that is. Let's see if I can close this. There we go. Oh, ha, ha. oh, the memories! It was a near thing for the bandits were clever enough to see through my ingenious disguise as an innocent milkmaid. But in my haste to escape, I tripped over a barrel of fire sand, as they say, Boom Gobby Doom! Oh, no busy deals for the wicked! No busy deals indeed. But leaving the delightful editor to side, ye gods, Master Slowfix! Just look at what you and your flock have made of these ruins is making me big eyes! <laughs> Bobby Flock has come a long way since uh, Foundering Days. We have not forgotten gentlemen Uplander's kindness. Slowfix is here to offer hand lending. Well, far be it for me to refuse! My son Gigi has grown quite fond of your magnificent city, and so I should like to stay here with him and my assistant for a time. It would not require much in the way of accommodations. A humble gazebo, for example, would more than suffice. Why should I for a gazebo when perfectly good estate right behind you? Residents of building in a uh, rear of Sulfix is happy to evict them. Oh. So is, is this the tax evasion? But... You were pursuing the fiends who lived here on suspicion of defrauding young women. Fraud? But Slowfix is able to in Utopia? There's no doubt to find. All the more reason to let gentlemen Uplander and Flock stay here inside of Grand Stirs. No need for a tingle shine either. Huzzah! A grand giant gazebo to call our own. Well, free house is a free house. I... I don't know what to say! Thank you, Master Slowfix! Thank you! No need for teary eyes and tongue flaps. Bobby Flock is in possession of more obligations to repay gentlemen of London for past generosity. Enjoy new Grizzly Bill, and good luck for Honda and Grand Sirs! Um, Papa Hildy, since this is our gazebo, is it okay if I draw our family crest on it? 
I can think of no better way to celebrate the joyous occasion, and perhaps draw in the ire of, draw the ire of our new home's former tenants. Come, let's go and purchase some paints together. This gazebo shall be your canvas. Now he's gone and gotten himself a sodden gazebo? Bloody hells, is he really thinks I'm going to let him keep on playing at being a father? And there's the paint! You got this, Gigi. Oh, look, they got some boxes! There's a little bit of paint. They're ready to go for action. I'm just resting. More time passes. It's done! Isn't it beautiful? Well done, Gigi. Well done. Or it might be better than my own. Still no sign of the notorious Grand Sirs. I dare say we're going to need more paint. That's so good, though. It's perfect. And you know what? Now that I've completed the quest and turned it in, as soon as the game lets me, I'm going to turn around and look at it. Uh, let's see here. Look at it! That's there forever now! It's perfect! It's perfect! The old woman must have followed us here from Mishgard. She's involved with us, that much is clear. The question is how? Even supposing I were to turn a blind eye to her shenanigans, this is no place to raise a child. Well, I mean, children are being raised here. Jeez, you're so talented. Just like a grandpapa. How oh, do you like my family crest? Oh, maybe I should have also painted Grandpapa Godbert and Gre Milady Julian. Don't trust anyone over 60. Hildebrand has never been a patient man. Yeah, it's a good idea, Stretch. Oh, much as it pains me to admit it, a gentleman's stamina is not without limit. I dare say I could do with a spot of tea. Hey, Inspector, is it just me or have those two been looking at us for the past few minutes? Oh, it is quite normal behavior for my adoring fans, I should think. When finally presented with an opportunity to meet the idol in the flesh, all too many succumb to the fear and flee. Oh, maybe, just maybe, they're the Grand Bloody Sirs. Come on, they're getting away. Not coming with, Julian? Oh, you are. Okay. Yeah, we got to adventure with Godbert a good amount, but this is the first time we spent a good length of time with Julian. Oh, uh, let's see. Does that have us leave? Yeah. We'll go on the east exit. Because that way we can tackle this uh, striking opportunity. A brief little intermission. It won't take long. They have a nice black chocobo, and we have a goodly adventurer.
Who there? Good sir. Uh, you look like you enjoy battling in the bathing of love of the enemies. Have you much has heard about Stone Sky Sea? You see, as far as the initiative to reduce the number of disputes, the Adventurers Guild has been forced to arbitrate between members who accuse their comrades of not contributing sufficiently. It, uh, let me try again. He who fights with a strength of stone and yielding, breathes deep in the boundless sky and embraces the serenity of rolling sea, against him none can stand. Sorry, that's what our Dobin fellow told me to say. I don't quite understand myself, but he seems to think it was all very clever. Right, so in essence, we've got these ridiculous contraptions that you attack in whatever manner you deem fit. Each is supposedly tailored for a strength of some legendary beast or being or some madman decided to challenge once upon a time. Speaking of which, I believe one should be dropping it right about now. Stone, sky, sea. And from as if the sun, a thing, and it begins to rotate and plummet down to the land. It has landed. Behold, a striking dummy. Apparently, the first time they dropped was that, uh, one of those was on accident. The trainees loved it so much they started doing it all the time, though. Right, so, each is tailored to the strength of the legendary fiend. The idea being that if you could defeat the dummy, you could defeat the fiend. In principle, that is. Dummies don't hit back, after all. Who gives a fig about that other day? I only forgot my best part. It's free! Stone, Sky, and Sea, now accessible. You now have access to Stone Sky Sea. This training ground can be accessed by speaking with the goodly adventurer right here outside Idleshire. So the idea is... There is no DPS meter in this game. In fact, using one is against the terms of service because that would be a third-party tool. In-game, there is no damage meter. There's no way that you can tell who in the party is contributing more except by maybe looking at the enmity meter, and even that can be lied because, like, some actions just generate more than others. So... People say that other people are getting carried. They're not pulling their weight. They're not, like, contributing enough to the fight. So they have those target dummies. If you can defeat those target dummies in the time allowed, you are doing enough damage to be able to do the trial that you have set up through that target dummy for. It means that your damage is fine enough. That doesn't mean that you can do the mechanics. That doesn't mean that you necessarily can clear the fight, but means that your gear is good enough and you know your rotation well enough that you could theoretically do that trial. Or extreme, or like whatever the, the target dummy is set up for. It would be nice if it did a little bit of the mechanics, but you know, can't have it all. It's just a target dummy though. <sighs> oh, Fury, take me. I haven't run like that since the show, but chased me up and down the steps of faith, brandishing a flaming... Wait, where is Yuji? Huh. Spare the flame and rod, spoil the milk saw. Where could this you have gone to? How could it be, you dastardly rascallions? You have nowhere to run. Reveal yourselves at once. I shall not ask you again. Come forth, Grand Sirs. Name yourselves and answer for your misdeeds. Oh, wow, they're old. So very old. Slayer, but holes and holes of worms. A silver spear said pierce the very heavens. Orland! 
No semantics. It's an awesome. The fine hand which has to defeat the middle of malady saves sentences and inconsonants. Go on, Spot. Answers. Excelsior. I don't know whether to laugh or cry. May have both. Grandsires, uh, grandsirs, you stand accused of willfully and unlawfully in convincing young maidens of Ishgard to attend private parties under false pretenses, thereby inflicting upon them terrible financial and emotional distress. I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, am come on behalf of these poor defensive citizens, and I'll see no other, uh, that no others are made to suffer as they did. Now lay down your arms and surrender yourselves into my custody. Ugh. No dusty of this boy. You should feel ashamed of your words and deeds. Wow! He just has a Dragoon Limit Break ready to go? You will rue this day and rue it hard! Oh, time I missed this. They are streaming past the blood pumping. There's easy copper on my lips. The slight dizziness. It was only a day like this that we met, wasn't it? Then we stored in the azure skies and never truly came back down. Oh. Oh. Do my eyes deceive? Pig's knee of my heart, descended from Lone's halls to guide me to her bosom. Wait, did my beloved, my everything? Oh, have I waited for this moment? Take me in your arms once more and lift me higher, higher, higher. Higher, higher, higher. Did I? Oh. Oh. All in. All in. All in. Did he... Did he die mid-jump? Alas, poor Orland. I knew him not in the slightest, but he seemed a decent man. Chicanery and attempted murder notwithstanding. Go rule this day, and rule... Oh, we just saw this! You don't need to have a flashback! I guess maybe we do need to see how he fell. Oh, the, the halberd came first. And then the man. I see. Wait, I've seen this before, all too recently. Uh, yes, anyway, he's only mostly dead. If the Master of Magic's Ancient and Awesome here acts with all haste, this man may yet be saved. Um, are you okay? Um. Oh, are you afraid to me? I see, I see. With, with all haste, was it? 
Yes, yes. I'll get right out of that. Oh, mournful voice of creation. Send it to be a creature of the abyss. My throat the command that I may No, wait, that's no good. Uh, let me see. Something of a rather less controversial tradition. Yes, something with more map. A vortex of mighty wind to run the flesh. And smite my foes. Foes? I thought you were friends. Oh, he's fine. It's fine. It worked. <gasps> oh, Sivir didn't bugger me with a bleeding gevog. My book! My book! Uh, I don't see my have underestimated you lot. That makes two of us? Enough! Leave that be! You will not care what becomes of the mammoth! Oh, she caged him. My boy! Gigi, but when? How? I thought I recognized you, first in Ishgard, then in Idleshire. You've been following us since we left the capital. The face is fair and fearsome, the midnight shadow which has deceived kings and queens. Doris! You can't possibly have been so naive as to think we'd not see through your ridiculous disguises. And yet here we are, so effortlessly and easily lured into a trap, for which we have mostly grateful mind. My companions are hardly cut off in this life of the road. Always been in preparation for this moment. The parties, the petty schemes, the reverse objective was the grand design has been a singular mammoth. I swear to you, if you harm Gigi in any way... I had no desire to hurt the boy, but to help us reclaim as rightfully ours, our youth. What? A bomb? It's very small. But powerful. <laughs> Confound it. I can't see. Well, that's unfortunate because your name is Seer. Um, very slowly getting away. Papa Hildy! Gigi! Stay strong, my son, I swear, I shall find you! We, we could just stop them right now. What? Why didn't we? You know what? I would like to think that the Warrior of Light just lets Ildebrand do his thing. Fine job he did protecting that mammoth of his, eh? Do you think they're headed for the old mill? If not, can we go anyway? I haven't had the cider in ages. Remind me again why we didn't just, you know... I don't, I don't know, Seer. I, I don't know. Twelve strike me down for a fool! So desperate was I to see the Grand Sirs, that I failed to discern their true intent before it was too late! And now poor Gigi is in their clutches! What if I never see my beloved son again? I suppose we ought to be prepared for the worst. It could be halfway to Rods of Harm by now. I very much doubt that, given that they were moving at Nad Mantois's pace. This little milk sop's right. Let's get after the old buggers. Huh. Oh. That's what my mentor used to call me. Among other things. Oh, the memories. What, you like being called a milk sop? Eh, whatever. There's a lot I could discover in this region. A lot of map, rather. So let's take a moment to, like, get the map discovery point that's right over... You know what? We'll get it eventually. We're right here. Yeah, I could rescue Gigi right now. 
Eh. Oh, see? Death stalks us at every turn. That's not death, you fool. It's just some passerby. Think he's sleeping or just resting his eyes? Let me guess. Wonder why I haven't gone and smacked him upside the head and pulled him into this rubbish, eh? There's a time for cracking skulls and time for letting your idiot son deal with his troubles on his own, that's why. We mustn't act rashly. If they realize we are being watched, they may attempt to flee again. Very slowly. So, it seems the Grand Sirs have been caught once more by the very inspector that was trying to catch them. Ironic. It's also premature. We have them, yes, but they still have Gigi. Damn it. If only some manner of opportunity would present itself. And then on cue. Asking you shall receive. We can ambush the wizened dragoon, take him hostage, and demand an exchange. Inquisitor Seer, you disappoint me. A gentleman cannot condone the violent kidnapping and ransom of Zelda's. No, no, we shall approach this problem with paragons of honor and virtue. Bond, we shall stalk and subdue the Grand Sir, then relieve him of his armor. What? How is stripping an old man naked more gentlemanly than taking, his ho taking him hostage? Rest assured, I shall reveal all soon enough. Godspeed, Bond. Alright, I'll do it. Uh, same dialogue. Same dialogue. Do take care to obtain the Dragoon's armor through gentlemanly means. We must always endeavor to treat our elders with the utmost respect. Even if they're bandits? Oh yes, let's not even bother to discuss the moral and ethical implications, much less the legal ones. Am I the bandit? <coughs> I... I... I think I'm about to do a, vi a grave misdeed. Oh, I knew you'd... Wait, who are you again? There's something awfully familiar about those muscular forearms, their strong yet tender-looking fingers. I say, are you so kind of massage my shoulders, young man? There's a lingering ache, this tension that Godsmart cannot seem to soothe even with his magics. Well, I have been told I give the greatest massages. Remember, remove my breastplate. Oh, of course. Don't tell me. Here, lend me a hand with the straps. Help this man remove his armor. Early young man, you are a saint. Yeah, sure. Oh, I swear. It's a little thing to begin to appreciate. My dear departed wife used to help me with my armor, you know? Right, right. I should be sealed, uh, sealed to better receive your tender administrations. I think it's in my bag now. Orland's armor. Entrusted to you by its elderly owner that he may receive a vigorous massage. The suit of armor is surprisingly light and reeks of garlic. Massage Orland. Oh, the healing tingle. Would I had a tincture of salamander with which to treat these aches. My little pigs, they used to spread some on my chest and under my nose to help me sleep through the night. Come, do not be shy. Work your soothing fingers into each and every knot. Slowly. Maybe forget my troubles. Continue to massage the old man. Who but a moment ago tried to kill me. Uh, harder. Harder. Higher. Higher. Close your eyes and dream. Massage him again? Fine. The old dragoon stops snoring, suddenly stops. You begin to fear you may have uh, borne witness to his final moments. Leaning closer, you extend a hesitant finger. Only stops short while a sudden spasm signals the resumption of his labored breathing. Uh, let, let's steal the sabatons then. Well, he willingly gave me his armor. 
With the utmost care, you remove Orland's sabatons and breaches, leaving the sleeping old man exposed to the elements and at the mercy of the nearby ravenous bears and tentacled marbles. May he rest in peace. Good night, sweet prince. Oh. I... I don't think I'm the good guy in this story. I'm gonna discover the map while I'm here. Get that bit uncovered. There we go. There we go. Orland Sabatons! This old gray mare, she ain't what she used to be, ain't what she used to be, ain't what she used to be. <laughs> Even though they kind of tried to kill me? Yeah, now I'm just... Uh... uh, that's the same dialogue as before. That's the same dialogue. That's the same dialogue. Okay. Yeah, have anything new to say now? There's only the two of them. That's not death, you fool. It's just a passerby. I see. She's still reacting as if the other guy was there. She's still responding to his thing. Unusual. Oh, my stalwart assistant. By return, I gather you have taken care of the Dragoon. And by taking care, I mean affording him all due courtesy as befitting a man of his years. Whilst we're returning to this equipment, I require. Here you go. Capital. Then without further ado, I shall disguise myself as Orland and free Gigi from captivity. They two look nothing alike. They may be old and slow, but they're not blind. Oh, ye of little faith, you are of for a treat, and you shall have the front row seat to this magnificent display of Mandervillian guile and subterfuge. Because there wouldn't be a Mandeville questline without him disguising himself or wearing something. Eh, is it time for dinner yet? We just ate, you don't that bugger. Eh. Where the hell's his ordered? I know he's gotta take a piss every hour, but damn it, he could at least be quick about it. Yeah, his magic can't really help him if he's in a cage. Oh, he's in the armor. That much is plain. But he did nothing to disguise his head. Greetings, uh, uh, What is that word? Antediluvians? Greetings, fellow antediluvians. I have returned. That's no disguise at all. You're just wearing armor, Hildy. Oh, bollocks. It's about time. Wow. Okay, no, that's bollocks. Back your things. I want to hack on the road in ten minutes. Before we do that, we will first release young Gigi here. It's his behavior of becoming a gentleman to keep children in cages. What did seven hours you been there about? He's going to get away. No, he will not. See? Still here, within my care. Right then. On completely unrelated note, I shall now take the boy with me on a brief sojourn into the wilderness. Jerry, take me. It's working. He's about to walk out of there with Gigi, and they won't even try to stop him. So far, so good. Oh, no! <sighs> I'm going. There are mobiles after me.
this camera. I'm me, but you also be. I, I can't be unless. This is it. In a moment where my life flashes before my eyes. Oh, my dearest Pigsney. We'll be together at last. Wow, her posture is awful. And her eyesight is awful, too! Imposter! How dare you attempt to trick me with a ruse so hackneyed it won't make a minstrel blush! Dear gods, I never realized dying would hurt so much. Now's our touch, Gigi! Come with me! Wait! My son! What's gotten into you? Vivi? Vivi? Where have I heard that name before? Sorry, I guess I spoiled it, but he is Vivi from Final Fantasy IX. Remember who you are, Vivi! What you are! A creation of the great Charlie and Archmagus, Quan! Quan? Quan? I. I was given life by Grandpa Kwan. I remember now we lived together and he taught me many things about the outside world. What a twist! What? What exactly do you remember, my son? Everything. Yes, everything. I remember that Grandpa Kwan created me, that he took care of me, raised me, and that we were very happy. But then, but then he abandoned me. Grandpa Kwan abandoned me. I believed you were flawed, Vivi. And you lack the power to turn back the hands of time and make him young again. And so in his ignorance, he cast you out and died all alone. Uh... To turn back the hands of time. Go oh, with us in the groves here, and with the Duke's priceless face, the power could be brought to bear on people? But oh, wait, how do you know all this? You could have possibly been associated with this Archmagus Quan. He found his journals during our many trips to the Great Library. Scavenging the valuable relics of there are as few ways we have left to make a living. We're famed heroes of the war in our prime, and our fortunes to match. But no soldier has the strength to triumph over time. Before we knew it, the order the sheath was upon us. This guard no longer had the needs of our service. And so we came back here to make a living. We keep doing what we do best, until our bones wouldn't let us. It meant our surprise when we stumbled upon the opportunity of a lifetime. A second lifetime, as it were. A mammoth with the power to make such a broken and restore us to the prime estate. To turn back the time with the temporal magics to give us back our misspent youth. Uh, Fury, take me. This is also. I oh, you know if there's a precedent to determine whether or not this constitutes heresy. We knew where to look, even. Our journals that described the mammoth was somewhere in the Western Highlands. A chance. For second chance. Within reach. Now I have forced to watch as you imbeciles pull Vivi from the snow, nearly ruining everything! Vivi, listen to me! Come with us and we can help you unlock your true potential! Just think of what you could accomplish were you to master your magics! Not only could you make us young again, but you could even have the power to restore life to Archmagus Quan! Vivi! Vivi! Oh, 
Impossible. No badger can truly return the dead to us. At best, you can animate a corpse. I need not review the precedents to declare that the pro uh, products of necromancy are abominations in the eyes of the fury. Gigi, wait! One of our adventures! One of our gazebo! You are Mandeville, Mabbit! You have always been so kind to me, Papa Hildy, and I will forever be grateful for that, but Grandpapa Kwan made me, he made me, and I miss him. So even if it fails, I have to try. What are you doing? They're getting away! We have to stop them! Mayhap, we must respect Jesus' decision. So that's the end of this chapter, eh? You giving up and coming back home? I too made a decision long ago. To become a traveling inspector, I have ever stood by it. Mayhap, it was from the singular stubbornness of mine that GB took in Gigi took inspiration. Nay, I cannot abide it. He is my flesh and blood, my son! I dare not let him use his temporal magics to revert the natural order. I, if also me, his father, to ensure that Gigi keeps a righteous path and only utilizes traditional methods of zombification to raise the dead. That's right. Inquisitor Seer, I must applaud the dedication to your work and I cannot thank you enough for what you have done for our behalf. Yeah, I fear if we continue as we are, Gigi may be driven to rash action. Therefore, I would ask that you suspend their pursuit of their grandsons for a time. I might need for an opportunity to convince my son to return peacefully. Well, seeing as how we can only guess at the full extent of Gigi's powers, it might prove quite dangerous to act aggressively should he choose to use them. I knew you would understand. Right then, there is no time to waste. Nashu, let us retire to our new gazebo and discuss our plans. I suppose it'd be a shame to have you given up that easily. Though that means I'll have to stick around even longer. On the other hand, if that blubbing mammoth really did have the power to make him young again, then... <laughs> Lady? You're not that old! You're not old at all! Look at you! I say I suspend my pursuit, and I will, but that doesn't mean I won't continue my investigation into that mammoth and his powers, in Ishgard. Alright. And thus ends that chapter. One more chapter left. It's all coming to a head. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. Once more we walk past these things, we might deal with them this stream, maybe. Voltage looked into the oven. It's some kind of yellow casserole. It smells really good, but doesn't look appetizing at all. You know, why don't I combine the two? I could have chicken in the yellow casserole. No, no, I'm probably gonna get fast food after stream. Ah, oh, I see you've returned to the capital as well. Inquisition has a rather large collection of heretical tomes, including May and Charlie in origin. I have mind to scour them for information on temporal magics. This is, of course, all for the sake of confirming the mammoth's heretical origin. Yes, only that. Huh? Why are you looking at me like that? This is to imply that my interest in those matters is more than a professional one. I'm sure that I don't know what you're talking about. Thank you, Bond. That'll be all. He's beginning to grow a heart! And thus ends the third chapter. The Grand Sirs. Even without their harbor. Oh, uh, that, that was a little bit different. That one was, like, weird. In a weird way. Sometimes the joke is old. And sometimes the joke is that something is old. 
Wait for that switch. The proud and the pointy-eyed. Sierra's a man to the end of the tether. We need to speak, Vaunt. I've been scouring the archives for any information regarding the temporal magic since last we spoke, and the results have been rather troubling, to say the least. As you may or may not be aware, ancient Alag is portrayed in, in Kidian as a cautionary tale, a great empire brought low by its vanity and hubris. However, there are certain apocryphal texts which the Alagons are cast in a more sympathetic light, if not outright exalted. But in these texts, I found a reference to temporal magics once wielded in the eye by Alag mages. Said magics could be used to halt or even reverse the temporal state of a given object. If these accounts are to be believed, Gigi's abilities are based on these magics and one and the same. It may well be possible to turn him back to the hands of the time as the Grand Sirs, much as the restoration of the Duke's priceless face. That being said, there is no telling how this work will be in regards to a living being. Consider, if you will, that the vase was filled with water when it was shattered. If the vessel were restored, would that, what would become of its former contents? Will it be filled with water as before? The very same, every drop returned? Or would it be different water? Or would the water once spilled be forever lost? I speak of the soul, my friend. For if one could use these magics to restore the dead to life, would there be any way? Would they be as they were before, with all the same thoughts and memories and feelings? The Grand Sirs are convinced that they can regain their lost youth, and mayhap they can. But the dead who have entered into Helena's halls cannot return. They cannot. Yet Gigi is nevertheless resolved to try and resurrect Archimagus Quan. Ah, uh, speaking of which, according to some Charlayan texts and archives, Archimagus Quan was an accomplished scholar, known for a study of ancient Alog magics. Further evidence that Gigi's abilities are likely derived from ancient traditions, I suppose. But more importantly, I learned that the location of Archimagus' former residence. Mayhap they could find something of interest there, something which could help us persuade Gigi to change his course. I have mind to summon Inspector Hildebrand to make a journey there together. Would you be willing to join us? Of course! I'll see this to its end. Excellent. Then let us be about our business. I I saw you! Uh, heretics! Oh, hi there. I beg your pardon? Are you accusing me of being a heretic? Ah, yes! Inquisitor, sir! I, I saw you sneak into archives and sneak out of forbidden tomes! I saw a mad light in your eyes and it partook of their forbidden knowledge! Oh, for the love of I did all that for the, my investigation! Aha! Y you admit your crimes! He did secretly, without permission, in blatant contradiction of the rules, read forbidden tomes. And by virtue of the authority you vested in me by the Supreme Secret Tribunal of Hellenic Inquisition Doctrine. You? You stupid, ignorant. Are you all so desperate to keep your goddamn jobs that you go around accusing all the world and his wife of heresy? Is that what you've been reduced to? I'm sick and tired of looking for heretics in every bloody shadow, of trying to guess at the secret sins everyone I meet. It's stupid and pointless. We're better than that, damn it. We're better than that. If you will not surrender yourself, then I have no choice but to, to, to inform my superiors. Uh well, that, that all came tumbling out, didn't it? I suppose there's no point in trying to convince myself that I have no personal investment in this matter, or that I still have a professional one. Somewhere along the way, I stopped looking for equality and started looking for, for the truth, perhaps. And a way to help those in need. Now, there's no place for people like that in the Inquisition, is there? It's only a matter of time before the stuttering fool comes back with an armed guard. Let's depart for Idleshire at once. We need to find the inspector. Oh, right! He lives there now! He has a gazebo! Well, mansion! Mans? Residence. It's funny to think that Hildebrand has a house. And I don't. I mean, yes, there are many places I can call home, and I can get a, a room for free at any of the adventurers' guilds, and... Uh, it's not the same. It's not the same. Uh, 
That person is enjoying their Rising Phoenix? Good for you. I still have Midgard. God damn it, Hildy. I raised you to have a better sense of this. Are you looking for the inspector? He went off on his lonesome. It would seem we arrived too late. Inspector Hildebrand's already gone off on his own to confront the Grand Sirs. I came back briefly to trade Jingly Shine for supplies and whatnot, you see. Uh, Gobby's caught ears to, uh, Gobby has caught them trading tongue flaps and killing dragons in the Fallens. When the inspector learned of the latter, he said he had to go after them right away to back take Gigi. He said he had a duty, not as a inspector, but as a father. Oh god, that! He's got no obligation to a bloody rabbit, especially one that chose to leave his own free will, as I recall. I, s I swear, if I turn back on the boy for one bleeding second, he loses his goddamn mind. I'm afraid he's trying to do something reckless. Don't you think we should try and go and find him and offer hand lendings? I'm rather more concerned about what will happen if Grand Sir's attack or worse kill any of Hracefugger's brood. But first things first, I suppose. Bond, would you be so kind to assist Mr. Snapshot and Julianne the search tree inspector? I would pay a visit to the Archmarchus Quan's abandoned abode in the meantime. Oh, before you think to refuse, I know that you need not fear for my safety. Let's just say that our singular experience together have uh, inured me to harsh realities of, well, reality. Oh, there'll be a scrawny little shite's finally found a spy. Let's start by heading to the tail feather. I reckon the inspectors probably went there first to ask their grand sirs, so if we do the same, we'll sure to catch up with him eventually. Tell Feather it is. And here we are. Why do I have to go outside the gate every time? Hilda practically grew up in the saddle. Give him the firm thighs and buttocks it did. Probably, yeah. Right then. I say we split up and make inquiries separately. If you learn anything about the Inspector of Grand Sirs of Gigi, come and tell me. Is Julian good? Oh, she's helping too. Okay. Uh, here we are. We have Ranashon. Blue dragon flares in the mama day. They call your mama if I hadn't seen them come through earlier, boasting about how they were off to kill the biggest one yet. What? Well, it's brass they were, going on about killing this and glory taking that. As all it had, as if that law had it in them. That doesn't sound good. The dragons are our friends now. This got in with a mammal. They were here uh, proclaiming to be all and sundry that they were going to slay the greatest dragon of all. You guys only know if the Naya fools are serious. Dragons are not to be trifled with, and I hardly think these so called veterans are even remotely capable of doing what they set out that they would do. Throw that castle. Cabbage juice. Oh, those daft sorts. Oh, no, they're not trying. Not sure what they had mentioned there, but they're awfully confident of what I recall. Uh, same dialogue. Okay. Uh, was Nashu even in the town? I didn't see her about. Oh, she was behind the tree the whole time. I probably could have talked to her beforehand. Oh, well. <sighs> you got nothing? I got plenty. There are the other dragon place. Oh, I see. 
So Grand Sirs, we're heading for our next shrine. And my dear boar wasn't far behind them either. What are we waiting for? Let's go, let's go! Hey, XAR! Yep, Final Fantasy Fridays are still here. I was late, but that's okay. Expansion is going well so far. I did the rising event from the beginning of the stream, which is how we were able to get a phoenix and some stuff for our adventure plate. It looked like the adventure plate quest was not necessarily just for the rising. That one's just sticking around, like as a quest. But it was out of this patch, so I did it anyway. Currently, we are doing Hildebrand, and we're actually coming up on the last leg, so I hope you enjoy. If things seem a little bit out of place, don't worry about it. It's Hildebrand. Just kind of nod and go along with it. It's... It's its own thing. Oh, did Hilda do this? Usually it ends up on the receiving end. Oh, I found one of the Grand says. Um... Wait. Didn't Hildy have the armor last we saw him? The poor unfortunate soul who bears a strong resemblance to Orland is quite firmly embedded in the earth. Would you look at that? The inspector sure gave him what for. That may well be. The uh, other two get to. Not to mention the mammoth. Why don't we pull him out and ask? Though having said that, it looks easier said than done. Oh, how silly of me. I'm sure you got more than enough strength to yank him free. Right, Bond? Uh, I guess. I, I can hit it really hard, but can I pull it? What if I were to twist it or bop it? Ugh, oh, those firm thighs and buttocks look awfully familiar. Bon! Bon! He's the one! If I can't do it, he's... No one... To... Wait, I got this time. Really. It's okay, Nashu. You tried well. Let's pull it! You know what, XCR? I can go visit Gold Saucer. I can go visit Gold Saucer when I'm done with Hildebrand. Speaking of, it's Hildebrand. He's unconscious and was in the ground. Why, I'll be. He's wearing some sort of magic mask that would make him look just like the inspector. Could the man with 10,000 visions be back in Uldar? No, oh, that's not Hildebrand, all right. There's no fool in a mother's eyes. I say, I say, what trouble has my sp uh, beloved Sean got himself into this time? Oh, it's Godbird! And in full Godbird garb! Why, hello there, Lord Godbird and Inspector Seer. How you two end up traveling together? By fortune, you might say. I was too far from the tail feather to when not begin to fell. But fortunately, Lord Godbird's chance to me with a wandering to the wilderness. Lord Edmund told me to go about this recent trouble with the Grand Church, as well as Hildy's investigation. As your father cannot help but take an interest in his son's affairs, can't he? As for me, I was eager to share with you my latest findings, namely Archimedes Kwan's research notes. Hmm. Ah. I haven't slept like that since I was buried in the Richard. Well, well! I must confess no small measure of embarrassment to be found in such a state, having been so unceremoniously disposed of by the Grand Sirs. By ignominy notwithstanding, I am most grateful for your succor, and pleasantly surprised to be reunited with you all. This wouldn't have happened if you just waited for us to set up. Wait, why the hell are you still wearing that rubbish? An, un an impenetrable disguise is essential when consorting with a criminal element. Alas, would seem the Grand Serves have grown more perceptive in their newfound youth. Wait, you mean they've already regained their youth? What about Gigi? Did you see him? Is he believing strangely? Not that you mention it, his warm, soulful eyes were rather more pointy than I remember. By the fury, not pointy. According to Archimedes Quan's notes, that's a sign Gigi's using too much magic. If he carries on like this, his aether will be expended, albeit not more than an empty husk. This is terrible news! I must catch up with the Grand Soros at once! Do you know where they were headed? All I heard was that they were keen to slay dragons. You are bound to a turning mist, a place called Zenith, to kill a great worm named Nidhogg. But, uh, I killed Nidhogg. 
Really? That all happened? Oh. Um, I mean, the other one. Race Vulgar. <coughs> what? Race Vulgar? Jerry, take me. No, what do you possibly hope to achieve? You're excited for the Gold Saucer XCR? You know what? I could probably pick up Chocobo Racing. I could probably pick up the basics of Chocobo Racing and, like, start doing that. That might be something for the end of the stream. I thought I was going to pick up Monk at the end of the stream so I could get started on it and start using my roulettes, but you know what? Gold Saucer might be fun, too. After finally ach uh, achieving peace after a thousand years of war, they want to kill Hracefoker? That doesn't make any sense. At least we found the inspector, right? Watching Hildy learn and grow as a father reminds me of my own trials and tribulations. It looks well enough, but I wonder. If I could turn back time! Hildebrand wishes to entreat you with the aid of a matter of grave import, and we'll get a GG minion for. Oh no. I, Hildebrand, Agent McGree, Inspector Extraordinaire, do hereby ask all of you to aid me in rescuing my son and putting a stop to the Grand Zero's machinations! You know, there's really no need for all that. We came because we wanted to help. I, Nashu, faithful assistant, maker of explosive extraordinaire, do hereby present you this fresh change of clothing. Capital! I knew I could count on you, Nashu. I shall change en route. Come, my friends, to Zenith and to Gigi! And off we go! I'm glad you're enjoying the dance emote too. And my sip. I'm glad you're enjoying my emotes. Which. Ugh. I sound like a shill every time I say it, but you know what? I have to plug it. It is September, so people who are not subscribed know that for Twitch's special subscri uh, thing, uh, subscriptions are half off. So normally they're like five bucks, now they're 250. So if you want to be able to use my emotes and enjoy them all over Twitch for a grand total of a month and not get ads on my streams, Now's a better value than any other time. That said, if you don't like ads, you can also watch it on YouTube, but maybe YouTube gives you ads too. Ah, whatever. Do what you want. I'm not your boss. Ah, oh, sure. What brilliant craftsmanship. How do they manage? Spending too much time at this high altitude can't be good for my skin. Huh. I think I was standing hard to find in territory. Me. How long ago was I scouring the streets for heretics? His disguises may be amazing, but nothing beats the classic Inspector look. You're not wrong. It's a good suit. And it suits him well. Make ready, my friends. The final battle with the Grand Sores is at hand. Wait. Ugh. Would seem my wounds are more serious than I thought. I fear I am in no condition to confront our foes. There's but one thing I can restore my former indomitable self. Oh, no. Don't be worried. I got some salamander oil right here. Shall Mama give her baby boy a massage? Oh, my dearest Mummy, Mother dearest, I would not impose upon you, not whenever I have a loyal associate. Bond stands ready to minister to my muscles. Are you sure? Don't tell me you're embarrassed. Let Mama take care of little Hilda's hurts. My dear wife, I know you mean well, but let Bond handle it. I can personally testify to his healing talents of his strong yet tender fingers. If that's a way of it, I'm counting on you, Bon. Thanks for the oil. Why does it have to be me every time? Let us brook no further delay. Come, my friend, coat my body in oil, as you have done many a time before. Salamander oil massages are something of a mandatory tradition. What I hope to pass on to little Gigi someday. Oh, the memories. You may as well get on with it. I wish Inspector Hildebrand would let me oil now up. You know what? I would let you if I could. Use the salamander oil on Hildebrand. Salamander oil. It rubs the oil on his skin. It does this whenever it is told. Oh, how it soothes my aches and pains. Quickly now. Knead it into my flesh. Knead it as you have never kneaded before. 
Uh, same dialogue for everybody? Between everything? Yep, that is the way of it. Let's, let's massage Hildebrand. Oh, ah, such curious needing. I applaud your enthusiasm, but mayhap I urge you into excessive force. Oh, uh, nay, you are the right. Already the gentle warmth begins to spread through my body. The fires of righteousness burn anew in my breast. Hold, my son, though your passion is renewed, may yet be swear to greater feats by Mandevillian strength. Derived from the pure substance of Shalabandus, the ancient and ancient legacy of House Mandevil, Shalabandeville. To you, my beloved son, now become a proud father, or bequeath this most sacred awe of worlds. Salamandervil! Could it be that the legends are true? Your muscles will shine with the brilliance of a thousand suns. No mortal man will have the power to do you harm. Worthy it is so, for by my grace did I once weather the slings and arrows of a bandit hall to bring my hammer of justice to bear upon their wicked heads. The time has come, Mort. Take this oil and help him to become the multiple man he was meant to be. What? Legendary oil? Uh, it looks like it's all the same dialogue. So now we have Salamanderville, the best of the best for a Manderville man to rise to the top of the cream only can. So far, lack for a logical plan. Massage the Mander Mander Manderville man. Dump more oil on him. Oh, oh, oh! The Salamanderville. Oh, flows in every nook and cranny. Quickly now, lay your hands upon me. Massage me with all your might. Okay. Same dialogue. Same dialogue. Okay. Oh, yes, yes. That's the spirit. I can feel it building and rising and rising. Yet again. Okay. Oh, such passion, such fervor. I am the Inferno Unbound, the Tempest Unleashed, but I have not yet begun to pose. Massage Ildebrand once more, with feeling. Okay. With such sad music, too, in the background. Roar! I... I am... Amanda... Mander, Manderville man! Ha, oh, ha, oh, the Salamanderville is, my word, I've never felt so alive. Such vibrant colors, such intense sounds, such fragrant smells. Mother, father, bond, twas your oils and strong yet tender fingers, which opened my eyes to the glory of creation. I am a gentleman inspector reborn! Onward to Zenith, no matter the laws of nature, they prefer to the limits they break. The Grand Sirs can do not to stop me. Alright, I believe in you. Do what only a Manderville man can. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. The anime nodding! This game loves its anime nodding. This could have been a dungeon. With the four of us. There they are. Wow, they're young. And capable. Vivi's magic worked. Wow. 
Wow! Evil Vivi! Grand sirs, I have come for my son. Oh, must we do this now? We have a dragon to slay. There's no need for any of this. The war is over. But not for long. The worm's death will give rise to a new era of fire and blood, and we, having consumed his eye, will use our new powers to win untold glory on the battlefield. Our legends will echo in eternity. You would doom countless innocents for glory? No, I would allow it over my dead body. Well, be it for us to not die, you then. This will be the end for you. The ultimate end! No! They're assaulting Hildebrand! And to think, if he wasn't in front, it might have gotten Seer. Oh no, he's ascending! This is so familiar! The three of them summoned around him. In space. And rising! As they assault him! In an attack very similar to one that's from another video game that's not this one! These knights are going around and around! He's taking so much pain and punishment! Flares and holies and ices! And all manner of attacks. Until finally he just eats a limit break! An actual limit break! With a screen shutter effect and everything! Go Hildebrand withstand these grand round knights? Wow, his clothing is destroyed. No one could have seen this coming. How first, my love? Here's your shot. And he rises! Gigi, my beautiful boy, pray do not look on me with such pointed eyes. Let Papa Hildy take you home to our gazebo. Stop calling me that. My name is Vivi. Vivi. I remembered everything. My powers, my purpose, my grandpapa Quan. I made them young again, but it's not enough. I need more, more. I need the worm's eyes, and then I can finally bring him back. I'm sorry, Gigi, but no, you cannot. Grandpapa Quan is gone. He's right, Gigi. Mayhap you could restore his corporeal form and breathe life into it. But soul, what made him your grandpapa, is forever beyond your reach. That's not true. I can restore anything to the ideal form, to the way it should be. Even Grandpapa Quan, even you, Papa Hildy. Please, you, you have no—you have to stop. If you keep using your power, you'll die. And his outfit's completely unchanged. No, stop, VV. Vivi! I... I don't understand. Your clothes are still dirty and tattered. Well, 
But wait, that is his original form. He was like that for years. As I should be, GG. For my every waking moment, as the gods intended. Every day, I live life to the fullest. Every day, I enjoy grand adventures. I found your grandpapa's research notes. What he gave you wasn't the power to make things the way they were. He gave you the power to change the world. Take things the way you yourself believe that they should be. That's why your magics have no effect on the inspector. Because you know in your heart that his battered and bruised form is his. In his own way. Right. My thoughts exactly, Inquisitor Seer. It is for the self-same reason that you are unable to make Grandmaster Quan younger. In your heart, you knew that there was not that needed to be changed. Your beloved Grandpapa was exactly as he should be. That every day was to be treasured and worthy of celebration. Then, now what about the Grand Sirs? Why was I able to make them young again? All I truly knew of them was that the stories they told. Wondrous tales of daring do by heroes in the prime of their lives. It's no wonder you were able to envision them as such. That's all they ever talk about, is when they were young and free and full of fire. At first, Doc Magus Quan didn't understand the true nature of your abilities. He struggled to deduce why you could not make him younger as he originally intended. Eventually, he realized he found memories of his own. Your fond memories of him were preventing you from conceiving him as anything but an elderly creator. That is why the only way to achieve his goal would be to take them from you. But you were all he had left in the world. No longer a mere mammoth, but a friend, family, his only family, his grandson. He couldn't bear to lose you, so he renounced his quest for immortality. But I still lost my memories in the end. And he was afraid of leaving you all alone in the world, after the others would attempt to take advantage of you and your magic. Before he died, he decided to take your memories from you after all, to protect you. But despite his best efforts, something remained. Something stronger, more powerful, and more resilient than anything our magic squad ever dared dream. You were never broken, Gigi. You were never abandoned. All he wanted was to set you free. Free? Free? To do what? Whatever you like, Gigi, don't you see? That was his vital gift to you. A new life. A new story all your own. This has all been very, very touching. We're not getting any younger. Well, you aren't at any rate. We have suffered your meddling long enough. I have intended to use this trap to kill the worm, but since you are so perfectly positioned... Oh! Fire sand! Bombs! What? Oh no, pillars! Those were ancient relics! They will never be rebuilt! Wait. Wait, what am I saying? What? The eyes were restored. But wait, is ether? Wait, the eyes were changing based on ether. Wait, no. Vivi? I am Vivi, grandson of Archmagus Quan and Gigi, son of Hildebrand and Heliodor Maximilian Manderville the Third. No. We just knew him! Vivi! Uh. 
Uh, well, that sure was some time magic. Are we alive? Looks like it. Oh, you're still here. And the pillars are fixed. Well, mostly. Uh... And they're old again. And he's naked again. Well, without his armor anyway. And their plan has been ruined. By words. Oh, even Godbert's back in his ideal state, I see. Oh, wait, never mind. He'll be fine. He'll be fine, Seer. I'm glad that you've grown a heart and have a sense of compassion now. Alas, poor Vivi. As far as an incarnation of a character from another game, I feel like this VV, this VV is a fine interpretation. But the tale is still sad, but it's also heaven's word, so what did you expect? Everything's sad. Even in Hildebrand, sadness. It's like it never happened. The last of strength he turned back to the hand of time. Not just for our pillars, but for us all. He made us all as we once were. As we were meant to be. After all that gallivant about and bugger and all, I got bugger all? What about misspent youth? I was not meant to be this bloody old! Ah, ah, ah. Such a fine day. Never have I so squatted with such perfect form. I may as well have reached my physical peak. Eh, <laughs> what rot? At your age, you daft sod. You look foolish. You should be grateful. Gigi saw that you had become and gave you a second chance. That was our second chance. To relive our glory days. <coughs> it was all rather silly though, wasn't it? Maybe quite at the right of it. It's not so bad growing old. I was a coward when I was young, and now that I'm old, I'm not afraid to say things like, I love you, Doris. You're a blind belly fool, Godsmart. It's a bit late for that. You're all about to go to jail, probably. But you know what? You can love each other in jail. Sure, why not? I say, am I dead again?
Quite alive, Inspector, along with everyone else. Thanks to Gigi, the Grand Sirs are also in custody. Ha ha ha! That's my boy! Where's the little tyke anyway? Gigi, he... Gigi embarked on a grand new adventure. He's... he's no longer with us. I see. If that was what he wanted, then... then I could not be happier for him. I'm sure Archmarchus Quan would feel the same way. What do we do now, Inspector? Is it not obvious, Nashu? The wide, wide world beckons to us with a promise of mystery and wonder. We shall resume our never-ending quest for cases perplexing and profound, and perhaps one day we shall meet young Gigi again. I hate to admit it, but this old mess got me thinking that maybe, maybe it wouldn't be so bad if I really did have a grandson. You did right by Gigi, Hildy. Your father and I can see that. We're proud of the man you've become. And I am proud of you too, Mother, for finally coming to terms with the ephemeral nature of physical beauty and allowing yourself to age gracefully. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Uh. Yeah, let's all back up. Gracefully, was it? I feel we may have to fail you to get it again. Not just one, but two! Two bong! There he goes again! Wait for me, Inspector! Wait! Hawk! Well, the curious light I spy in the far eastern skies, and this oh-so-familiar scent which fills my nostrils, do I smell a case? Worry not for me, my friends, for wherever the wronged one for succor, I, Hildebrand, shall be there till we meet again! Godspeed. Godspeed, you magnificent man. And he even gave me a clue as to where he would be next. In the Far East. How about that? I say... You could do so. You do know so long as the core remains intact, little Gigi is not actually dead. What? That's right. So dry your tears, boy. There's no need for all this moping about. You had followed the dormant state because you used up all his ether. His core gradually recharges, drawn to upon the ambient ether. In time, you awaken from a torpor. I shall tend to a child for now. That's great! Vivi lives! He's just sleeping! As for these three, I shall be glad to take him back to Ishgard in your shed. A most generous offer, my lord, but hardly necessary. After all, it is my duty to bring them back to justice. Wait. Oh, yes, it was my duty. 
After everything I said to the young Inquisitor, I can't go back to Ishgard. They'll toss me into Gale and throw away the key if I don't tell if they don't kill me outright. So go to Adosha and live in Hilda's gazebo. Some will not look after him while he's away, no? That doesn't sound all that bad, actually. Who glad am I to accept your offer? That's not your house to give away, Julian, but okay, he can live there. Does that make this guy a new servant of House Manderville? Ah, oh, well, I suppose there's nothing to do but wait until he comes back down. What a most graceful strike, my love. You haven't lost your touch. Right, she has it. Everyone in the Manderville family is strong in their own way, whether it be through endurance or might or agility. Or maybe all three. So long, Flying Inspector. Do I get my end credits reel? Or do I have to turn in the quest first? I'll have to turn in the quest first. We'll have to do that. Yeah, Fonz! Yeah, that, um... I hope you enjoyed that scene. I know I did. I suppose there's nothing to do but leave your Grand Sirs and Lord Godbert, and for me to see Inspector Hildebrand's gazebo. I'd like to thank you for everything you've done. If you find yourself in Idleshire, come and see me. There are a few arrangements that need to be made, but I can't imagine it will take all that long for me to settle in. Sure thing! Thank you, my friend. Until we meet again. Goes from Inquisitor to a wanted man of Ishgard. Yeah, let's see. Go back to Ishgard, huh? That away. So Vivi's alive and fine. Vivi just needs time to recharge his ether in his core, and he's with Godbert. And this art will stay on this wall forever. This will be here every time I come back to Ishgard, forever and now and evermore. Unless you know something were to destroy this house. Looking back on the course I've run, it's hard not to think of a man I was once and feel ashamed. Before I look on this case, I had only the capital of a handful of times. Rubbish, I believed. The facts I considered unassailable. Very technically, what a fool I was. Yeah! I had met you and the inspector and Gigi, but I never realized how much I had come to hate my job. Who would have had discovered how much is more satisfying it is to seek out the truth. The whole truth. One might say that getting labeled as a heretic and having to flee Ishgard is the best thing that could have happened to me. After all, now that I'm free to start a new life here in Idleshire and as a consulting inspector. Ah, but enough of that. There's someone I'd like you to meet. Oh! Lord Godbert made some modifications, as you can see. His smaller size should allow him to absorb Aether more effectively over time. We thought that if we were to travel with you and share on your grand adventures, that maybe... Maybe we'll hasten his reawakening. So it is. He's with me. Thank you, my friend. I do hope our paths cross again someday. May Fury bless and keep you. But now that he's my minion, wait, wait, he could be like Midgord Sorber. One day he could just come back. But chances are, he's probably just going to stay as a minion forever. Unfortunate. But who knows what the plot has to go. So now we get our credits to Hildebrand. So this is now the, what, the, the third credits I'm seeing for Heaven's Word? Yes, yeah, here has a lot of uh, leftover furniture inside that building. We never actually get to see inside that building. 
We never actually get to go in there. But as a servant of House Mandeville, he's going to be serving well. He dresses appropriately and cleans everything as his new title bespeaks. Tosses as many books inside of a barrel that he doesn't need. He thinks about keeping his old book, his old tome from the Inquisition, but no, he just chucks that right out. Plenty of work to do at Idleshire. Plenty of cleaning to be done. With his broom and his bucket, there's nothing you can't clean. Wait, no, don't you dare! I'm glad that will remain. Oh no, the cobbles on the roof! Oh, the brand will return? Maybe? So, yes. That is what you are. And we got our new GG minion, also known as Vivi, but a secret is safe with you. To use items, or use this item to acquire the GG minion. And we can read more about it in the minion log. Uh, if I can find it. Oh, there he is. The secret of the lost art of temporal magics is believed to be buried deep within this ancient automaton created by a legendary Charlene Archmagist Quan. Vitality levels are dangerously low due to its power uh, trait is necessary to save the lives of his companions. I dare say, yet the potential will be an exemplary inspector someday. Hildebrand. Ah! Oh, that was fun. Well, Lexiar, if you're still here. This is the third time. I feel like this might be a bot. Or maybe it's someone who's watching a stream. I'm not sure. It's probably a bot. Anyway, let's go to the gold saucer briefly. I do think I want to pick up Monk this stream, but it won't take me long to get to the gold saucer. If nothing else, I'm going to stop by the fashion report and get my easy 10,000. We've been here many a time before, but I don't think XCR has seen it. XCR wants me to go to the Gold Saucer on almost every stream, I think. I probably could. There's plenty I haven't done in here. Did I do the Triple Try tutorial? Yes. They have a tournament going on, but I don't think I want to join that. Uh, what have we got going on? Let's see. Let's get a mini pack pot ticket. Easy drawing. Let's see here. Hmm. A 789 could be good. There's a 3. The only way for a potential 1, 2, 3 would be across the top. Okay, there's an 8 there. We could get a 789 if we do this, and that's the second highest paying thing. Those are two things I want. And you either want a 24 for that 30,600, or a 123 to get this uh, 10,000. So I'm going to try for it. Hey! 10 MGP makes 3,600. Okay. Try number two for the day. Hmm. Okay, we can't. We could potentially maybe get a 123 if I go this way, or a 789 if I go this way. Go big or go home. Hey! Hey! How about that? One more. Uh, there's an eight. There's a six. Okay. Um. There's a five. There's a nine. <coughs> okay, I haven't seen the one, two, or three. They could be here. But there's a higher odds of there being a 7, 8, 9 here. Go big or home. Ah, I got small. Ah, well, I wouldn't have got less here. So if I went this way, I would have got 110. If I went this way, I would have got 36. 
Yeah, I feel like this is the highest payout I could have gotten on the ticket. We can double check on it. Yeah, this is the highest payout I could have gotten on this ticket. So you know what? I'm going to take that as a win. Some tickets aren't winners like the first two were. <coughs> but overall, that was a pretty good mini cackpot. Uh, the jumbo cackpot is almost never worth me doing. Because I would have to come back here every single week and remember to, like, claim my ticket. And I can never remember to do that. Uh, let's see. Do I have... MGP... Do I have gold saucer cards to sell? It does not appear that that is the case. Okay, so that's... Wait. Did I stuff them inside here? No. Okay, I don't have any triple triad cards to sell for MGP. Uh, I will go to the fashion report and get a quick, easy 10,000. <laughs> Greetings, Pursuer of the Fine Fashion. You come to present yourself for charging. Do you wish to know the current theme? Ah, uh, just present myself. Let's go. Without further ado, let the charging begin. Take your place, my friend, and take strike a pose. This is like the fourth time I've shown this on stream. Sometimes I do this before the stream begins, but today I was late. It ought to come as no surprise, but there are no two suitors vying for Kasumi's attention. She is quite fashion savvy herself, though, so you'd best know how to dress, as she won't let you so much as remember you. I haven't made my decision. Raise yourself! What? I thought the minimum you could get was 80. Oh, no, 80 is for success. Alright, yeah, 68 is the minimum you can get just for wearing stuff. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I've gotten 80 almost every time. I'm good. So near yet so far. You're on the right track until you straight into the wilderness. Though the overall look is adequate, it's quite rough around the edges. With some polishing, however, the stone beneath could be made to shine. Here's your prize for participating. I hope this challenge has opened your mind to new possibilities in fashion. Easy money. So are you satisfied with the showing? You feel you can do better? I encourage you to try again. Uh, let's see. I think I bought everything here. I think I have, yeah. Okay, we're good. Yeah, I believe the Fashion Report this week wants something that's from, like, old Midsummer Fire Festivals. Moonfire Fairs, that's what they're called. Sorry. I mix my WoW and my 14 summer events in my head often. Oh, wait, there's an event going on. Leap of Faith. I have six minutes to get in there. You know what? We're jumping. I'm really bad at this. Thank you for having what it takes to hop, skip, and jump into way to victory. Then step right up and try your luck at Leap of Faith. If you're feeling especially daring, we place several trophies throughout the course. Reach them before you clear the finish line. Your reward will be much greater. When participating as a party, please note that party members must be present at Gold Saucer before speaking with Seventh or Gil. Leap of Faith! Well, Lexi, are you happy? I hate jumping. I hate jumping. I hate this a lot. I'm a Dragoon. I'm a Viera. Okay. Jump to the finish! Okay. Hop. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got that. Uh ha. Uh ha ha. Uh ha ha ha. <laughs> oh, what fun. Oh, what fun. Yeah! Woohoo! Okay. Okay. Alright, I'm fine. Ye Everybody's going so fast because I've done this so many times, but I barely ever do these. I. 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 Um, I. I. I'm, I'm here. Okay, I'm here. 
Oh, there's a silver over there. I could get more points if I go for that. I, I just want to be done. I say going for a silver and getting more points. Ah uh ha ha. Ah uh ha ha. Woohoo! Yee! Okay. Up we go. Come on. No! Okay! <laughs> Alright. Let's get this. Alright, just a couple more points. Let's, let's, go on the, let's go on the easy one. Okay. People can jump that? Yeah. Okay. <gasps> if you make grunting noises, you jump a little bit further, right? <laughs> okay. Down we go. I, I don't care. You know what? That's a bigger target. I do care a little bit. Oh, I hate this. Oh, I hate this so much. <laughs> oh. Some people find this fun. Some people find this tremendously fun. Good for them. Good for them. I, 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 uh, this, this. Oh, I, I do that. Uh, mm. <laughs> okay. Oh. Just go. Just go. Just go. Just go. Bolt. Just go. Just climb the vine. Just do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, up we go. Up we go. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. Here we go. It looks like there's a bridge. I can just walk. I can just walk. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. We're at the final bit. We're at the final bit, I think. Okay. We have to ascend the tree ladder. No, I don't blame you. You quit your run of this when you were on it before. Yeah, I probably will. I probably will. But you know what? I, I'm i doing it on stream once. And if I do it on stream once, I never have to do it again, right? Ah, uh, ha, ha, ha. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Let's don't jump too far now. Uh, one small step at a time. <laughs> okay. I don't know how these people do it. They're going so fast, and I have no idea how. Probably controller players. Yeah, I'm playing on uh, keyboard. The strength of my jump is dependent on how long I hold forward before I jump. So... <laughs> how am I still on this? I'm using the wall to try and stop me from over jumping. Oh no. Okay, here's the oh, <laughs> oh you guys! Oh, uh, I wish I could use Dragoon powers to just make that, but I can't. Okay. I just wanna be done. 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 Okay. I'm so close. So close to the end. I just I just want it to be over. <laughs> I could, okay. Let's do a sprint. Jump! Okay. Okay. Oh, they're doing a nice thing. Let's... Alright, we made it. We're at the end. We're at the platform at the end. We have five minutes. We have five minutes to finish this. People are dancing. They're having a good time. They have a nice stage up here and everything. There's lots of additional challenges. You go and get more points? No, I'm good. I'm good. We're done. Oh! I barely got any points for that because I didn't... I wasn't adventurous and I didn't go anywhere else. I didn't go anywhere. I didn't do anything. I didn't get it. Get, thank you. I did do it, but like, oh, wow. Yeah, just for finishing the thing, you get 2,000. You get a ton more points if you're really good at jumping and you get all this other stuff. Ah. Oh. Oh. Oh, uh, okay. I jumped! I hope you're happy, XCR! 
I did that because you told me to go to the gold saucer, and so here we are. Oh. Okay. All right, we did it. Oh, that was a gate. You almost got to the end. You fell. You had 50 seconds left. You went, no, and you just left. Yeah, because if you fall, if you fall off the map at any time, if you don't land on solid ground, you go all the way back to the beginning. Fortunately, I didn't demonstrate that. Fortunately, I succeeded. Somehow. But... Oh, the punishment for failure there is very high. I mean, at least you don't die. At least you can try again. At least you don't lose, like, you lose. But, like, the 10-minute time limit means that, like... Huh, if you go at the end, you're done. You're done! Like, you don't have time to jump back over there. Oh, okay. All right, I'm regaining my bearings. Do I have a very particular minion? You know what? I'll use Hildebrand's. I have a, min a minion for Hildebrand. You know what? Do you guys want to see for minion? Some people may be like, what is for minion? Well, uh, honestly, I don't know either. But there's a whole square dedicated to it, so it must be important, right? I don't know. Sometimes they add things to the gold saucer that, um... That just don't pan out. So this is the Verminion board. This is the Verminion table. Uh, let's see. Actually, before I do this, I have to go here. Gold saucer. Verminion. Edit board. Let's see, for spot number four, I would like to use... Let's use Mind of Merwin in slot three. Do I have a Kidragora? I do not. This is a Mammoth-type minion. Uh, let's see, let's use Chewy in slot one. I like my dog. Am I looking at what they do? No. Should I be? Yes. Uh, let's see, I need a good Monster-type minion. I don't have a good Monster-type minion, that's a problem. Bombs! Let's use a bomb. Get a puff of darkness in here too. Let's get that axolotl in here too. Why not? I have some good. I have some good critters. Uh, but where is? There he is. There he is. I'll, I'll probably just use this for the tutorials. The wind-up gentleman. All right. Hot bar is edited. We're good. Let's apply the Verminion Challenge. The tutorial. Are you prepared for battle? Sure. Command your minions and conquer your enemy. Stage 1. Tutorial. Lord of Verminion. At Manderville and Manderville. Welcome to the tutorial for Lord of Verminion. In this one-on-one -on -one battle, each player fields an army of minions and attempt to shatter their opponent's Arcana Stones. Victory is achieved when all of an opponent's Arcana Stones have been destroyed. Select your starting minions. The briefing period has begun. This is a short pre-battle phase which allows you to prepare your initial forces. The minions to select during this briefing will be placed near summoning queue and summoned to the field which uh, battle commences. First, let's try selecting a minion from your minion hotbar. Oh, I have to click it? Wow, really? You have successfully uh, selected a minion. It will now be placed in your summoning queue. And, and uh, line B. Each minion has a summoning cost, which ranges from 10 to 30 points. As long as the total cost does not exceed the capacity of your summoning gauge, you may summon the same unit multiple times, or select any combination of minions you wish from these you have available. During the briefing period, your summoning gauge is capped at 60. You must be quick with your decisions, however, as preparation phase is a prime limit of 20 seconds. Familiarize yourself with the costs and abilities of your minions before a match, so you can quickly select the ideal starting lineup. Your view of the field is controlled by a camera. Try using your movement keys to shift your viewpoint around. Okay. The battle has begun. All the minions placed on your summoning queue during the briefing period will now appear on the field. You can now give orders to these summoned minions and commence your assault on the opponent's Arcana Stones. Note that your summoning capacity has been expanded to 240 points now. The gauge displays the current summon cost and maximum capacity can be found in the minion hotbar. 
So the minions will enter the field and are currently selected gate. The middle of the three gates. Gate B is selected by default. Left click on A to the hotbar and try selecting his minion to gate A. So we go here and we summon a dog. Fine, it won't let me hotbar. I see. They are the wrong hotbar. Once the battle is underway, summoning minions in quick succession will incur a penalty in the form of a recast timer. The length of the recast timer is determined by cost of previously summoned units. While a recast timer is in effect, subsequent attempts to summon will place the selected minion in the summoning queue. Try summoning several minions and see what you do yourself. I can't change it over to C, so... Dogs! Your summoning queue is now filled with ready minions. A minion will spawn each time one recast timer resets in order in which it was selected. A maximum of 10 minions can be placed in the summoning queue. Keep an eye on the summoning gauge. And it demands re a battlefield. And make best to use of the feature. For the next part of the tutorial, Way Word Hatchling is volunteered to service to help demonstrate minion movement. To move a minion, you must first select the unit and then select the unit's intended destination. Left click the menu selected. With a minion selected, right click the desired destination to send the unit into location. I have no idea what these controls are on gamepad. Now select the Way Word Hatchling, move it inside the yellow circle. Remember, left click to select, right click to move. Select, move. Your obedient wayward hatchling has marched to the yellow circle. Try selecting multiple minions. You can make a left click and drag a box, just like an RTS. Let's just let's just let's just speed this along. Look out! Your opponent's minions have appeared. To try for a lore for me, you must engage and defeat the enemy as the situation demands. Your minions will automatically initiate attacks against nearby enemies. So we will continue fighting until the enemy moves out of auto-attack range. Select your wayward hatchlings and have them fight. Go! You're fighting some Kidragoras. Looks like we fight in line attacks. It seems your opponent has taken advantage of the confusion to launch an assault against one of your Arcana Stones. Oh no! Should your cost stone be surrounded by nothing but enemy minions, the structure will begin taking damage and ultimately be destroyed. You will lose the battle uh, once all three of your Arcana Stones have been shattered, so be ready to deploy your minions in defense of these key positions. Move the warrior hijinks to the center of the field and defeat the minions that threaten Arcana Stone B. <coughs> Away! You're gonna die. So that's min magic. There we go. Your opponent has unleashed a pair of baby behemoths. There are four types of minions, and three of these, monster, critter, and poppet, will fight each other at the advantage or disadvantage, depending on the nature of their opponent. Main types of affinities are as follows: monsters are strong against critters, critters are strong against poppets, and poppets are strong against monsters. The final type, gadgets, are neither strong nor weak against any type. Remember these affinities and make differences between jubilant victory and crushing defeat. Baby Behemoths are a monster-type minion, and are thus strong against your quartet of critter-type hatchlings. To make matters worse, the Behemoths execute area attacks that oppose your hatchling's single target attacks. They are capable of inflicting damage against all nearby enemy units simultaneously. You still have the advantage of numbers, however, giving your minions a better chance to prevail against their otherwise superior enemies. Send your hatchling against the Behemoths, and dispatch the monsters with a valiant flurry of feathers. But I'm hurt! Is this not the healing field? No, no, going back to spawn should heal me. Send the hatchlings to defeat the Beavis. But look, two of them are nearly dead. I need to heal them. Shut up, game. Are you not going to let me heal? Fine, heck you. Here we go. Each minion is capable of executing a special attack action, which uses you to go effect, can help turn the tide of battle. To execute a special action, you must first group together four minions of the exact same variety into what is known as an action party. Each member of these action parties must also have the exact uh, maximum number of action points, a resource that accumulates over time. Select the individual minion which you uh, wish to select the action, then select the execute button. Try this now by selecting your wayward hatchings and performing the button. We click. 
Their hatchling's special action has allowed them to triumph over a foe which would otherwise have prevailed near impossible challenge. You'll notice, however, that the rigors of battle have taken a toll on your hatchling's HP. To recover a minion's HP, simply move it back to one of your gate areas. Select your over hatchlings and return them to the gate to lick their wounds. Like I was trying to do earlier. Ah, uh, tutorials, am I right? Need a hat backwards costume redeem. Maybe. Maybe. That wouldn't be hard to do, I don't think. Where, oh, think, oh, all the way back. I was in the wrong spot. You know, I've never used this feature. Usually I just let them die. The hatchlings have arrived at your gate. Gate areas function as a form of a sanctuary. While within these areas, your minions will recover HP and are safe from the attacks of enemy units. Conversely, minions inside a gate area are also unable to launch attacks of their own. So you must weigh these temporary loss of offensive strength and get some benefits of refreshing your weary troops. You should have just let them die and summon new ones. In addition to the sanctuary they provide, gates have yet another useful function, teleportation. Minions inside a gate can be used to transport to another gate instantaneously. Select your wayward hatchlings once more, and try sending them to another one of your gates. Your minions have been teleported to a selected gate. Here's a function, you can allow you to quickly send minions from one side of the field to another, and assault lightly defended enemy structures from the nearest gate. The time has come to lay waste to your opponent's arcana stones. Select your hatchlings, and move them towards their enemy arcana stone B in the side of the field. Now that feature would be useful if I could teleport to enemy gates and attack from behind. But as I can't, I've never used it since it's faster for me to just move through the field. The hatchlings have begun their attack on their Arcana Stone B. Your minions will inflict damage to the opponent's Arcana Stone when no enemy units are present inside the red circle surrounding the structure. They're chipping away at it. The health is very slowly going down because Chocobos are not very good at damaging the stones. I'm not allowed to summon any more. The condition of each Arcana Stone is displayed in the crystal's icons right on the top of the screen. Yes, I see that. Crystal takes damage, its corresponding icon will gradually be chipped away. The total remaining HP of both you and your opponent's arcosters are also displayed at the top screen, in form of HP bars, allowing you to assess the progress of the battle at a glance. Continue your assault on enemy's arcana stone by doing nothing. Gameplay! At least the music is nice. Each variety of minions is attributed with certain strengths. I'm related to their type of affinity. These strings allow a minion to be particularly effective against certain uh, structures. For example, the Mammoth 01 is naturally strong against Arcana Stones, allowing it to inflict greater damage against those structures. Watch how much more quickly the HP bar of the Arcana Stone is depleted when the Mammoths join the fray. Yeah, now that's going down. Now that's actually moving. A shield provides additional defense to Arcana Stones. Destroying this structure and your opponent's crystals will become even easier to shatter. This is where the innate strength of the Cherry Bomb comes into play. Try directing this group of Cherry Bombs against your opponent's shield. The enemy shield can be attacked by positioning your minions in a red square in front of the structure. And as that goes down... Enemy shield penetrated! The protective field surrounding the enemy shields have dissipated. Your boat shield has been destroyed. Your enemy arcana stones will now fall more quickly to your attacks. Be sure to take swift advantage of the activated shield. All structures except our arcana stones will regenerate their after a sufficient time has passed, enabling them to once again apply their effects to the battlefield. In other words, people almost never go for them. Could you allow an enemy shield to reactivate, for example, and restore its defensive properties to your opponent's arcana stones, decreasing the amount of damage your minions can inflict to their crystals? Hit your attack on your arcana stone B. Yeah, look at that. Now it's really moving. And it's done. B is shattered. This is an example of how different strategies can aid you in to efficiently destroy an Arcana Stone. Shatter all your opponent's Arcana Stones, and victory will be yours. In addition to the shields, there are other special structures which will be encountered in the field. For more detailed information, check out the relevant effective help window, or read the play guide promised at the lore of Minion Tables. Tutorial is now concluded. 
Learn, it's, learn your minions' well strengths and weaknesses, and conquer all before you. It took me many minutes to beat that. But they paid me 100 GP for that. 150. Not really. Yeah, that took 10 minutes. Wow! There's a lot more dialogue than I thought. Anyway, now for me to just use, uh, use the, the Paleolithic brain. Right. Let's not use shift to use all the buttons. Good. Okay, hatching a plan. This is usually the only Verminion map I actually do. I am not very good at this game, and this is the only one I need to do. Okay. Hildebrand Mandeville, go! I will just use Hildebrands. Yep, I sure do have things queued up. Like, this is a really nice looking arena and all that. This sure is a playboard. All right, go. Uh, two more of that. Uh, Hildebrands are very strong. I have four Hildebrands going to the middle right now. Next, I'll have two on the right. How are my Hildebrands doing? Doing okay. <coughs> Let's send some on the left as well. Why not? And if any die, I'll just make more. <coughs> A simple plan, but it's usually enough. Normally, I use a Kidragora for this. Uh, defend my crystal, please. Oh, come on. That's a lot of bombs. Both of you go for that. All these are fine. Middle crystal is going down. Enemy mammoths are moving around, but that's okay. Keep defending that crystal. All mine are fine. Might lose a hold around here. Uh, are we doing good? We're doing it. Okay, that one's summoned in the middle. We're good. Let's reinforce this. Over here on the left. New Mandeville. Ready to go. Oh, they are breaking me. Is there something here? Power of deduction. Attack and defense. Up. Yeah, they are breaking my crystal, but that's fine. Let's send one of you down to defend. Get ready to summon a third Mandeville. Why not? Really not making any progress on the left crystal, but we're doing okay. Definitely lost some Mandevilles. That's fine. We can always just have more. There's always more Mandevilles, I hope. Oh, many of my Mandevilles died, I see. That's a problem. Let's go and finish this off. I'm actually losing. Yeah, the Kidragoras work a lot better for this plan. But I don't have that. Because that requires botany to gather, and uh, people know it's good for this. So it just works. Let's finish off the stone, then go off uh, to the left. If I lose the stone, that's fine. How's right stone doing? Doing fine. Broke that. Get over here. This sure is an A move strategy. Yeah, they didn't like that. Okay, so how about like two of you go? Just a block. They slip around me. 
Nope. Okay. We're fine. Did I get a new Hildebrand yet? Nope. They're all just leaving. You go and defend. How dare? The eternal defense. I will get these things done eventually. Get in there. I've actually lost a lot more crystals than I thought. Okay, these guys can go over here now. You can still stay guarding. You can go down to defend. Okay. As long as I don't lose any crystals, this will still be a fine first level. I took a lot of damage, though. Having the right minion makes a huge difference. And I do not have the right minion. Other brand moves fast, at least. I'll give him that. Okay, they're just chipping away. Are you all in there? You're not in there, are you? They have a lot of cherry bombs. I probably should have used cherry bombs, too. Did all my guys die fighting the crystal? That's hilarious. That's hilarious to me. Wow. Wow, are you kidding me? Ah, well. Kill the crystal. I guess I must have sent a wave to defend, and I must have died trying to defend it. Ah, well. Not much longer now. Not much longer now. This goes a lot faster if you have the right minion. In fact, I might leave and go get that minion just so I can show it. Come on. Almost win. Just go. Just go. We win. Easy. Complete Lord is almost complete. Okay, so we get, like, a pittance for beating this. And we won't get that pittance again. But. But. This is why you want to buy a Kidragora minion. You know what? I have the gill. I'm going to go and do it. I'm going to go and get a Kidragora minion real quick. Uh. Gridania seems like a good place. I'll show you why. I'll show you why. The best way to gain MGP is by doing gates every single time they come up. After that, grind, like doing things for a challenge log is a very good way to get MGP. It would have been faster if I would have walked instead of using the 8th right. And after you've expended a challenge log, then you're down to just grinding on a couple of mini games. If you have a well-raised Chocobo, the Chocobo is a good way to do it, but raising the Chocobo and racing up, like, a lineage of very powerful, very fast Chocobo to be able to just, like, win races? That takes time and effort and actual gill. It requires an investment of MGP in order to be able to reliably farm MGP. So usually people who have Chocobos will win the Chocobo races, and it makes it very hard for people to, like, get into Chocobo racing. That said, I don't think I know anybody in this game who just doesn't have a Chocobo to race at the Gold Saucer if they feel like it. But nobody wants to race against you if you have an all-powerful, godly Chocobo. Alright, where am I going again? Right, I wanted to get a Kidragora minion. Let's see if it's worth the price. The other way to get this is Botany. You have to be a level 50 Botanist to be able to get these. And then you can get them no-stop. Yeah, these are cheap. 
So if you're on a free-to-play account, you will have to be a level 50 botanist to be able to get this. Let's read our new minion. Kitragora. One must take care when harvesting mandragoras. For if the roots are disturbed, they will emit a high-pitched scream, powerful enough to shatter glass even a mom away. White, li while little is known about them, what is known tends to be disturbing. The is a naturalist. Summon your Kitragora minion. Even in space, everyone can hear this, uh, so, uh yeah, this secretion scream. Seed kit, that's the word. Not secretion. It's a plant being, so it's a seed kit. Yeah, that's that's a Orzea for you. Hey, we're back to the gold saucer. I have to edit my Verbinion deck. And yes, you can beat the the Verbinion challenge with just the, the Hildebrand things like I just showed. But but there are also guides. There are also guides that like, like tell you what minions you need and what you have to be able to do. One of them I think requires you to beat like I think one of them requires you to beat the Binding Coil in order to get a certain special healing minion to be able to survive against a, a particular boss. I might go through the rest of her minion one day. But for the sake of just going to the Gold Saucer to be able to get some MGP real quick. Sure. Sure, I can do this. Let's add my Verminion board too. Can't forget that. Okay, the Kedragora is here. They're the best one. They are... Critter. They can go here. So Chewie can go on the bar, but Chewie can be like over here. Chewie can be there. That's fine. We don't want our dog to fight. You can also battle other players, but no! Uh, let's see. All I have to do is hatching a plant. Yes, it's the same one again. But look how much faster it goes this time. <coughs> My Kedragora is one. You can just load it up like that. I'm going to send four Kedragoras after every point. With more after the final point. So we'll start with B, then move over to C. All we need are Kedragoras. Go! Kedragoras are cheap. They do loads of damage. You can swarm enemies with them. They're slow as sin. That's their downside. They're also one of the earliest minions of the game. Power creep does tend to happen in this game. Power creep does tend to happen. Like, the latest and greatest minions are usually whatever just came off the Mog Station. They're usually really powerful for a while for people who want to be competitive for minion players. I don't know any competitive for minion players. Just do your special. Almost got it. Yeah, look at the difference in speed here. Like, and I'm also, like, barely doing any strategy at all. They're just ripping and tearing these crystals apart. There's gotta be one guy. There's probably, like, there's probably, like, 20 people spread around all the data centers. Like, there's thousands of people playing this game. There's thousands of people playing this game. Look, we win. That took like, what, a minute and a half? Like, minimal input? And we got no MGP for that win, but... But... But, that counts. That counts for a challenge log. That counts for a challenge log. Character... Uh, where is it? Duty? It should be in logs. Challenge log. Gold saucer. Her minion. 
We've just played Verminion for a third time. We got 10,000 MGP for that. You can do that in addition to presenting yourself for the other thing. And you'll get 12,000 if you do it two more times. Is that worth, like, I don't know, 10 minutes in a week? Getting, like, 27,000 MGP? Out to you. Arguably, it's worth more time and effort to be able to do a fashion report. That will get you 60,000 a week really easy. But, like, for 500 gil for having this minion that'll just destroy that one map over and over again? That's easy MGP, my friend. If you're really farming for MGP and you want to buy all the things, just uh, just do it. It's not hard. So you're just doing it because it's not hard. Out all in. Uh, let's see. Let's chop a tree. I've done this before, I'm sure. Nope, not there. Nope. How about near the top? Okay, fine. Sure. More. Okay, it's near the top again. Oh, well, three near hits is good. Good enough for me. Uh, more. Okay, fine. Cool. Good. That's a big jump in pay out there. Okay, it's near our top again. Yeah! That's not a big enough jump for me. I'm going to stop my payout here. Oh, there's a there's a gate going on. Okay, uh 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 What gate is it this time? What gate is it this time? Come on! You enjoy the hammer game. I'll go and take a look at it in a sec. Oh, the one with uh, the Crystal Tower Striker? I'll take a look at that. Uh, what's going on? Greetings, sir. If you wish to participate in Leap of Faith. I... No. You mean in real life. Ah, oh, the one where, where the, the pegs come up and you have to rapidly hammer them down. Yeah, that's a fun one. Yeah, we'll cover Kerr real quick, too. Why not? Nice. Solid timing there. But the payout is very small for that one because the game is very quick and easy. Oh, uh, the Dingbo one. Oh, that is the Crystal Tower Striker, then. I think that's over here. I think that's over here. Yeah, these things. Get yourself a nice little hammer. You have a thing. Gotta try and fill it as the bar is full. Nope, that was a weak hit. Lancing blow. But even then, we still made a small profit. And we completed the challenge log entry. There we go. Hit that cactar all the way to the top. Rung the bell. Meanwhile, this guy's just making bank over here. Never gets off that machine. Here's why I think of your 20 bell shifts, Taskmaster. Let out that aggression. Good for you. A lot of the minigames are at the saucer are basically just like a quick little like press the button. Do a little bit of timing. Easy peasy. Monster toss. I think I've done these before. Ah, bad throw.
Bad throw. I am no good at this. And the goal moves, too. It's the same level of timing. But I'm, I'm just bad at basketball, I guess. Oh, you have to, like, throw per time, I see. That's his goal. Either way... Ah... Uh, I'm not very good at it. I'm not very good at it. There's also Mahjong! Okay, you know what? You know what? Legitimately? I have never played Mahjong. I have never... Never played Mahjong. I played single player Mahjong. I played Mahjong Solitaire. That's all fine and well and good. Matching tiles, removing the reward, that's fun. Everybody played that back on, uh, like, old Windows computers instead of doing stuff in computer class. Uh, novice Mahjong table. Uh, would you like to challenge Spriggan, Moogle, and Mendragora to a game? Sure. Han, but, uh... Uh, um. Uh. I don't. Uh. 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 They, they say I should discard this. They should discard your green dragon. Pardon? You know, I'm just gonna follow the hints. I don't know what I'm doing. Discard the blank one. I, I, I really have no idea what I'm doing. Nothing is a car a gee stuck for me either. Nothing in a car gee stuck for you. I see. Um. It says I should pass. And discard th this one. The dots. Okay. You know what? I'm just gonna go with what this thing says. I have no idea what's going on. I have not the slightest. Get rid get rid of the two. Uh ch chai? No, pass. Okay, fine. Uh uh right uh, right chi? Did, so I hit the Like that? I, I don't know what this is! Not even... I, I, I can't even pretend I understand. R Ron? What? I don't... Uh... Uh... I, uh, 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 okay? So, so what? I, I kicked a Mandragora's butt a little bit? Uh, I'm not even playing this game. I'm just doing what the tutorial's telling me to do. I, uh, I wish I understood this. I really don't. Like, these... I know I've read the tutorial for this once. It's all gone. None of it's there. There's nothing. There's nothing. I'm just I'm just reading this thing in the bottom right. I'm glad that they have a thing that just says do this. But I feel like like there is no way I could actually legitimately play this game. I've been so intimidated by this, I never even talked to the NPC. Like, after unlocking the quest? But it's... here. I have... uh... Just... Sure. So, uh, I hope you guys are having a good time. I'm... Pushing buttons, I guess. What is that symbol? This one? Yeah, that's... okay. I feel like I'm cheating at cards while I'm using the guide.
That's a lot of tiles. I guess you want to get rid of dragons immediately because they're just not worth a lot or something? Ooh. Ooh, uh... That's a lot of points. Um... Discard this one? Uh, the, the nine? The, the many dots. Wait, that's the one that has a lot of dots. All the dots need to go. Okay. Get rid of the nine? Which one? The answer is yes. Yeah, I, 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 I don't, I don't even know. This is just not sticking in the least. Uh... Sumo? Does, does that beat me up? Yeah, you, you drained my points. Good for you. You drained points from everybody. Good job, I guess. I I don't know. I, uh, you know, I'll just keep following the guide. I'll keep following the guide. I have faith in the guide. The guide will probably make me lose, but the guide will make more intelligent deso uh, decisions for me than what I am capable of doing. Uh... That looking one. Get rid of the empty one. Why is it grayed out? Does it not give me points because I played it twice in a row or something? I guess the game wants me, like, I could call something and, like, get some points there, but the game's, like, trying to have me build up and, like, Get more points by being greedier. I guess that's the goal and the plan. Uh, yeah, some people might have auto declare winning hand on, which is means like I've heard people complain that like they get really frustrated that someone like rushes through games by just like constantly calling points every single time they come up. So maybe that is a thing about the settings. Yeah, pawn might be worth like nothing. Chai? Right Chai? Uh, Ruchi. And then get rid of the two dots. Got it. You got a right eye? You got a run? I guess th that's a run for my money? Uh, well, I think Mandragore is gonna win. How long does the game of this go, actually? I've never. I would... Uh, uh, okay. Like, this is very... Like, like, I think this is neat to look at. This seems like something that, like, a younger me would have watched, like... A relative of mine play. Uh... This one? Mostly this is just me trying to match, like, colors of what I see on the cards and everything. Uh, let's see, this one? This is, like, a nice game that, like, 
a lot of people would have a uh pawn pawn do i have those i do discard the eight okay Any of my east winds? Yep, okay. Alright. That's another run. Moogle called run. We all lose points to Moogle. No, only Spriggan loses. Okay. There's my tiles again. Alright, this is... It's neat. I wish I knew more. I wish, like, I wish my brain was capable of learning this. Like, this is neat. Chai? What's wrong with the, what's wrong with the two? What, what did I do? Well, none of these are giving any points. Do I just have a really bad hand right now? I don't even know. The game is playing itself. I'm, I'm just, I'm watching and interacting. This is, uh... Wait, is this when I played the card that I just drew? Is that what that means? Discard the dots. Okay. I do like my character's reactions in the bottom right to all this going on. Still more points for Moogle. I really gotta get some points away from the Mandragora, though. That's where they all are. Does it go until everybody's knocked out of points? Oh no, this is gonna take a while then. Ah. Huh. Yeah, that's great because I just drew that. Okay, I see. Okay. Why am I keeping everything in my hand? What's the point? Oh, Raichai. Why did you turn mine red? Uh, Ron? Uh, why did I... I don't... I don't understand how I took from Spriggan this time and not... I would like to step away from the table now. I am unable to step away from the table. I am trapped. I am trapped in Mahjong! Are they draining for me? Uh. There's there is no freedom. There is no freedom. I can't sim like. I wish I could simply make my character get up from the table and be like, I don't get it. I like that I have cactus in my hand now. That's nice. 
I like the art on the tiles. I don't... Yeah, this... This is beyond me. Did I activate your trap card or something? What would this do? I wonder why it's marked. Would it make somebody else win? Yeah, I'm in a bad position. Oh no, I got rid of all my little cactar fellas. Well, it's okay. I have plenty more bamboo. Oh no! We're just feeding Mandragora more! That doesn't feel good. I wonder what the equivalent of drawing Exodia in this is. Or, or a shiny foil Charizard. Eh. With all these wins that we're playing, I'm surprised that we haven't made a tornado. Leap of Faith is now underway again? Another Leap of Faith? Are you kidding me? Ugh. Oh, well, I'm trapped in Mahjong anyway. Pawn? Good for you. Yeah, I, I am learning nothing by taking the guide. The guy is just playing the game for me. At this point, like... I really just need to, like, sit down and read, I guess. I feel like it might be too much. Is this what it's like for some of my friends? Like, when they watch me play this game, I try to explain what's going on, and they just have zero comprehension? Yeah, I feel like that, yeah. I think I get it now. I think I know how they feel. Absolutely nothing stuck. What number are you telling me to discard there? This one? What's the difference between the five and the red five? Sumo. But I liked my card. All right, well... I, I want to be done. Okay, I can be done. That, uh... Wow. And that didn't even count as a match, did it? Because you have to, like, stay for the entire match. You know, it count for player matches anyway. That's... I, uh... I'm glad that they had fun putting it in there. What they wanted to put in there was Blackjack. Blackjack I understand the rules of. Blackjack I would have been able to play. But Blackjack is actually uh, gambling. And then the game would not be able to get away with having that be in the game in certain countries. And wanting it to be an, an international game, they're having a hard time finding new things to put in here that are like game quartery enough without necessarily being like a slot machine, it could be constituted as gambling. Because Gold Saucer needs to be portrayed as a fun center, not a casino. Uh, let's see. What emotes did you post there? Those are the emotes. I've not seen those. Yeah, I... Oh, co absolute confusion. Yeah, it's... Akagi is, um... It must be an acquired taste.
Uh, now finally, I did say I was going to do some Chocobo racing. Let's go and take a look at it. I think I did the tutorial for it previously, but I just never got... Wait a minute. Uh, do I have papers? Do I... I feel like I have a contract somewhere. Hold on. I search... Chocobo? I should have, like, a, a breeding permit? No. No, I don't. Okay. Uh, well, let's go to the Chocobo Square and get it registered then. I think I had papers. Akagi is a lot of... Wow, he did a, a, a ballsy thing, apparently. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um... Uh... Greetings, sir. May I introduce you in the race? Excellent. Now you have an understanding of fundamentals, you can begin competing in sanctioned races. As you talk about gains experience, you grow stronger, the rating will increase, and permit to enter a race into higher classes. Let's enter a race! As you'll observe, races are divided into different classes. What classes you can enter, which is currently 11, in case you aren't aware. Uh, the Maiden class is open only to the most inexperienced competitors. As such, you and Chocobo will quickly outgrow it. As your Chocobo's rating increases, you will find yourself competing against far more experienced jockeys and races with even stricter rules and regulations. That said, the rewards you can receive are much more and make up for the increase in difficulty. Train your Chocobo well, and you may be a spinner's pool, but ever be in your favor. You can now register at any time by using the Duty Finder. We can also talk to the person at the front, but they're here! We can go to the Gold Saucer Battle Hall to play cards. We can play Dome and Majog against players. We can play Lord of Verminion against players. People asked for this for a while. Because, like, people were only able to queue for Chocobo races in this room. Or for Verminion matches in this room. But we can also queue for Chocobo races. Uh, let's go for... People like the Sigoli Desert because the race is short. Let's go for Costa del Sol. How long of a wait do I got? It doesn't say. <coughs> what is my Chocobo anyway? I completely forget. We have never used it. We have Yellow Friend. Yellow Friend sure is a starting Chocobo with a pure, purely average pedigree. And with a color of yellow. Wearing my Barding of Light. Let's go. I'm the only player. No other player is doing basic starting Chocobo races right now. Which is good. I'd rather not play against more players if at all possible. Chocobo races. Maiden class. Moogle's Gift Mounts presents Costa del Sol. Sand, thousand six hundred yolms, fair, midday. I would have preferred to start on the left. Let's move over to the left. Okay, this box has something good in it. I want this box. Okay, sprint shoes. Let's just go. All right, let's uh. Lay off the forward button for a little bit. Yeah, they can have all that. This is a grab -a ball. It doesn't do anything yet, but if somebody passes me... I'll have to jump to get this box. I'll get a Bacchus water if I get this. Uh, unless I have a full inventory, in which case I won't grab it. But now nobody can use that Bacchus water against me. Sixty percent. Yeah, I got. I got to lay off on the steam. Using too much gas. Don't want to burn out. I'm not even halfway through the race yet. Ah, darn it! I won whatever that was.
Yeah, they sure are having the time back there. Get a little bit of steam. I would rather not have Briar Caltrops on me. You know what? You know what? You guys can have it. You guys can have the Briar Caltrops. This ended Marcus Wine? Uh, I mean, they're also Chocobos. They're Chocobos. I don't think Chocobos drink wine. What that will do to you is, um, if somebody, it makes a person ahead of you in the race, uh, frenzied, which makes them just a full, full tilt run forward. You can't stop. Oh, that's a grab ball, but didn't do anything because nobody's ahead of me. Anyway, we're at the end of the race, so I'm just going to hold forward and get all this out. And because I'm in the starting tier of races, uh, nobody can catch me. Easy win. Easy win with the starter Chocobo. Let's see, my competitors' names were Exit Left, Indigo Swinge, Honey Bucket, uh, Salva uh, Salvation, Wow. Without Doubt, Noggy Love, and Yesterday. The person who's at the top gets the most pay and money, but someone else randomly gets a good amount of uh, pay and money as a bonus. My Chocobo leveled up. I got tons of challenge log entries done. I got a very small amount of MGP for that. And my Chocobo is kind of slow. I have a pretty good Chocobo on my main character. But, uh... This one, this one ain't great. Uh, one thing for my Chocobo I can look at is... Let's see. It does not have an ability right now. It might acquire one eventually. If my Chocobo were to ever breed, it would get a second ability. But, uh, I can also get a race ability for my Chocobo right now. I can buy these training manuals. One of them is dressage, or dressing. This will let my Chocobo get experience faster. It costs a couple of MGP, but you know what? I had really good luck with it in my uh, mini Cagpot today. Let's use dressage. This won't help me win races, but this will help my Chocobo level up so I can be winning races later. This makes a pretty significant difference. Oh, uh, let's see. Now, what else do I need to teach this? Uh, what did you say? Hold on. Now that you've learned how to control your Chocobo during a race, it's only appropriate that you learn how to, you might prepare him for his next. Where are the Chocobo... Where are the Matterville Gold Sauce? We provide a number of services, such as specialized training and ability instructions, and though we do not charge cheese reserves, they do require the jockeys furnish them with the requisite materials. These services may seem like a luxury at the time, but when your Chocobo's rating increases and seek higher classes, you will come to understand the necessity of seeking every available advantage. Yeah, these races do get pretty hard. Uh, let's teach race abilities. You wish to teach your yellow friends uh, an ability, sir? That you would be so kind as to provide the requisite manual. Yep. On. I can say with confidence that your race jockey book responded well to dresses three training. Pray judge yourself, sir. Not all these were there in the beginning. But as the years went by, they gave more and more powerful abilities on those tomes. There are still yet some abilities that you can only get through breeding. I think. Some might be on there. I could be wrong. It's been a while since the guys were written and since I last raced. Oh, uh, let's see. What time is it? It's getting pretty late. I spent some time at the Gold Saucer. I did Hildebrand. I did the Rising. I think that's pretty good. But before I forget, I want to pick up Monk. I need Monk ready for the next expansion. And Monk doesn't have that big of a great big fancy do. I'll probably get to like level 15 before I finish the stream. How much room do I have in my armory chest? I have a lot of spears. I have a lot of fishing rods. Okay, let's get rid of... Let's get rid of some of these lances. Yeah, we don't need all these. Not anymore. 
Get him out of the inventory, will help. Get rid of some of the older axes too, why not? There we go. That's cleaned up a little bit. Now let's go to the Pugilist Guild. Are you? Hold on. Greetings and welcome to the Pugilist Guild. We Pugilists are specialists in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Through rigorous training, we forge devastating weapons of our fists and feet we might employ to great effect in battle. There is no better place in all the realm to train the discipline than here. If you would walk the path of a pugilist, I highly recommend you add your name to our role. What say you, friend? Join? Sure. A decision you will not regret. But before we proceed to the paperwork, it is essential that you know something of the guild's storied past. Since time immemorable, man has used whatever has been at his disposal to sell disputes. In the beginning, this meant fighting with his fists. Such hand-to-hand -hand combat extended in various forms throughout the Orsia, each evolving independently of one another. The origin of pugilism as we know it, however, it had to trace back to staging bare-handed bouts in the Colosseum. These contests attacked fighters as far and wide, bringing the myriad styles clashing together in the blood sands. Amidst this chaotic intermingling of styles, there was a pugilist of singular strength and skill. This woman made her life's mission to master every form she encountered, that she might refine her art. Among her song-worthy exploits, we pugilists remember her as participation and gladiator tournaments most fondly. Back when bare-handed fighting was still seen as a pastime for peasants, she took on fully armed and armored gladiators and effortlessly bested a lot of them. Word of her feet spread across the realm like wildfire, of course. Elda swiftly transformed into a center of pugilism, with people flocking from all over the realm to train under this master among masters. What about her fist? What? You, you said they applauded her feet. No, no, no. Feet. Feet, as in like a feat of strength, not just... But did they applaud her feet? Yes. A woman's name was Colina, and, and uh, to her name, the Pugilist Guild owes its existence. The art practiced here is based on an all-encompassing style. It is training hall as modeled upon the one which she once built. And there it is, a brief history of our guild. I've told you this tale a thousand times, because it never fails. I found the flames of my fire-eating spirit. Now then, before we can proceed with your enrollment, you must first obtain the Guildmaster's approval. Let me know when you're ready to meet him. Sure. So, are you ready to present yourself to the Guildmaster's inspection? Where are the Pugilist? Dr. Ruda wishes to reaffirm your desire to join the Pugilist Guild, and we'll get the Weathered Hora. Master Albon is among the greatest Pugilists of our time. For long years, the man has ruled the Blood Sands as Hol Holy Fist, though he has since retired in favor of training aspiring fighters. You'll find him overseeing the charges yonder. Go now and show him the fighting spirit that burns within you. I'm ready to go back to level 1. Heh <laughs> heh, fast time like this you get your ass in here. Well, what did make the dancer have to say about my proposition? What? Hi. Eh? You're not my own boy. There's no dancer that ever was. I'm not doing anything indecent, I swear to God. Uh, I, I came here to punch. What? You hear that roll? Oh, ho, oh, oh, well, why don't you say so sooner? In my capacity as Guildmaster, I will give you a primer on the art of hand to hand combat. Now, unless you already know this, we'll be pugilists to spot with our fists and feet. At least don't deal as much damage as a blade, it hardly matters when you can land several blows for each swing of the sword. What we lack in destructive force, we'll more make up with speed and cutting. On any guidance, not only will you master striking techniques, also learn to stick them together and deliver endless flurry of blows. Once you see such fierce combinations, the pugilist can realize his potential. Yeah! Oh, you're fast. <sighs> okay. That's spent from all this talking. I speak more, son. Give me a chance to catch my breath. Where was I? Ah, right. Join the guild. Before I do so, I must warn you that the path to the pugilist is long and arduous. Did you believe you got what it takes to go the distance? Be honest with yourself now. Can you go the distance? I can. Yes, you have the fighting spirit. I can see it in your eyes. I have no reason to deny your place in the halls. What are the gifts, son? Help you out of the way. I have some names you're hunting long. Boards you might own your skill against. As long as it make button pugils you view, here's your fair one pair of horror. They're a tad old and rusty, but I also have to make you look meaner, I reckon. Now, I have a mind to assign you your first lesson. 
Arm yourself with your weapons. And let me know when you're ready to begin. And here we go. Pugilist unlocked. Now for the time-honored tradition of becoming naked. Behold, nothing. It takes a while for it to load. You know what? Let's slap something on before it has a chance to not load it. All right. We'll go over to the gear set list. We'll register a new one. Uh, we'll move it up. Uh, move set up. Yeah, I'm just wearing my weathered set right now. Apparently it deems that that is the most appropriate thing for me to wear. I got my Alamegan earrings. I can whip out my fists. I can do a nice, valiant V-pose. And B-stats. Ah, I like the style of the pugilist. It's pretty good. I'm a peasant. My first horror. Emma wishes to teach you your first lesson. Oh, can ever been a pugilist, so? Now the learning can commence. Well, first, let's say I want you to test your fledgling skills against the vermin of Thadlin. Get out there and put down three mammoths, three hornets, and three shrews. Return here when the deed's done. Now, that goes without saying, but I expect you to fight using your horror I just gave you. It got to now if you screw it to pieces with a spear, I try them with the spell, see? Ah, it's fine day to be watching my pugils and they're traded. Alright, let's go punch some stuff. Get rid. Don't need the play guide. No, get that way. Unlock the bar. Go away. Leave. Me. Be. Okay. I have one button, and I'm going to use this one button to my heart's content. I can apply glamour over these weathered slops if I so desire. Yeah, let's slap this on. I don't believe I have a hat right now. Oh, I do. I glamoured my... I glamoured my feather. Oh, well. Let's punch things as uh, the, the Power Ranger outfit. The, the Kamen Rider outfit. You know, I'm still reading your message about Bacchus wine. I'm still reading that. It's occurring to me, like, can horses drink wine? Would ill befall them? At the point in our pugilism journey where we only have one button, so we're just going to punch the tar out of everything. Going through the paces. Showing complete. We yet need more hornets. Okay, I need a mount. I need a mount for a pugilist. Let's see. Let's go with... I just got the phoenix. We'll set the phoenix here. Okay. Some animals unintentionally get drunk on fruit. Ah, because they're like overripe and they, they marinate themselves. Okay, we have two punches now. Now I can flash and punch. Uh, let's see, that's in Western Thadalyn. This is still in Central Thadalyn. Spineless Basin. The Shrews. Is that down here? Oh, these are a little bit high, but you know what? I'll be fine. I have my Chocobo with me. Medley will keep me safe. Oh, there's a fate here. Uh, I don't want to participate in it. Is that all? 
You can all accept the next class quest. Oh, I'm not done yet. I'm still killing out here. Okay, that's enough Smirkins. Uh, I still need the central, uh, the spineless basin shrews. Uh, we got the black brush station. Ore bonds. Okay, those are inside that tunnel. Those are in western. Those are in western. Those are in western. Oh, wait, no, they're not. Horses are... Cows can... No. Okay, they're not, like... They're not ruminescent. Okay. Okay, you're, it looks like you're looking it up now. I'm glad that I've also piqued your curiosity on that. Let me know when you have the datas. Where is the spineless basin? Oh, here we are. I have a third combo already. Look at this! How long did it take for a lot of other classes to get this? Mungus getting their third combo and we're level like six! It's not a particularly devastating combo, but it works. Okay, what else we got? Uh, Western, 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 Central. The Clutch. Can I fight Fs? I probably can. I'm, I'm strong. How about my armor? I can actually have armor to wear. No, but I want this, uh, I want this still on. But the Power Ranger suit overrides everything because it's a modified chest. Uh, where are these Efts? I knew the frogs were here. Apparently there's Fs here too. Oh, I see. There's ants over here. Apparently horses metabolize alcohol very quickly. I Okay, you know what? That makes sense. So at that point, there's no point in it giving them wine. You might as well just give them water. But these are horse birds we're talking about. Yes, so they probably have bird biology as opposed to horse biology. Oh, here they are. Okay, so Old Monk used to have positionals on every single one of their attacks. Pugilist will become Monk. That's why I'm just, I'm just using the word Monk. Don't worry about it. So these two attacks used to be good against the rear, and then this attack was good against the flank. So you used to have to know that stuff, like, immediately. New Monk only has positionals on their end combo things, so only Snap Punch has a position on it. So a lot of the hate that was directed towards uh, Monk was the sheer number of positionals it had. Those are gone now. But people have, still have that stigma of like, Monk just doesn't feel good. And I'm just like, have you tried it? Yeah, back in the Realm Report. Yeah, but it's changed since then. Have you tried it lately? Who knows, you might love it. But no, Monk starts all the way back at level 1. They'd rather play the newest, flashiest DPS that started at like, you know, Samurai at level 50, or Reaper starts at level, what, 70? 80? It starts up there. I think it starts at 70. So unless you began the game as a monk, not a lot of people want to go back and do the work. Me? I just like the job. Like, already, this is getting more buttons and more things to do than Dragoon.
And I barely even broke out the class quest yet. The difference is that Monk will not change a lot as it evolves. It gets its core really, really quickly. But uh, it doesn't change a lot as it goes along. Which is fine. If you have a good foundation, why change it, right? It'd be like asking Mario to add a, a level-up system to a 2D Mario game. I feel like that mistake has been made at least once. Hey, you're back! And not the worst for exertion. Youthful vigor is truly a blessed thing. If you want to become strong, you mustn't neglect your training. Indeed, the pugilist is only as good as the number of strikes he's dealt. So get out there, Bond, and let your fish fly. And when the time is right, I'll teach you something new. There's no time for the potential uh, to a youth. I look forward to seeing you coming to your own. <laughs> Harder than rock. Guildmaster Hammond wishes you to learn the basics of combinations. You've been training hard, Bond. I can tell my fat knightness in your steps, and the strength of your fists. I reckon you're ready for our next lesson. Before we begin, I have some wardens up in order. For this, I've scoured some gill across old die. Why don't you run around the city and pick it all up? Now, it's my money you're out there lying out there, so why don't you go about like it is in the mountain and band on your heels? In other words, I want you to sprint. Of course, you can't go on sprinting indefinitely. Your body needs a rest awfully between each burst. It's not elementary, but I'm telling you this demonstration point. As beautiful as it's essential to learn to play should fight, else your uh, lap will get worn out. When that happens, the fight's as good as over. So you must be sorry if you're betting on yourself. So, what I was supposed to do back in the day is all these attacks used to cost uh, TP. And when you use sprint, the duration of sprint was based on the amount of TP that you had when you used it. This quest was supposed to teach the importance of that. Now the quest is teaching, um, you can't just sprint forever. I'm not actually timed, and I don't actually remember where this skill is. But it has to be within the orange squares, right? So I'm looking for a shiny bit and bobble to pick up. I really hope the itinerant moogle isn't over top of it. Uh, there sure is all sorts of shiny, like, carbuncles and minions and such. Maybe having the map open will help me out. It's probably all the way back in the guild hall. Just my luck, right? I spread it outside, and where was it? It was all the way back in. Yep, there it is. We got some faded guild coins. I have to find a bunch. Okay, so my goal is I'm going to sprint down over here to the left. Get this loose change that's on the ground. Like, this quest would be very easily sabotaged. Like, anybody could just walk around and pick up these couple of gill lying on the ground. Also, what's to say that I don't just, like, use my own money? I mean, maybe he would mark the money, but, like, you know. This feels like I'm picking up, like... Random quarters all over some city. Or it's like you wouldn't actually do anymore. Like people. I don't think people leave just like quarters. Or maybe I'm picking up the equivalent of pennies. I do on occasion still find a penny just in the streets. Lucky penny. Just make sure you clean it. Handle it with your coin gloves. Uh, there's some. Like, there's a waitress right there. You guys doing push-ups on a table? 
Well done, good for you. Your legs aren't even on the ground. You're very strong. More faded money behind the dancing girls. Which haven't loaded in. Yep. There's what re they really want to make sure that you see those dancing girls. Let's see. Faded Gill. Rent and faded beyond recognition. Even the most desperate of beggars will uh, pause before accepting this coin. <laughs> At that point, it's not even a gill. That's my money line out there, son. I thank you to hurry up and pick it all up before some vulture swoops on it. 500 gill? Okay, right, that's a good week's worth of... Eh, yeah. I mean, well done, man. Now you all warmed up. I can see your lesson. A trial, to be precise. Oh, you! Add yourself to Scorpio Crossing and Western Thadalyn. If you have to find four large stones, the trial stones are called, I want you to deal with each of those stones and saw a Buchai combo. The impact will arouse the Earth's rights and sleep within. You must then defeat. If you find yourself hard pressed, there's no shame in running away. You're still there on the ropes, after all. Once you got the wind back in, you hurl yourself in the fray again. Remember this. Sharks bring down opponents, but you have footwork that keeps you standing. Now, off you go, Bart, and good luck. Okay, now we'll travel through Western Thadalyn. Where, all, where most of my other marks are. I think there's one in Eastern. Let's drink more milk. I didn't want the stream to have zero combat. I didn't want the stream to have zero combat. Well, this might not be the most, like thrilling combat. I need to at least get Monk up high enough to be able to do roulettes. Even the most basic of roulettes, like a leveling or a guild test. That way I can have, like, something I do as a pre-stream kind of activity. Yep, Cactars. Is Boochine the first one? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so even if I have other hits, I just need to use Boochine. On the rocks. Should be three. Yep, there we go. Oh, it's f it was four. Oh, we got it anyway. We're good. Uh, Hammer Leia. Oh, but the rocks are here. Yeah, just beat the rocks. Just beat the rocks. Got second wind. We're familiar with second wind. Never wrong having a heal. Originally it was Pugilist that had the skill. Now it's just every melee. Use boot shine on the stones. Got it. Okay, you will notice that there is a cycling buff. Monk's combinations are loose. And when I get more attacks, you'll see what I mean by that. Going through the sequence changes your form. And usually that form will unlock the different tiers. Ultimately, they don't matter. The names of them doesn't really matter. As far as I'm concerned, it's 1, 2, and 3. And right now, that's all we have. 1, 2, and 3. You'll notice that 1 is always available, but I can't even try to hit 2 and 3 unless I've done a 1. So there's much less risk of you accidentally pushing your buttons out of order. Uh, let's see, what else can I get done in this region? Hammerlea, Hammerlea, Hammerlea. Yeah, let's go to Hammerlea. And then 2 in Horizon's Edge. Yeah, we can wipe this first hunting log right off the map. Hunting logs are good loads of experience. Plenty of them here. I don't have an area attack yet. We'll see how long it takes for me to get it compared to, like, you know, Dragoon. Maybe that's not a fair comparison to make, but you know what? Like, it's another melee job. I'm fighting one extra. Oh, well. Make 
Sure are drinking for that black gold. Uh, where is my target? Was that all I needed in Hammerlea? No, I need the goblins. The goblins are right over here. Sorry, friend. Your name's in the book. I'd like to think that these guys are, like, in on it. Like, maybe they got a deal with Master Hammond. Take a couple stabs, like, have a nice, like, foul. Like, they must be a rowdy bunch. Good experience. Uh, the Sand Toads. Oh, those must be down below. No, these are the wells. But this is still right. This is still correct. Four of these suckers, huh? Well, it's good experience. You don't really have a lot of choices at this level. It works, it works. This should be the last one I need. Yep. Now we'll go to Horizon's Edge and wrap that up. We'll head on back to Master Holy Fist. I thought that Horizon's Edge was down in the water. Person with a nice uh, Gweaver, or not Gweaver? They had a they had a hawk. Seems like they were also hunting the same things. Unusual. Oh, good! Now I get a stun. All right, so this is important for me. You will never be able to get your positional office of melee unless the enemy does like a thing like that. I accidentally took it off my bar. Or use a stun to be able to lock them in place. Much more important for Monk. There we go. We'll leave Medley to finish that one off. Medley does not do very much damage. All right, I'm still in a. All right, I'm still in a good position here. I could take out these bombs. Yeah, levels going up. I already got ten levels. Yeah, the first fifty are no problem. Monk also used to have this mechanic called Greased Lightning. The more times you went through your rotation like this, the more and more stacks of Greased Lightning you would build up. And every stack would increase your damage and your attack speed by 10%. I believe that's just a passive now. It's just always on. It's not like nearly as high of a bonus, but it's just always on. Let me double check that. Look at my traits. Yeah, I have Greased Lightning 1 right now. It used to be that you'd have to cycle through your rotation over and over and over again in order to build that up, and then you would be concerned about keeping your stacks. So if the fight ever had a brief period of time where the boss jumped out of the arena, a monk was in danger of losing their stacks and resetting their damage. 
It felt really bad. That's not so much of a worry anymore, now that's just a trait. I guess Monk was hard to balance around. Anything else to weather saddle in before I continue? Uh, let's see. The ACNs, the Sismo. Oh yeah, the Turtles. Western, Western, Western. Eastern. Uh, Footfalls. I could go down to the Footfalls. You know what, let's go back to Master of Holy Fist first. The door is right over there. Why am I teleporting? Gil is important. I think I'd like to get at least level 15, and then I will probably end stream. Actually, I've been going a little bit over midnight. I started at 8. Is that an excuse? I don't think it'll take me too much longer to get to level 15, though. Oh, you came to the Earthsprites once more. Well done, bot. By smiting stone and earth, you forged unyielding weapons of your fists. And now I end this fountain vinegar, bot. Ah, just like myself in my younger days. <laughs> this must be a promising recruit you've been telling me about. Well, of course it's promising. He's right under hammer and holy fists. <laughs> That's our Master Hammond. Bud, I don't believe I've introduced my assistant yet. This is Chuchiro. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. As introduced, I serve as Master Hammond's right hand, though there's much more I have yet to learn. Together, let us strive to mastery of our art. Yeah! Chuchiro has joined the guild soon after I was made his master. She's my very first student, as a matter of fact. Well, there was one other to be sure, but... Let's not dwell on the past, Master. What was Bond's bright future we were discussing? Which reminds me, did you collect the gill from him? My gear is rather worn down, and I do need money for repairs. Uh, to, uh, ahem! Yeah, uh, a Bond's future with us bright indeed. If he keeps up his effort, he may well become the next Holy Fist. Whoa! Hi! Whoa! Hi, Jade! Wow, that's a lot of gifted subs you just gave! Wow! You got one to uh, 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 Arknessa Blaze? You got one to Altera? You got one to Noah? You got one to Fons Cornaro? And you got one to Ugus Mugust? No, oh, that's a lot. Thank you so much, Jade. That's that. Uh, uh, I, uh, that's that's a lot. Wow. Wow. September's really off to a good start. And odd, young one. Grow strong. When well, time's right, I'll have another little lesson for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Fonz is... Yeah. Wow. I hope that you were able to enjoy the emotes now. You can even use them on other channels. Don't forget that. Uh, let's get our custom-made shirt. Which only Fugil Square. We'll take the horror and we'll throw them away forever. Because we don't need them. And we have another quest. Burning up the quarter mom. Guildmaster Hammond and wishes to add uh, wishes you to build upon your knowledge of combinations. Yeah, there you are, but I've been trained hard as ever. Yeah, you guys are starting to have that sharpness of a prayer to about him. Last time you learned the basics of combinations. Today we'd have you build on that knowledge. I've set up five wooden dummies outside the guild, along with a merchant strip. I have war, warm up. I want to deal each one a solid boot shine. Oh, and don't mind the towers folk gather to watch. Yeah, people want to see what the usual skill's doing. They have a nice pink shirt. Now you can enjoy soup! Uh, 
Uh, alright. Uh, let's... Hmm. What am, what am I hitting? Oh, they're... They're show lefting. I didn't even see them. Here we go. This is what we're liking to see. That's one dummy. No, just want to watch me punch things. Good for you guys. There sure is another one around here somewhere. Here we go. Wouldn't they, wouldn't they rather see a snap punch? I guess I wouldn't be able to use that in the city. Unless it gave me an enemy. Whatever. The wooden dub is felt your broth? Good. Now I can move on to your lesson. When it first came to us, I thought the combinations of useless. We need to know is next not any hotspot strikes matter in combination. It's the order of things. Natural flow from one technique to another. Today I would have you practice one of the most elementary combinations of futurist arsenal. Goes like this. Hit with a bootshine combo. Keep it far balanced with a true strike. Then bring home with a blisterous snap punch. With practice, combinations such as this will become second nature. It was then you must ex expect it to become an accomplished uh, futurist. Now, you'll need some opponents to practice on. Kicker that Vesta Rastinus and such a thing let on itself. It was a snap punch three times. We'll call it a lesson well earned. Could save a little bit of time and teleport outside. Yeah, why not? It's only 200 gil. Also, I thought we'd be spending a lot more on that kid Dragora. I thought it would have been like thousands. Uh, let's see, I have to practice on the key current there. Oh no, it just so happens that there is a fate going on at the same time. So a lot of the key current have been absorbed into the fate. Fortunately, it seems like I'm still able to just hit them. As his colorful monster suggests, notorious key card bandit Babaroon ha uh, Half Shell prefers his prey firmly on the outside of the and ruddy on the inside. Something to keep in mind when he has you with the iron cookpot boiling over an open flame. Now get cracking before he grows hungry. Uh, let's see. Who is it that I need? This guy. You know what? I'll fight this fate. I'll fight this fate. I don't have a ranged attack. I can't throw my fist. It would be nice if we had a wave fist. But I can just fight him right here. This is fine. Barbaroon has a bubbly pot. Throws you with the bubbly pot. Oh, fate failed. Not enough time. Oh, well. I, that's what I get for not looking at the timer. Uh, central? Ooh, the clutch. Cactars. Is the clutch up here? Where is the clutch? Over there. I see. Alright. Let's knock some more things off the list. Oh, I missed you. Are you a higher level than me? Oh, significantly. Oh, that's a problem. Maybe I shouldn't fight those yet. Did I only need the one? No, I needed a lot of those. Oh, well, you know what? I leveled up. I didn't learn my lesson. Let's do it again. I need the experience. But where are these cactars? Seriously.
So it was over this way. Probably nearby the uh, nearby the uh, Quiveron merchants. Yeah, there they are. That's what I needed. Much lower in level, much closer to me. Shouldn't take too long. One more. Luna boss. That's those. Antling sentries. So, not the soldiers, but sentries. Which are also in this region. And also ants. Which also share the same model. Kind of. Slightly different part of the area. Oh well, the turtle respawned. Let's beat that up. A little bit of self-healing is good. Sentry. By the Black Brush Station, which is this area. Is it north? It's probably north. One more Adamantoids there. I'll get it on the way back. No, these are workers. Ah. Normally I don't have so much of a problem finding things for a log. But here we are. Good amount of experience for that. The amount will only go up. There's some Amalja. Where are these ants? I need the right kind of ants. I'm a little bit obsessed. Just a little bit. No, I did not find it in the least. I might need to look it up. Or I just need to look a little bit harder. Antling Sentry. And then after a little point, it goes all over the eastern. Okay. Are they south? I thought this was... I thought this area was named something else. Yeah, this is the Spineless Basin. Are they inside the... No, I think there's other quests that take you inside here. Huh. Huh. I just... There's a sick mount. Yes, thank you. This is from the current Rising event, which I did at the beginning of the stream. This is available for all players for just doing a little tiny quest right now. Furthermore, I am not riding it. I became this mount. Which I think is a neat touch about this mount. 
I am unable to find the ants of which I seek, however. And this is bothering me immensely. I'm only finding soldiers. I'm not finding any of the other type of ant. Well, soldiers and workers. I cannot find sentries. You know what? That's fine. I'll look at it later. You're like a furry shapeshifter. A little bit. I'm already mildly furry because I have bunny ears. Mildly. A skill of like 1 to 10 where like 1 is a human and 10 is like just a cat. I think the furry level of Bond here is probably like maybe a 3, maybe a 2. Like the only thing that makes him like really animal is like the fact that he has like rabbit paw claws and ears. Other than that, he's just a guy, right? So that's like either a 2 or 3 on the scale. Eh? You already mastered the snap punch combination? Cracky, bud. You're a natural at it, just like I was. Not to brag, but I happen to be a veritable storm of flying fists when the mood strikes me. I'll do you a demonstration here now, except. I'm liable to tear down the entire guild hall in the process. Esserham has a penchant for regaling us with tales of his exploits, but he's never amounted to demonstration. His favorite is a victory over the fearsome marauder Wild Axe. Or white axe, rather. We fell to the combination so swift and seamless, you say he couldn't see his hands. Or so the legend goes. Eh, eh, eh. That one never gets old. Our dearest master's humility aside, your progress is truly astounding, Bond. I don't keep on my toes, you're like to surpass me in a matter of moons. It's between you and me, Chichiluru has been a slump of late. It all began when our closest friend and guildmate suddenly up and disappeared. Rurakuta is the lad's name. He and Chuchiruta joined the guild together. The two of them were born as refugees, an orphan in a calamity. Not long after I was made guildmaster, I found him on the streets, starved near the death. I didn't want any decent man would. I took him in, clothed him, and fed him. When they were strong again, they said they wanted to become pugilists like me, and so I trained them as well. Since then, they've been best friends, and... Rivals both. I'd help helping raise the up the other up. Eh. But then we knew what's become of Rural Kuda. Oh, talk about you now, Bone. You've impressed me yet again, and I hope you continue to do so. Give up good work, you hear? Of course. I see. Another chest guard? Sure, why not? New fist, new chest guard. Take the old pink shirt and throw it away. Goodbye, custom made shirt. Take the Hora, throw it away. Goodbye, Hora. Do that, slap this on, bada bing, bada boom. New gear, on. And I don't have enough level to get the next quest yet. I thought it was high enough, but I guess I wasn't. I was too fixated on these ants. I could not find them. I will have to get them eventually, but right now I can just go to Western Thailand and get the uh, footfalls. How close am I? Level 13. If I get these enemies in the footfalls and I get these uh, antlings, I should be able to level up. Yeah, let's see. On the scale of furry in this game, like... VR are solidly a 2 or a 3. Mikote are solidly a 2 or a 3. I feel like they are slightly less furry than even a Viera. Hrothgar are like... Like a 4 or a 5. Like, like maybe even a 6. Like they are more beasts than men. In a good way. Fly over the little terrain there. Find what I need to kill. Couple buzzards, no big deal.
Did you play 11? Uh, I did. I told the story before, but I'll tell the story again. I tried to play as a white mage. Uh, my friends were unavailable at the time, were much higher level than me, I forget what the situation was. But they said, like, oh, you should be able to catch up to us, no problem. I tried to trade a spell, but the vendor did not have the spell, and the vendor said it was because the faction that I was aligned with was not doing well enough in PvP or some such. So, at a complete loss, unable to kill monsters that were high enough level to give me experience, unable to find any quests at all, accidentally spending way too much money on a fire crystal because a quest wanted me to get one, and I didn't know how the market board worked. Not having anyone there to explain anything to me about the game or anything like that. I just decided to unsubscribe. And then I described and found out that my unsubscribe didn't hold, and I had to get in contact with customer service, who was from a country did not speak my, la uh, my language. And so when I tried to get them to cancel my subscription, they just hung up on me. And I repeated that process a few times until finally I got someone who could speak a little bit of English. So I paid for three months of subscription without wanting to. I did not have a good time with Final Fantasy XI. I'm sure if I played it under better circumstances, I might have enjoyed the game. Like, I'm very clearly not averse to MMOs. I even play some older style ones. But 11 just did not click with me at all. And 11's why I didn't want to play the original version of Final Fantasy XIV. I'm like, it just looks like Final Fantasy XI again. Uh, let's see. Anything else in Western? <coughs> Doesn't look like it. Am I 15 yet? No. I should look for the ones in Central Thanalan. Uh, let's see. I did look it up. It says that it's at 1615, right about. I feel like I must have flown over this place. Okay, so the map says 1615 is way up in there, huh? Did I just not go far enough up in there? <coughs> I may have turned around once I saw the fate. Worker, 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 worker. Slightly bigger, sentry, 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 yep. Of course, the ants would be in the ant hive. Four of these, okay. Now it should all be Eastern. Very close to our next level. We're getting up there. I'm not really sure what the effect is going on here with the tails, with the tail feathers, like, because the texture is like a neon color, they just kind of mesh and blend together. Like, they don't have a lot of detail on it, so it's hard to discern one part from another when you're looking at the collective mass like that. That's good. They found a way to make it look good. Oh, I missed. That's why my combo didn't chain up. Uh, one day I'll stop missing. That day will happen when I stop hitting things that are a higher level than me.
It's only a problem when you're leveling. One more tuk tuk That's not what it... That's what I need. Now I can do the next quest. But I'm here. Need some nannies. If I just head over these plains, I should see a goat eventually. Every Billy has two nannies. So it seems. How many nannies do I need? Four. Yeah, all the things I need are just right here. And I do need experience. I could almost use the duty finder. Yep, you gotta be at least level 16, so you have two duties in there. It would be just Astasha and Tamtara Deepcroft. But hey, that's something. The roulette still gives a load of experience. So if I'm gonna level Monk, I will need access to that roulette. Lanolin. Oh, you healed. Weird. Isn't Lanolin something that you make from, like, the oils and fats of an animal? Weird. Weird. says I need some bug clouds. How am I going to punch a cloud of a a bugs to death? I guess the same way that I stab him to death with a spear. It's a video game. Don't think about it. If only it were that easy. Fruit flies would be extinct. I realize the other one isn't dead yet. Medley got it. I have faith in my Chocobo. She can do it. I'd ask why I'm getting Beastkin blood from a Vilekin. Except it probably sucked the blood from a Beastkin. But then how am I then extracting the blood from... Whatever. Yours in etymology doesn't make any sense. I was just at the footfalls, wasn't I? Goodness sake. Imps. Level on by now, 16. Yeah, for the amount of time that I put in, this this really does feel like I'm leveling very fast. And it could be faster. I have not employed the methods to go faster. I'll probably employ them next time. The rest of it should be the Amalja, which are way down to the south. Yeah, they're way over here. Odd that they're still classified as Drybone. 
I thought that would be classified as Sandgate, but uh, whatever you say, game. They are these, yes? Oh, I need different ones. I need different Amalgia, not those. Oh no, no, those aren't Amalgia at all. I looked at the icon incorrectly, and I went in the way the wrong direction. I knew where the Amalgia was, and so I looked at it, I'm like, oh yeah, what's Amalgia, right? No, once I'm dead. All these are undead. I was so close to them, I was right next to them fighting the jesters. No, I flew off in the completely wrong direction. Oh, that's a lot of mobs at once dead. Not that I can't handle it, but you know. Actually, I'm thinking, what are my fists right now? I'm fighting with, like, grabby blades. For hooking and raking. I don't know, I think fist weapons are neat. Uh, there should be more of them slightly nearby. But I may have also just wiped out the entire camp. Yeah, I wiped out the entire camp. There are no more undead nearby for me to kill. Nothing to do but wait for them to respawn, I guess. Oh, I thought I needed five. I can't read. That's two. But still, a matter of waiting for one more to pop up. Maybe someone went through the main story recently and killed one of them. Oh wait, no. Maybe he's just around the other corner and I didn't see him. You thought you could hide from me? You were correct! Well done! That's good. Head on back to Ulta. Do a level 15 pugilist quest, and then I'll probably call it a night. Uh, what's left in Heaven's Word now that I'm thinking about it? Actually, it's best if I just run from here. Uh, let's see. I did the Warring Triad. I completed all the main scenario. I did the Hildebrand bit. Ah, oh, there's the Alliance raid. And there is the Normal raid. So there is... The Shadow of Much and Alexander. The spirit is willing. Guildmaster Hammond believes you are ready for your next lesson. And yeah, there you are, Bart. I hope you're well prepared for a lesson. Today I want you to go and find a toxic toad in a uh, nest in an unholy air. Make no mistake, son, these toads are huge, which means you'll have a huge guts. But that's beside the point. The point is that you'll need to use your head to overcome them. Actually, I meant girth. The toads hit hard. Fortunately, it is uh, wild as well. So bide your time and wait for an opening. When that opening shows, thwack. Welcome to them to throw from this. It's proven you can defeat the toads. Oh, you bring me five of their legs. Shoot your row, I'll be waiting for you at Black Rose Station. But that should continue there. Okay, so all you have to do is kill two frogs then. So we all get four legs from the first one and another leg from the second, and then three of them will be to come dinner, I guess.
I fought tougher. I've trained myself against tougher. Nope, I have to actually fight five frogs. Unfortunate. What can you do? Fight five frogs, I guess. That one did its uh, tongue lash death grip and then body slams. That's what they do if you don't get them from behind. One more thing I will add, just as a side, as something I can talk about while I'm just like not really doing a lot. I did beat Etrian Odyssey 2 recently. I said I started at roughly the same time I did my Etrian Odyssey 3, but I made Etrian Odyssey 3 my forefront and my main focus. I did recently complete all Steam achievements in Etrian Odyssey 2. And I'm happy for that. I feel like I cheated the entire game. Hexer is broken. And I used lots of Excellas and Painless with, uh, with a Hexer that had one health and just constantly used... Um, Constantly used revenge to kill the final boss, and it felt really cheap. I don't really feel like I deserved my victory in that game. But you know what? I won, so I'll take it. Oh, did you bring me the toad legs? Toxic toad legs. Not as toxic as the name would have you believe. And it tastes like a chocobo. Is that a good thing? I guess so. Ah, this is stuff, all right. Uh, now that's some butter, a slice of sun lemon, and a pinch of... Um, Master? Eh, hey, what I meant to say was, you went well to defeat the Dr. Toad's Mod. The next part of your lesson, you'll be putting your dirts on the test against... Ah! The talk was true! Master Holyfist is really here! Eh, eh, eh. I can take another step outside of Guild without being flocked by fans. Such a surprise of fame. Hey, sir, I have a grave need for your legendary skills. Somnus is being smuggled through a black brush station. I reported this to the brass blades and the stone torches as I'm putting into it, but able to turn a blind eye. Somnus. That's a mind warping somnus, uh, made, substance made from dream flowers. Those who overindulge are said to fall into eternal slumber. A dear friend has suffered to the very fate. That's why we're putting into the smuggling. I'm just an ordinary person, and there's a precious little I can do. Eh, 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 you done well to bring this word to me, friend. But surely as having holy fist in my name, I'll see the circular scum thrown in the dungeon before a bell's through. Twelve bless you, sir. You're a hero to us all. Eh, 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 such so plans, man. The blessed of endurance says we're going to find and apprehend our smugglers. But first, we go gather information. You two find out what you can among the people of Blackbrush Station. Pull back once you've learned something. You would think questioning this one guy would be enough, but okay. Add out what you can from the people of Blackbird Station. Go back once you learn something. Searching for some most strugglers who say, or as they were associated with the Alacrid, a coalition of cold blood criminals. But we well, they always act in alliance. Whichever there are more is populated with people, you shall uh, prefer chance find peddlers. Merchants often meet in areas such as they might make a mutually beneficial exchange of information. Those who are about to keep a short distance to the Western Coffin and Coffin, these folk tend to get that place a wide berth. I you for smuggling operations, wouldn't you say? The brass blades have been keeping the trade route safe in Thailand region since before I come in the seventh Emperor era. I accidentally clicked off him. A veteran outfit like ours requires deep coffers to cover wages and upkeep, so it's fortunate that our employers include a certain number of syndicate members. Keep up my adventure, there's no group of untested two guild rookies. The yeah, P.F.'s silver-haired Lalafel was last seen skulking about the station recently, with his head west bearing a suspicious burden. Silver-haired Lalafel. Couldn't possibly be him, could it?
In Lakron, a little uh, likely hideout in the Silverhead Lollaville, I'd like to shout to this. Not one bit. Lock to start. The smuggler operation is abandoned Kiko there, west of the coffin coffin. We'll go live way from there. Same dialogue. Head on over here. Oh, it's a it's a solo duty. As it usually is for a level 15 dude uh, thing, but here we are. Oh, it's balls! That's, that's. <laughs> We've already outdone ourselves this time, Master Wakeford's bound to be pleased. Save the talk. We have a crates to move. Urgrata, it is you, isn't it? Chichudo and Master, it's been a while. You've hatched from the guild with nary a word, and we find you're smuggling Somnus with those villains? What is the meaning of this? Uruta, my boy. I didn't mean to teach you how to fight so you could become a pox of society. As soon as I know, you'll be held accountable. Chichino, Bart, your lesson begins. Apprehend the smugglers. Your lot. Take care of these meddlers. Defeat the Alacron Henchman. Looks like uh, Chichuda is going to tank him for me. Job the Job the Chichuda tra training bot. Looks like they all punch too. Have no fear. We're students of Hammond Holy Fist. Curse them and they're having an ability to heal. Just like me! Looks like Chichuda's doing most of the work, though. There are more pressing matters ahead. Squirrels? Ambush of squirrels? Why are the Marauders sweeping stings? Sorry, I'm dealing with some squirrels. That sure is the noise she makes. Alright, the Marauders are down more closer to my level. The enemy fusion sit hard. Stay light on your feet. Yeah, I can dodge some AoE. Oh, that was a circular overpower. Oh, they, they updated it. They gave him the new one. I see, that's different. Or maybe they always had that. I didn't even have time to read that dialogue. How in Holy Fist? The Seven Hells? If you know where I am, then I need to know what's good for you. Come quietly or there'll be trouble. Holy Fist, don't make me laugh. You're being fooled, all of you. Who's fooling who? What in the world are you talking about? It was a dark night several moons ago. I was out in the wilds training alone. From a distance, I caught sight of the master leaving a tavern, turning about our city. Being accompanied him back, I followed his heels. It was about to call him out when I, I saw this. 
It's a star moment. I just fed two of them. Eh? You challenge a holy fist? You're fighting spirit, I'll grant you that. You do well to know your limits. So be it! Yeah! Uh, master! <laughs> You're in my remove. Don't know ordinary moment. Wow! Master! Eh? <laughs> All I wanted was to be surrounded by scantily clad maidens. My time came. Gods are cruel. Master, what's the meaning of this? Explain yourself! Now you've seen it with your own eyes. Master has been beaten by a marmot. A common, bleeding marmot. It would remind us how strong he was at every turn. He was lying through his teeth. Ha ha ha! I scarce believe my eyes! Wait till Master Wigfar hears us of this! You finished your second playthrough of four yesterday? Nice! Very nice! I can't believe it. But how did Master become so weak? Again, Mr. Chicharudo, but. I don't mean to deceive anyone, at least of all my students. Last damn and Holy Fist conquered every foe that stood before him. But he couldn't conquer old age. My strength, my reflexes, my endurance, they all left me. There's nothing here but a decrepit old man. I wasn't very alone for a while. I'll make my own way back to the guild. Now all I need to do is teach you know biz, Bond. I can't believe it. What? How? I don't know, he seems spry at that time when it was the guild showing off some uh, boot shine combos in rapid succession. But then again, that is the level 1 skill. Uh, let's see. Just right down this way? Do I have better accessories available? Oh, I equipped the goggles. Alright. Put the hat back on. Classic dungeon foe striker gear. Good stuff. I've been doing some thinking, Bont. Oh, it's true, Master has been deceiving us. He meant us no harm. Besides, I owe my life. Had he not taken me in all those years ago, I would have died in some ditch. I could never bring myself to hate him. Even if he were an ordinary old man, I would still respect him. Alas, with the truth of his condition revealed, Master Hammond has lost his sense of purpose. His will to teach. I can't bear to see him like this. I want him to regain his confidence, but for this he needs to regain his former strength. Listen, Bond. Master ever said that you remind him of his younger self. Were you to continue showing rapid improvement, I dare to hope that it would rekindle his fighting spirit. To this end, I will teach you a new technique, one which Master Hammond used to great effect during his prize fighting days. Steel Peak, it's called. It will see as you channel your gathered chakra into a powerful attack performed with your entire body. Make this technique your own, Bond, and strive to grow stronger still. When next Master Hammond beholds you, you'll surely be moved to action. And there we go. We now learned meditation. That's not what she said. We get a choice of rewards. Uh, let's see. My current gear notwithstanding, I don't want a hat because I'll get rid of my experience boost. Uh, it says that's better than my gloves. No, it's equal to my gloves. Alright, I'll just get the money then. All the other stuff isn't as good.
Action learned. Meditation. Oh good, you now have the chakra gauge. The chakra gauge indicates the number of chakra currently open. Allowing five to open allows the execution of Steel Peak. You can view this gauge at any time. Okay, so if I go into HUD layout, we can move this where I want, where I want it over here. But it can be small. Like that. It can be small, like that. Just need it right about there. Save its position. Good to go. Okay, so Steel Peak. I want this here, because I want this available whether I'm on the main bar or the AoE bar. So, Meditation, when you use it in combat, it only gives you one stack. But when you're out of combat, it gives you that, all of it at once. And then you can use Steel Peak, which is an off-global cooldown attack. What this means is, at this low level, I already have an off-global cooldown attack. Technically, this has no cooldown. But for it to be efficient, I need to only recharge it when I leave combat. Which means, realistically, I'm going to get it once per combat. I have no way to generate these med uh, these chakras aside from spamming meditation, and it is on the global cooldown. So it's only good to use in between fights. Depending on how fast or slow the tank pulls, this could be often or slow. Unfortunately, I lost my cool fist. Now I go back to using these. But that's okay. We'll go back to using Cool Fists again one day. Or perhaps I'll go into using Fists. Just Fists. One day. But I feel like that's good for now. Next week on Final Fantasy XIV... I don't know. It'll either be Alexander or the, the Weeping City. Maybe both, depending on how fast they go. We'll see. We'll see. And with whatever time that remains left, I will continue to level up Monk. Or maybe I'll pick up the stuff and get uh, Culinarian done. Who knows? Who knows? Thank you all for watching. Sorry I was late again. I can't apologize enough. The fact that people show up even when I show up late for my own thing is baffling to me. Baffling. You guys are great. Thanks, Jade, for gifting out all those subscriptions earlier. And thanks again for catching your stream as you did, XCR. Maybe Zolkopa will be able to catch the VOD after he's done the event himself. Thank you all for watching. And I hope you all have a wonderful start to your weekend. Good night, everybody. Yeah, you can use the wave emote now. Isn't that great?